Submit to the High Council here on World Class Bullshitters. I'm your host, Jeff Hicks, and with me tonight is Mecha Random 42. Hello. We're, uh, we're glad to have you back, Mecca. It's been a minute. It feels weird, but now it feels right. Now the show, you're back on. We can start 2021 properly. So I hope you're excited as I yeah, sorry. I, I was unexplicably and unexpectedly away for a couple of weeks, so I am back now. So up next, we are joined by Midnight's Edge After Dark. Oh, Mister Tom, my fucking fries from McDonald's suck. They need to learn how to. How hard is it to make fresh fries? Question for you. My buddy Joel always talks about how McDonald's used to fry in the beef fat back in the day. Was it true that they were that much better? Because I wasn't around back then to test that. Um, I don't know about the beef <laughs> fact part, um, because that sounds like it'd be a lot of work. Uh, but I do know that they changed the oil. God, mm-hmm. what twenty years ago? Yeah, well, that's what I'm talking about. Beef, like, that's what I'm talking about. Beef fat. Yeah, like, it think- might have been a beef fat based. Uh, that could very well be. Yeah. Oh, like I thought you meant like they actually took the fat from the beef and used that. Oh to- no 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> there, there, there's too much water in that shit. Uh-uh. Yeah, they changed it to canola oil or whatever from the the old oil. Like pff, what now? Twenty years ago, random. At least. Yeah, it's been a, they they you know used to be a lot better. Yeah, McDonald's fries in the eighties were so much better than they are today. Well, folks, we yeah. are joined by a very special <laughs> man tonight. He's not here to talk about French fries because he's not from the Idaho Council for Potato. <laughs> I'm just mad. I'm just mad. Yeah. Well, he's also not a member of MAD, Doctor Claw's organization, which Inspector Gadget fights each and every week. That's I'll a, get my favorite part too. Next time. <laughs> so uh, you can hear him chuckling in the background, but tonight's show is titled Celebrating Drunk 3PO. So, folks, ladies and gentlemen, say hello to the one, the only Drunk Miss 3PO. Gina Carano. No. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to get that in there, Tom. I, I have knew to. It. It's, it's what I do. Hello, everybody. I, I'm happy to be here. What is this Dude. place? <laughs> well, this is not your first go on the High Council, sir. You've been here before. <laughs> so. Uh, you uh, left the Dark Council for the night to their own devices, and you joined us here on the High Council. And, dude, I, I told you this off air. I've texted you since the minute it happened, but I wanted to say congratulations because of all the new success you've had. I can't be – it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. I couldn't be happy enough for you. Ask Jesse. We talk about it. It's awesome. You know, we were not aware of what was going on with the one live stream. We caught that. We're like, oh, that's awesome for drunk. Like 3,000 people were watching. And then the next day we hear about Gina Carano and this and that. And, dude, it's just been – this incredible trajectory. So, I mean, it's awesome to talk to you in general, but I have so many questions. I'm so excited to get into this one tonight, man. Uh, yeah, man, it's uh, <laughs> been a crazy ride. <laughs> it's been a crazy ride. Um, that live stream went from 3,000 people to 8,000 people. Jeez, dude, you deserve and, uh, that review. <clears throat> I wasn't prepared for that, so... Yeah, and everyone thought, like, Star Wars Theory and Jeremy together on a live stream? You can't top that. And then in the middle of the stream, I <laughs> told them, hey, Gina Carano was on my channel, too. And, and like, everyone was like, is there anything you can't do? And, that, and the answer is no, not <laughs> nothing. Well, that's the thing I wanted to start off with tonight, man, because uh, I have had the privilege of being interviewed by a drunk 3PO uh, before the Gina Carano connection. So I do feel a little privileged. But tonight... We get to uh, revol- yeah, reveal, excuse me, reverse the roles. I need to drink some water. We get to reverse the roles, and we get to have fun and uh, do a little interview with Drunk 3PO, talk to him. I got a, a series of questions. I know Tom and Mecca are curious about the uh, some of this stuff. And then we're going to move into the fun stuff, folks. We're going to make fun of the High Republic. We're going to talk about this Indiana Jones game and some of the Marvel stuff. So there's a, there's a packed show tonight, but the fandom menace continues to grow, and we're all excited for each other that's the thing that everyone forgets you know anna has recently had a huge surge in subscribers i'm really happy for her drunk you've almost doubled i couldn't be happier for you it's really cool across the board to know these people to watch them fight and to produce the content that they do and then you know to see it come back to them so drunk like i told you privately i'll tell you publicly man i am so happy for you and so i just hope you know that uh i'm pulling for you dude i appreciate that i appreciate that it's been a crazy ride. Yeah, seventeen thousand subscribers in four days was uh, that was weird. So that was pretty Dude, it's weird. A big deal. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I didn't ex- like. There was like one night I just kind of stayed up every ten minutes to refresh, and I was just like, this is crazy. So yeah, it's uh, it's been some. So that, that so when people ask, how do you grow a YouTube channel? Get a celebrity. Get a celebrity and 
get the largest Star Wars YouTuber on your channel at the same time. <laughs> and uh, then you'll grow. So people in the chat are saying my mic's too loud. Can y'all tell me? It's kind of, it's not too loud, but it's blown out sounding. Like your gain oh, might man. be up too high. Maybe. All right. I'll try to fix it. Yeah, you sound, you just a little, like you're not coming too loud, but you're coming in like you're sounding like you're coming too loud, like you're distorted. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I'll just uh, keep talking, and then you, you guys let me know if it's better or worse. Or getting a little not, better now. It might just be the same. Not as harsh as it was. Your level hasn't <laughs> changed, but you're not you're not all crush sounding here. Okay, cool, cool. So, so see, I'm not really a YouTuber. I'm new to all this uh, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you got you know all those new subscribers, you can get like a couple different mics. You can do the whole. The fun part is when you can get all the equipment to test. Ask, ask Mama Gina to buy you one. <laughs> no, I, you know, really I'm a, thrilled about really that for tech. you, man. Yeah, yeah. She's not really a tech person herself. No, know, so. no. And, 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 you know, we just pick on you. But, you know, it's just cool that, you know, of all the things that you've done for the, not just the fandom, but just in general, because that's how we met, really, was like, I believe it was on your charity stream on, I can't, I think it was uh, Mary's channel, right? We were talking about this. And that was like the first time we talked, or was that like the second time we talked? It's been a while, isn't it? I can't remember if that was the first, but yeah, like since I've known you, that's one of the things that I've known about you is just how, you know, active you are in so many different, you know, things that involve, you know, doing things for kids and charities and overseas and building houses and doing all this other great stuff. And, you know, you didn't want even that all over the place. And everybody's like, nope, we're going to tell on you. <laughs> and it's like the one, yeah. the one, the worst secrets, worst kept secrets, you know, I've ever seen in on YouTube. Where everybody's just like, no, you can't hide from this one, buddy. And we all did our best to help you with that. And, you know, it's just cool to see somebody who's not only, you know, into that, but what you do in your daily life. I don't want to say that like right now in case you don't want to talk about it too much. But, you know, <laughs> you do a lot for kids and you do a lot for people. And just to see that come back to you just felt like karma was, you know, doing yeah, good, doing good, you know. Well, we all joked, you know, 2020 sucked, but it kind of ends with this stuff. And it really gives everyone kind of this fresh restart and it's exciting. I mean, last week's show was a barn burner. We had the gentleman from echo base network. We had coach and Nick and it was an awesome show. And now we have you. And this is what I, you know, this is how I wanted to start asking you about this. You know, you had star Wars theory on and we see people in the community raising money and doing all this wonderful stuff. So take us back for those that may have missed how that stream started with star Wars theory drunk. Uh, that was the, the first big one. Uh, tell us about that. Um, okay. And while I'm talking, just people tell me about my mic. I'm adjusting while I'm going. So I don't know why it's sounding like that, but I want to do best I can. So just let me know. Do you have the auto know. level on maybe or something? Is it still sounding crushy? Crushy? Mm -hmm. yeah, only when you get louder. Like it's fine when you're not talking too high, but. Okay. So just talk chill. It's slightly What's distracting. You? That's all. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Um, so the Pablo Hidalgo thing uh happen and um now people are saying it's too low oh my god i feel terrible like i'm on the show and it's like, <laughs> is it, really is it coming bad? through the right mic i mean it sounds like it is but i don't know because i had to switch over mine so that's why i sound yeah underwater. sometimes Streamyards likes to do that well because we're getting all these Streamyards updates so yeah which is nice they've been doing yeah i gotta give them credit because they've been doing a lot of good stuff uh oh, i just need to fix the super sticker oh is that better Yes. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Was so it the wrong mic? That it's just so many channels. I don't know what happened, but all right, so we're good, the right? Buttery smoothness of drunk. We are <laughs> everybody in the chat happy. Ding. All right, cool, cool, cool. Right, Mike. There we go. There we go. All right, cool, I cool. Want to hear your Got sexy it. voice? Uh, <laughs> all right. So the Pablo Hidalgo thing happened, and. I did a video like I was actually up and I, I watched this thing on Twitter happen with Star Wars Theory. Now, for some strange reason, Star Wars Theory follows me on Twitter, which is really weird because a lot of high profile people follow me on Twitter. I don't know why. I've never had a conversation with them or spoken to them, but they just they just did. They just do. And um, so he um, after I, I posted that video, I, I launched it like after midnight and I woke up and he sent me a message saying, thank you so much for the uh, thank you for the video. I appreciate that. And that was the first time he's ever really spoken to me. And I was like, 
no problem. And he was getting a lot of, I guess when he was doing his Twitter thing, he was getting a lot of blowback from a lot of people. I mean, even Matt Jarbo chimed in and called him names and stuff. And so all of a sudden it was like, uh, he sent an email to me and Jeremy together and he just said, Hey, I want to work things out. And can we just talk about it? And that was it. And I, I called Jeremy. I was like, did you get that email? Like that was weird. And, and he's like, he goes, uh, let's work it out. And then originally I said, okay, then do you want to do this on your channel? Right? Like on the geese and gamers channel, It'd probably bring in a lot of people. And he, Jeremy, I man, love the dude. He goes, you know what, man, this is going to be good for your channel. Let's do it on your channel. So I was like, are you sure? I said, I, I probably will bring in a thousand people, dude. And he goes, let's just do it on your channel. And I was like, all right. So theory was like, yeah, let's go. And then, so I just put it together and it, it was really weird. So the day that it happened, I think it was Wednesday. Um, I was like, I, I was, I went to the gym. I came back. As soon as I walked through the door, uh, Gina Carano texted me. Uh, we have been talking for a while and nothing for whatever it's worth. <laughs> a lot of people will speculate whatever that was. But they, um, she goes, hey, I got time right now. You want to talk? And I'm thinking, man, I got a big stream tonight. Maybe I should just reschedule with Gina Carano because, you know, she's just, you know, that was a joke, by the way. <laughs> anyway, so the uh, it's like, <laughs> you don't reschedule. And I just said, well, how what time do you like when? And she's and she's like, right now, I'm going to send you a Zoom. And so I was like, literally, like I didn't shower or anything. I, I threw on that Geese and Gamers uh, hoodie and we just went and she goes yeah record record this let's just go and i'm like i'm not prepared for anything i i, I didn't have no questions on she goes let's just have a call let's just talk she's like and if you if you've seen the interviews you could see where she's like i just wanted to uh i just wanted to meet you that's all like you've said all these nice things about me i just wanted to meet you so it was um that's just what happened and we spoke for over we the the original zoom thing is is over four hours uh, four hours long and we you know there was a there's a lot of stuff that won't be released um it was just it was just conversations between two friends having coffee basically hmm. and and then a lot of the other stuff is um you know we i just cut it up into um to different to different segments well, and stuff but well drunk we're jumping over because i do have a couple questions about this nothing uh you know too, sure. too crazy so uh you answered actually the first one about the gina carano stuff so i all joking aside is the drunk council jealous or the dark council, excuse me. Are they are uh, they like, man, you got to interview uh one of the biggest actors on TV right now? Are they just envious? What's up? They have been the dark council, all of them, Abu Nas, Lord Callis, Demon, <laughs> Mark with a C, Fatal J. They have been the most supportive people through this whole thing. They knew what was coming before anybody else did because I, we, we're such a tight knit group. Uh, these guys, these are like my best friends. We're such a, like Jeremy didn't even know, like Jeremy didn't even know like the day. So like I finished that interview with Gina 20 minutes before I go live with theory and Jeremy's like calling me, calling me. He's like, Hey man, we got to talk. Like there's like 2000 people waiting for this to happen. Like what's going on. And I didn't answer the phone. You could literally see me in the Carano uh, interviews, looking down at my phone because Jeremy was like trying to call me. And I like, so they, th those guys have been in the dark council have been the most supportive, you know, I, I cannot get over how every time there's been a, a smear article or anything that's come out since these interviews, they have been on top of it and the support and love it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And of course they're majorly jealous, but I mean, you know, that's besides the point. But they they've been they've been fantastic. Well, I think that so. that kind of stuff it's a great indicator because you work with people, but you work with people you like, and it's really cool that it's overlap. I have that, you have that. It's one of those things where it makes what you do feel even better, and it, it also too it shows you, uh, you know, when your friends do something great, you're happy for them, so they're you know they're good friends. Now, the interview went great. You had two parts. It's a successful thing. Four, you, four, oh, four parts. Excuse me. Yeah, that's four all right. Parts. But what I want to know is. 
I know you're nervous, but like, what are some of the funnier things going through your mind that you're stressing out about? You know, when you go out, you're like, oh, I got to make sure my shoes are tied, my fly zipped up, blah, blah, blah. But when you're interviewing a, a, an actress of her caliber, you know, what are the things that you're concerned about? So, <laughs> I want to look good in front of her. <laughs> That's why I, I keep, messing with, I keep messing with my hair. I'm like, I want to make sure <laughs> I'm smiling right. I want to make sure, you know, she, I want to make sure she feels me, man. Like she, like, I'm just not like this guy in the corner, just going, having a, a celebrity crush here. So <laughs> it was, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure everything was in place. And that I, I think the biggest thing for me, which is, I shouldn't think this way because I sound all the time, you know, you don't want to come off sounding too, um, what do you call it? Like celebrity crushy mm-hmm. or like over simpy. I mean, it's going to come out no matter what, but uh, I definitely was uh, trying not to be too simp- simpy. Are you allowed to say that on YouTube? But um, yeah, that's what I, I was I think trying. you get a pass. Okay. Yeah, I was <laughs> trying not to, but it did come out at, at, uh, at, at different times. So it is what it is. Well, I mean, Tom hit up, hit the head on it earlier or hit the nail on the head, excuse me, earlier about the kind of guy you are. And it's just, you know, we all know. So it's just funny to get a little uh, snapshot into the process of what's going on. Uh, so <laughs> I know you, you said there's stuff that got cut out that you can't talk about this, that and the other. But are there any weird things in the interviews that aren't even like important, just like funny stuff that happened that you cut out? Like a, like a tangent conversation or anything that's just, you know, irrelevant. Uh, yeah, like halfway, <laughs> halfway through the interview, I had to go to the bathroom and I was like. <laughs> Hey, I gotta go to the bathroom, <laughs> and she's like, I, she's like, oh my god, I gotta go to the bathroom too. <laughs> so there's like, there's like a twenty, not twenty minute, like fifteen minute block where it's just both our chairs, uh, because we both got up and went to the went to the restroom. The, the crazy thing is, brother, listen, I again, I'm thinking, I got Star Wars theory and Jeremy. I'm seeing. 2,000 people in the chat before it even gets started. I haven't eaten this. I just got back from the gym. I had like, I haven't eaten anything. I'm starving to death and my stomach is ground. Thank God the mic didn't pick it up. I'm starving to death. And um, I run into the, like, I run into the kitchen and just open up a loaf of bread and just grab like five pieces of bread and ball them up into a ball and just eat them. Like, and that's all I had to eat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it was just like you know i didn't want to uh i don't want to keep her waiting and everything and then the the i i i had to get close to like cutting her off because i know the stream was coming and she's like wait you're you're cutting off gina carano to go uh hang out with somebody else she's like that's new <laughs> I was just like, no, 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 no. I was like, I'll cancel that other stream. Don't worry. But we've been going for four and a half hours, you know. So uh, it, that was that was pretty funny. But yeah, I, my members are gonna get some of the behind. Like I'm working on some edits of like, like her camera fell several times, and <laughs> uh, she's not like uh, she's not a tech person. So we we were I was like walking her through stream yards and walking her through. Zoom, like it, it was it was funny and i'm not a tech person either so you got two people that don't know it look i couldn't even get my mic turned on right that's for the stream and how long have i been streaming for you know and it's just uh at least four hours <laughs> well yeah but i mean like <laughs> like two years I, I dude i've just busted your balls man yeah yeah no no and it's just uh so it it was funny to see both of us i'm like push this button she's like what button i'm like uh um is it a square or a circle <laughs> and we're just like walking through walking through some stuff so it it was it was a lot it was pretty funny now tom mecca uh, the next question i'm going to be throwing it to you afterwards but uh drunk you, uh, briefly you mentioned the growth you've jumped up you said seventeen thousand subscribers in four days was what your big jump yeah, right yeah that was a big one yeah dude i've never even had that i'm jealous just joking <laughs> uh no, seriously uh those are huge uh, uh jumps like that so um, you know, you're trying to be humble, you're trying to be cool, you're trying to play it the right way, but like, what are some of the thoughts going on in the back of your mind? Like, as you're, you know, you're watching these numbers jump astronomically, you're watching the, the view counts go up and all these people are like, dude, this is amazing and stuff. What are, you know, just some of the, describe the feeling to the audience. Uh, at first it was, it was like, this is cool. But then like, it, I, to be honest, it got a little overwhelming because I gained, um, 5,000 Twitter followers, I think, and then another thousand Instagram followers. And then 
you know, the, and, and it's all a different, it's all a different audience. You know, a lot of these people are Gina Carano fans. So it's not like they know anything about like fandom menace stuff or anything like that. So they don't know it. Like these are just like random people that are like, wow, this guy's got Gina on her channel. I love Gina. And let's just see what else he has to say. So it was, I'm just trying like right now, I'm just trying to kind of feel through all that. It's just, it's been kind of weird. Like, especially on my Twitter, I haven't really, I just trying to keep everything positive and on my Instagram as well. And it's just, just seeing like what, um, what what's happening and every time every time it slows down um it's funny gina always tweets at me you know she'll like she'll just re respond to one of my tweets or something and it just kind of sets everything off again and she did on twitter uh she did share i've never heard of a celebrity do this i mean she did share my uh she shared my my channel on her twitter account she's like subscribe to this channel and so it that it's just surreal you know because <laughs> you have like you know my fa like members my, my my brother and all them like look at her as as a hollywood celebrity and they're like dude you're talking to her like she's your best friend you know like like you can just call her whenever and it's just like i it's just weird you know what i mean it's like it's just weird and so it's just trying to it's just trying to feel out this new audience and feel out um who they are listen i had almost a thousand people watch me read super chats i missed last week <laughs> by myself there was nobody else in there and like there was over, like it, it was jumping like up and people were i i'm sure people were coming in you know to see if gina was there or somebody else was there I, I, and i'm sure of that but it was just weird to see that you know 800 people stayed for the whole three hours of me just reading super chats i missed like that, that was weird i'm not used to that i'm used to 150 people you know, in my live stream. So it, it's just, I don't know. I'm just kind of taking it all in and, and seeing, I'm hoping like it'll calm down a little bit. So we'll see. Well, dude, right now there's over a thousand people watching and they're here for you, man. So uh, folks hit uh, that thumbs up to support the fandom menace, show some love to drunk three PO. And uh, last week, we hit over a thousand thumbs up, so that means on Friday uh, morning, my time. So I'll make the official announcement now. A uh, good morning pop culture for this Friday. So probably about 10 p.m. Pacific. So it's still the morning for me, but uh, afternoon pop culture for you guys. So folks, if you uh, did I say 10 p.m. I, I meant to say 10 a.m. Pacific. Excuse me. I'm. I heard PM. I wasn't sure. it, it's a weird year. Uh, long story short, though, folks, same offer stands. Hit that thumbs up button. We'll do it again next week. Now, Mecca Tom, the thing I wanted to ask you is, you guys have been there been in these situations drunk um we're, we heard uh excuse me let me rephrase that we heard about how drunks handle this now mecca when this stuff started happening to you uh what were some of your thoughts what was going through your head because you just recently hit another big milestone you just passed 60k a few weeks ago correct because you yes. ended up me off so you're in a good place you're growing i remember you had said to us many times that you looked at that number as you know oh that's when i hit that number then i've made it this and that and the other uh what were your thoughts because you use that as a benchmark of success uh, what are some of the thoughts you had when you got you know you know the big push and stuff like that um well like, like my, my first really like like for 60k i actually got a little disappointed because i'm like well i thought i would get like some big floodgate would open and all of this because it was just co i guess coincidence that everybody else had a lot of those but i remember getting a lot of like you know major you know like like pushes like like um whenever you know we get you know like the high council comes over to my channel i get the huge the huge numbers and stuff which i don't totally am in no way qualified to or or deserve so uh whoa, 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 whoa. let me but, stop you right there what makes you unqualified <laughs> or undeserved i i don't well i mean i just i just feel like I, I just I just feel like you guys do such a better job at handling the flow of stuff and I'm such an airhead sometimes but, but and Becca, you have over 60,000 subscribers meaning you have 60,000 times that you've done it right so don't second guess yourself dude you know there are going to be times where you host stuff for people and host your own streams and guess what people are there for you too so don't feel out of place it's you know mm. you built it yeah yeah i know it's just it's just, just kind of it's kind of it's it's a little overwhelming and it's like i set i tend to set like impossible goals for myself too but it's like it's, it's like you you kind of want that that feeling of like every time you get these major pushes or every time like i, I remember when um like when 
when Pablo Hidalgo was retweeting stuff like names about me or, or when, um, when like the, the, the son of the guy who played Captain Pike originally on Star Trek in the original, original one was telling people to, to go and harass my viewers and stuff like that. And you get big pushes from that. So I just remember more importantly, not the, not the bad stuff, but the support of the community around you, because if something bad happens, people have your back and you get all the support and, you know, or, you know, like when, like when Gary's channel went down and everybody says, Hey, you know, go and go and subscribe to the live channel. That's the type of, that's the type of community stuff that I, that really, really stands out a lot more than and now, just the little milestones for me personally. I'm glad you brought that one up though, because drunk, that's the one thing I want to remind you of, no matter how fast you grow or how big you get, you're always going to have that place. So I know it looks scary at the top or when you're going into new, you know, new places, but just, you know, this community will always have your back, dude. So, you know, just always keep that in mind too, as you're continuing that ascent. I know you mentioned like, Oh, I'd like it to slow dude. It's, it's fun. The ride is fun. Believe me. I'd be lying if I told anybody differently and mm -hmm. you want it to keep going. So I know it's, it's an adjustment, but there's a lot of good stuff that comes with it. I know people are watching. It gets weird and all that stuff. You always gotta be on high alert, especially I can't show anything behind the camera because, Oh, somebody will fixate on my shelf and this and that. But uh, Tom, I have the same question for you because you are in a different situation where you have come in to Midnight's Edge and helped them grow and do this stuff. And so there are, you guys are almost like a business, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Because we refer to you as Tom from Midnight's Edge. So the journey might be a little different. But in terms of what I'm asking Mecca and Drunk, what are your takeaways from when, you know, when Midnight's Edge hits those big bumps because you're writing the videos and doing that stuff? I know there's all the sense of accomplishment, but like, what was that big thing that made you go, huh, what I'm doing matters right now? Um, wow. That's a really interesting question. Cause I mean, I've been, I've been trying to do this YouTube thing now for well over like 10 years or close to it. And, uh, Go I'm going to interrupt you, Dom. I'm going to interrupt you. You and Rob both don't realize that you guys are both part of Midnight's Edge. You guys always see it as Andre's channel, which is true, which is absolutely true. But you guys don't realize that, you know, you guys are Midnight's Edge. Rob's the voice of it in my eyes or my ears. Yeah. Every time I close my eyes, spin free news and analysis, that's Rob. That's not Andre. I love Andre's voice. He's cool. But you guys are just as much of a part of it. So you know, well, I, yeah. I, I want... I really want 2021 to be the year where people realize, you know, what they're doing matters and how good of a community this truly is, because we have had great times, bad times, this and that. But, you know, drunk, you're the indicator of where, you know, how people really can see us and the power and the spread that we have. So, you know, I keep telling people, like, get excited for what's coming this year. Keep that excitement high, folks. Look at what happens when you do. You get Gina Carano in, in you know, <laughs> yeah. streamed, or being streamed with and stuff. That's why, like, when people that say, oh, the Phantom Menace is dead or it doesn't matter, if it didn't matter, why would they be writing drunk? They're writing articles about you now, man. You matter. All right? <laughs> A couple of years ago, they went after Doomcock and I in Variety Magazine, and I was like, dude, what do you think of it? And he's like, it's crazy. So it's, it's the same thing, man. It's it's a weird ride, but it's, it's fucking bizarre. I kind of know the answer. Um, I mean, because, like, uh, you know, getting into it, like, I was doing my own thing for the longest time, and then Andre came to me, and he liked what I was doing, and you know, brought me on board and stuff like that. But I don't think it all, I mean, of course I had the first, you know, couple of weeks of burst on Midnight's Edge After Dark when it got switched over to the sister channel. But I think the real thing that really kind of, you know, really made me feel like, oh shit, this is real, was when I did the Nicholas Meyer interview, because that like took off. And, and us being like one of the primary sources for Star Trek news that wasn't just, you know, kissing its ass constantly uh that to me i mean just being written up in all these places like drunk you know you, you know what i mean now like you know you you read these on a normal day daily basis and now your your names in there or the 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 channel you work for is there or your channel in this instance is you but you know what i mean yeah like it's just like you know weird you know <laughs> sure sci-fi has you know sci whatever the, they're you know all these major uh news outlets on the internet when they're writing about you it's just insane and and I, jeff you've had similar but odder experiences especially being lumped in uh, into a group being called racists but <laughs> yeah like i i don't 
try to draw attention to myself because no. I'm like you know, looking for it. But I will say that I do find myself in the oddest situation in this community because I, you know, we're the we were doing it in 2015 and stuff. Midnight's Edge was doing it before you were, you know, part of the community. I was watching you guys. So we're, you know, we're both out there doing this stuff. And I just find it funny that I've been around for long enough that people can make up bullshit and still not figure out what I look like. That's the that's the part <laughs> I enjoy is laughing at the stupidity. We live in this world where you can Google any piece of information in a heartbeat. But for some reason, these people can't take 10 seconds to go, oh, this guy, we're going to call, you know, like, who am I going to call a racist bigot? That's why when you used to Google, why not used to, when you still Google world-class bullshitters, the next response is Jeff, because people don't get it. So, well, and what's funny is if you watch any one of your videos, even if you just have the floating icon like you do now, it, it, it's pretty obvious you're not completely white. I mean, come on. Well, I think that's the problem with a lot of these woke people is that they stereotype. That's well, I don't the think they actually, I, not just that, I don't think they, they actually watch our videos. No, no, them. that too, that too. But I, I noticed one thing, like, and and um, just just being somebody who, I, I guess I, I probably identify more with, with that crowd way back in the day when I was a lot younger. And, uh, you know, the, the so the fact that people kind of paint me as, oh, you're a right-wing racist, sexist, this and this and this, like, okay okay no no but i can see i can see why especially now when people blame me for stuff i'm like oh wow you guys really actually believe that everybody of a certain this think this way or look this way or sound this way and it's it's very disturbing and, and it's kind of an it's kind of an, a, like a wake-up call you know it's, it's an awakening where you can just kind of say wow wow i i you know I'm, I'm, I feel very sorry when people do think that way because you just assume that, oh, anybody who has a problem with this, and that's how they are. Anybody who has a problem with Star Wars is just a racist white male because that's what every article says. That's what every article says about everybody. And then, of course, you, you start actually talking to people and then, no, it's, it's not the case and it's not true. So Now, Tom, I, I asked you that too because you talk about working in a video store and stuff like that. It's almost... And this is a cheap plug for next week. It's almost like you're that pop. You're the pop culture guy that crosses the digital and the the end of the analog era. And the reason I bring this up is because next week we do have a cool guest. Chris Gore used to be on G4. He's got tons and tons of stuff. Just Google him. The guy's done countless, countless Ooh, things. Yeah, yeah, and he's going to be on the show next week. And I'm really looking. We're going to have Michael from Retro Blasting too because I want to talk about perspectives in pop culture and stuff. You know, not always like, oh, we're going to figure out how it got to where it is. But hearing somebody that's worked on the inside talking about you know, the perspective shifts and I really, I always, that's why I want to get Michael and Tom. I'm just going to say it out flat, flat out. You guys are older. I want an older perspective on this shit because oh. I think it's an interesting uh, way to look at what's going on today because we can also try to find, is this new? Is this really what's going on? Cause look at star Wars. When we talk about the high Republic in a minute, it's same old shit. Uh, remember when it was the fault of white men for the failure of solo. Now we got the writer herself saying the same kind of shit. It's been reported. It's, it's a, it's the same ugly situation, folks. So um, that's why we like to take a second and go. I wonder how we got here. Figure stuff out. So Cosmic make sure that you guys, yeah, uh, make sure you guys join us next week because it's going to be another big show. We're just going to knock them out of the park continuously, and uh, the fandom menace continues to grow. Now, in a moment, I'd like to read a couple super chats, but I want to finish out our drunk three PO segment because it's not the only thing we're doing tonight. So, drunk, what is it? advice you would give to people i know everyone asks that i know it sounds cliched but you're new to it right now you're in the process of all eyes on you what would you say to someone in a similar situation <laughs> um delete all your social media and just hide in a closet <laughs> uh <clears throat> with a bottle of uh i don't know your Rum. favorite bourbon yeah bourbon? something yeah. like that so no it's it, you know what it is it's the um I, my problem is I, pro I I process stuff too much and it and it and it keeps me up uh, things like that. So it's like I having having to learn to turn off, like learning to turn off Twitter's notifications and stuff, and not looking into the hate comments so much. And um, my email really blew up. Like it, it's it's right. kind of interesting. I, I I've gotten fan. It's weird. I've gotten fan mail from kids like who drew Gina like. Cara Dune, who like drew pictures of her and were like, hey, can you show this to her for me, please? I really like her character. And like that <laughs> stuff is really cool to me. And of course, there's a, uh, you know, there's um, the other side of that where 
people are asking if we're dating and stuff and like like some news outlets uh, it's just it's just crazy it's it's just it's it's very crazy to be so, fair she did flirt with you a little bit i was it's more than just a little bit just a little bit what more than just like jay you're oblivious man we love you. you didn't know the thing that they think you put on Twitter where she's asking you about your situation. That's hurting a little bit. <laughs> if she asked, you, she asked you in the interview if you were single and she was basically. She's flirting because, yeah, because yeah. yes. I, oh, I'm so jealous. She's so pretty. <laughs> Everyone's jealous. You made I didn't know. I didn't know. Jealous, this. Jay. Look at that. <laughs> No, I got to say this, and I know, um, I, I know. We I was talked, too nervous to notice. I think. Oh, I yeah. know Jay and I we talked about this personally, so I won't get into too much of it. But like, I know, you know, when you first got into this, and there was a point where you thought about just totally shutting out and shutting down because, like, you couldn't deal with a lot of the, the vitriol that you were getting, and that's the thing. It seemed like you would get it more so, and I don't even understand why. Outside of just because you are the best of us, maybe. Uh, or see oh, I don't know about that. No, yeah, I truly it, feel that way because yeah, we all get our hate equally. It feels like. I mean, the death threats were really odd. That's the to thing see. is like, yeah, now you were getting like, like extreme ones, and yeah, Mecca and a few others have gotten. Yeah, like yeah. there was a time there where you know he he really was just getting completely just attacked from all over the place and, and nobody could figure out really why it was that way and all i could figure out was it's because he's the best of us it's because mm -hmm. he represents everything that they uh, hate don't say that uh, of us like they don't want anybody to know i look up to you guys man. these things y'all is too much praise i appreciate it well, but like i look mecca, up to you no, guys you, no truly like jesse and mecca you guys go against the the narrative and that's why they don't like you it's because mm -hmm. you go against the narrative and i and i truly feel like that you went through all that dark shit to get here like, I really do, because, you know, whether you believe Maybe. in karma, whether you believe in, you know, divine intervention, what have you, They're whatever it is. Because yeah. you actually have the balls to go and take your time and your money and your energy to go and make people's lives better. And that's more than any of their little likes and retweets and their little hatred about pronouns and shit will ever, ever do yeah. to make this world a better place. And they hate you for it. Because they know they will never be as as decent of a person as you. Yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, what you I'm guys are, in a lot of ways. I appreciate it. You guys are pointed on, but that's true though. No, that's 100% true, this is, true. This dude. is guy, my first one of my first introductions to the drunk three PO account was. I mean, I saw his account on Twitter, but once I finally saw like behind, like a camera and a YouTube channel, he had just what probably a few hundred subscribers, and they were doing this big charity to go back and build this. Was it the school? Uh, it was it was the cool. El Salvador home. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. this is the one that was it the yeah. one that I did the. Yeah, it's the same one, and it's finished. <laughs> yeah, the home is finished. They're Good, and that's I like is that the first thing nothing. I'm hearing about this this person in in this community in our community of where where we're getting called a bunch of racist, sexist, homophobes who are just grifters who are all this stuff, and I'm like, yeah, but. This guy's building schools and, and houses for orphans just to make their lives better. I've got, you know, people who message me, you know, people like Stephanie Kenobi. Everybody knows Stephanie B out there. You know, she's been one of the more, more amazing, sweet, wonderful people out there for yeah. through all, throughout the, you know, my time on Twitter. And like, I didn't know what that crap I was getting into with, with, you know, the, the Star Trek people when I first got on Twitter, I, I had it, but I never used it. And then I started getting vocal about Star Trek. And then they're like, oh, you're just a sexist. You're a racist. You just hate Michael Burnham because of this. You're a Trump supporter. You're this. You're that. And I'm like, I, I'm just complaining about Star Trek. What the crap are you people on about? And you're absolutely right. You need this. You, you need, you know, like for, for people like I was listening to your interview a little bit. We guys are talking about the Twitter stuff. And... I'm like, that's kind of a lot of, of people's experience. You kind of just get thrown into this war zone and you don't even realize it just for talking about something you like, like Star Trek or Star Wars or anything or Doctor Who. It's it's crazy. <sighs> I, I got to the point where a lot of like a lot of it I just kind of laugh at, but I think I think the big issue when because I live right next to Disney World. And I run the theme park channel for Geeks and Gamers. And so when I started going, when they, when they finally opened here and I started going back, it was like, I, that was the worst of it where people were like, I hope you, like, you were like, I hope you die. Like, I hope you catch this thing and die. 
like how dare like i was i was doing a live stream from disney world and i'm like holy crap i got 60 thumbs down before the before i even went live like what the heck is this and like it's just everybody's comment i'm like i so i i just said well and and i have like so i have the geeks and gamers phone that i use for the live stream for park hopping and then i have my personal phone and and Jeremy texted me. I was like, do you, do you, I was like, do you want me to keep going? Like, I don't care what they're saying, but do you want me to keep going? Because it's like mega hate going on in here. <laughs> and he's like, do whatever you want. So I was like, no problem. So I just kept going. I just kept saying, for all you people that hate, here's Mickey Mouse over here, and here's Mickey Mouse. And then you know, once the interviews came out, all the articles that were written. Like my mom counted. <laughs> It's like 17 articles from Yahoo to MSN, all these things. And they were very positive. And I was like, okay, we got a little positive spin. And then all of a sudden, just these past few days have been all the uh, the uh, the hate mob, you know. Um, so it's it's now I'm dealing with that. So it's just kind of I'm just kind of like waiting it out. But yeah, people can be so stupidly vicious for for no apparent reason. Like, I don't, I don't know what their, what their goal is. You know what I mean? Like, like, oh, what, I, what, why is their goal in like wishing death upon you? What like is their I goal? Said, in, what like, it is, uh, is because miserable. you, you represent the best of us, dude. That's what it is. And, yep. and Mecca was a hundred percent right. It's because you get off your ass and you make a difference. And all these people that are throwing all these, this mud at you are the very people who sit there and hide behind a keyboard all day. And the last thing they're going to do is get off their ass and make anybody else's life better. Cause they're so fucking miserable. Well, to be fair, I, I I was doing that kind of work for a long time, so it, it's it's just something that I I kind of not that I didn't fall into, but I kind of fell into way back in when the earthquake happened in Haiti. So yeah, um, so it it, it it I don't really look at it like, uh, and I pre trust me, I appreciate everyone's praise. I, I appreciate it. I'm not perfect. I'm no one special. It, it's just something. I just started doing and uh, it, it, it's, it was like habit forming. You know, I don't know if that makes sense. It's just kind of no, like, it is. I totally it's just kind of like, um, I don't, I don't know. It's just like, okay, I got an extra hundred dollars. I know what, I know what I can do with it and I know where it'll go and I know what's going to, and it's no big deal. It doesn't, I, I don't sit back and think about, wow, look what I'm doing. Cause it's, it's just, I just been doing it for so long. Um, well, Tim's is right. Tim's right. Just persevere. Uh, as in this yeah, yeah, right yeah. Here. because I, I like I said I, I'm sure I wasn't the only one you talked to back then and I know you were like on the verge of just giving up and you know you just didn't want to deal with it anymore and because you kept pushing is why you're here dude you got to keep reminding yourself of that like that's the number one thing is through you you waited through all the bullshit you mm. know and 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 more so than a lot of us have so like you got you, you can't you can't feel down on yourself. You, you're being too humble. You need to take some of the praise being heaped on you, man. Oh, I'll take it. I will say this. <laughs> I will say this. Uh, you guys haven't seen nothing yet. Good, good, and I'm glad. I hope there's a lot more to to come because. Oh yeah, and I can't say anything about it, but <laughs> it's gonna be a banger. That's all I have to say. You love doing this. <laughs> He's such a tease. It's gonna yeah. be a banger when it happens. So that's all. That's so well, we I, did get some good news though. I don't know if you saw in the private chat, but uh, what's Cobra up? Kai season three was, uh, according to Netflix, a pretty big hit. Uh, they estimate forty-one people, or that's what they say is 41, 41 million people watched season three. Um, which, comparatively to numbers, that's like that's pretty good. Dude, like, I uh, twenty love... million people usually watch football every week on average, and like at its height, Big Bang had like seventeen million viewers. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Ooh. I love about the Karate Kid and Cobra Kai is it just shows you how far the reaches of certain pieces of pop culture are, no matter how long they go away for. Uh, I firmly believe if you did something equivalent with Back to the Future, which I'm not advocating for, I don't want it all. Every million years, don't touch it. My point is if you came up with a show like that, you'd have something even bigger. There's something the way that Cobra Kai taps into, I won't even just call it nostalgia, but it just taps into a familiarity, a feeling. You know how the Karate Kid is this really good, feel-good movie. It's almost like the lighter version of Rocky because it's written by the same people. But you know, it has that message of going to the distance but winning. And 
Cobra Kai just taps back into what we were all missing from entertainment. This non woke adversarial, the writers and creators hate you shit, just this fun callback. And so every time Tom, somebody talks about Cobra Kai or we like with Bill and Ted earlier this year, dude, you had us with you on that fucking journey. Like we wanted to see what the numbers were. Cause we, you know, that was a nice callback to something fun and familiar. So what I'm hoping for at the end of the day with any of this is we get more Cobra Kai in quotations, meaning maybe not 10 seasons of Cobra Kai, but more no, shit that no. taps into the stuff we yeah. love and doesn't disrespect it. Yeah, like I don't know if you saw our uh, uh, documentary we dropped this morning, which damn near killed me to put together. But <laughs> Beautiful title card, by the way. I'll admit, haven't watched it, but I saw that and I went, ooh. So. Yeah, it's it's well, you got to sit down and hunker down for about a half hour. But if you're a Karate Kid fan, there I did, I did so much deep diving and digging that chances are there there'll be a few things that you might know in there just from standard you know historical trivia aspects but i'll be if 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 you're somebody who watches that and you knew every darn thing that's in that documentary i want you to let me know in the chat because i'm impressed <laughs> because there was stuff that i dug up that as a super fan of karate kid that i didn't even know so like All right, i, I Tom, really I'm hope gonna, you guys love that so i'm gonna test your metal right now have you watched every episode of the cartoon i have not seen it since i was a kid so don't even ask me anything about that other than i, I know was just gonna about. And yeah. you know more about it than I do because I've only seen the oh. intro on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know this much. It's about them globe trotting around trying to get this uh, talisman or idol thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that was kind of supposed to tie into the third film, um, which is another interesting bit I've uncovered when I was doing this. Uh, uh, the proposed third original film was going to be a time travel movie. <laughs> and Miyagi what? and Daniel and a new female student we're going to ta travel back to ancient Okinawa when uh, <laughs> Miyagi's ancestor first brought karate over. And it was supposed to be in the vein of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. So <laughs> as yeah, bad as part three is, be glad we didn't get that. <laughs> but is it anything like Kung Fu High? No. No, and I think the series was kind of setting that up. I think the talisman was going to be the thing to send them back in time. Yeah, yeah. So, so Rob made Rob made a Rob made a thing. I've been playing with this one. We don't know if we if you wanted it for for after dark or not because it's thirty seconds. And I know sometimes that messes with the algorithm. But if you want it, just get with Rob. But here you go. Here's, here's Kung Fu High. Coming to the CW, another series about teen romance. <laughs> Sends. It's an ass kicking action. Miguel and Sam share tender moments talking about their feelings. And when Robbie finds out... <laughs> <laughs> the CW presents a new kind of team drama. That will kick you in the balls. <laughs> Come through. <laughs> now, I'm gonna, uh, I was going to say... Great. Drunk hilarious. Words. No, I was like, that's great. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rob, Rob, Rob knocked that one out. <clears throat> no, we kind of, we kind of we're bouncing the idea back and forth because because we're like, well, yeah, Cobra Kai is kind of just a lot of feelings in hallways, but there's also ass kicking. So. <laughs> well, that's because he also said, I'd like this show if it wasn't Karate Kid. He's like, it would just be called like Karate High. And it's like, yeah, we <laughs> like anything with karate in it, though, Rob. <laughs> yeah. Anything with karate in it? Hmm. I'm going to test we that. We have been I'm trying to talk, talk him into doing this show for a while. Because here's the thing with Rob. is Whenever you ask him, have, go, have you seen this? He's like, no. He's like, well, I think you'd like it. Well, is there karate in it? And if your answer is no, then he's like, probably I won't like it. <laughs> so it's like this ongoing joke. And, <laughs> and we want him to do a show where it's called, is there karate in it? <laughs> and we... <laughs> We want him to watch like the most benign movies he can find that would have absolutely nothing to do with karate and try and find karate in there. And if there's not, then he gets to bitch about it. Like the one I keep bringing up as an example is like the devil wears Prada. He could be like, not only is the devil never show up because you know, that'd be cool to have a fight with the devil. There's all kinds of high heels and not once does anybody do any high heel karate. <laughs> like, shit like that, you know, <laughs> just like this whole thing of just like, and then if he does happen to find something that's like, you know, food karate or something like that, if somebody beat somebody with food, you know, he's like, there is food karate, you know, <laughs> like, just little wow. things like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, drunk, since we talk about Star Wars all the time, are you a karate kid guy? Uh, did you grow up liking that movie? Big time, big time, big time. Hey, I loved hey, it. I, lo I, I liked all three. I like the third one too. I do too. Not even, do you like so, the fourth one though? 
Uh, uh, nah. Hey, Tom, <laughs> can I break your heart? Go ahead. The first Karate Kid film I saw was the next Karate Kid. You know, you're not the only person. Like, we've had like three or four people that have said <laughs> that in the comments already. Uh, it's just like, for some reason, that movie was everywhere. There was a movie that I would rent, and it had the trailer on it. And then I was at my uncle's house, and it was on like TNT or something. And I was like, what is this? And he's like, oh, it's the Karate Kid. And I watched it, and it it's the worst one hands down it is it is but uh like yeah you're you're not wrong when that movie came out sony pushed the ever loving hell out of it uh, i don't think they had much else that year that came out that's probably why <laughs> oh yeah it was a big flop and i think that was the other reason why it was everywhere is because it came out so quickly on home video if i remember right because it got um... pulled from theaters pretty quick yeah it only made like 12 13 million dollars <laughs> that's a disappointment <laughs> So uh, let's read a couple of the super chats before we start talking about some of the other stuff tonight. So first off, our friend James Zabirsky sends a thumbs up super chat sticker. Thank you very much, James. Uh, Jane Theory sends in a piece of cake. Thank you very much, Jane Theory. Oh, hey, Jane. Jane. Our friend Ed Starr says McDonald's stopped using beef tallow in 1985. Beef tallow oh, looks yeah. like Crisco and gives potatoes a meaty flavor. Oh, thank you, Ed. Uh... That's what Joel must have been talking about then, because you know, now that you say that, I do remember seeing some video, like, because when I'm editing, I'll just throw up random videos in the background sometimes and listen to whatever. And I do remember now. I was just, I don't know, I can't hear what Jesse's saying. I heard her say vegetarian, but yeah, I remember somebody saying in some YouTube video that back in the day, if you were a vegetarian, you would not want to eat, you couldn't even eat McDonald's fries because they had like beef in them and it was part of the ingredients. And that's probably why it's because the, the, the beef fat. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess you have to placate the people that don't eat beef. I don't know why you'd go to McDonald's anyway, but. Whatever. I just went there because it was quick and I had to get my ass back here for the show. <laughs> and I regret it now because my fries were garbage. <laughs> I have been either too inebriated or too lazy. We once ordered McDonald's and yeah, it was a mistake. Those fries are not meant for I am 10 minutes after they leave the fryer. No, no, I'm not a McDonald's fan overall, but it's quick. It's close. Yeah, that's the only reason. <laughs> Uh, our friend Cullex81, thank you very much. He says, I want somebody to make an MCU prequel movie called Thanos, The Hands of Fate. I'd watch that. <laughs> right? Uh, drunk, what is the best schlocky movie in your opinion? Just the best terrible film that you can just watch and go, huh, I enjoy it. I get it. Uh, Avatar. Who? Uh, Temple of Doom is my favorite Indiana Jones film of all time. Um, some people terrible. really disagree with that. Um, I'm actually with friend. you on that one, Jay, because yeah, outside, I mean, I know like, I know like, I guess objectively or subjectively, however you want to look at it, Temple of Doom is not the best of the Indiana Jones movies, but I like it the best. Yeah. I like that one. I like that one the best. Um, there's a man. I see. I love, I love like '80s movies that I never saw in the theater because I was too young. Like Weird Science, oh, that's um, a great movie. The yeah. Goonies, like Good those movie. type of those type of films. Like so, when they come on, I, I you know, I love it. I, I, I love that stuff. So it just, it's just a different era. Like I just recently, what did I just recently watch? I can't even remember. Uh, I think it was Porky's. Oh great! Oh yeah, like, uh, that was on it was on Amazon Prime, and it was like an '80s film. So I was like, I didn't know it was like that kind of. You've never <laughs> seen Porky's like, before? Wow. No, I've never seen it. Well, you can't be that much younger than me, are you? Well, I don't think it's. Listen, I I grew up in a very strict oh, household, okay. so it was. Well, even still, it, everybody knew about Porky's. I mean, <laughs> the Bob. Park I, I might I, I might have yeah. known about it, but I don't think I don't I don't. I've Is it hard to believe that, that I think Porky's was a bigger hit than Christmas Story at the time? If I'm not mistaken, I can understand why, man. Like, yeah, like because Christmas Story, I think, only made like thirty or forty million in the box office, which is a pretty big hit for the early '80s. But like, Porky's made like like almost one hundred and fifty million or some shit like that. You, well, you, you know, know what else? Just, you can knit oh, a sweater, God. Tom. That's why. So. I also love like uh, reliving old uh, slasher films, like the old Friday the Thirteenth films, which which now we could look at. I could watch and just laugh, but you know, as a little kid, like they scared me to death. But now you see the effects and stuff. I think, it, I think it's pretty hilarious. 
Um, even the old Fri- uh, Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street films. So, oh, now you're talking about jams. Yeah, I think I just, just re- <laughs> like because all of them are on like Amazon Prime now. So it's like it's just watching right. them uh, instead of the new stuff. So, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's great. our friend Commander Ed Straker of Shadow says, Oh, cool. It's the pants optional live stream in honor of Junk Creep. Congratulations, <laughs> today on 30K. You mean I can have my pants on? on? Now you tell me this shit. My pants are, are always <laughs> off during streaming. Now I'm taking my pants off. I live in Florida. It's hot here, man. No, it's but off. going back to what you're saying, what's funny is like, you know, we, 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 you know, we look at the entertainment now and some people come at us and go, Well, why are you bitching about this? It's like, you know what? I'm bitching about this because. There's no excuse for this crap, and Cobra Kai is a great example of why there's no excuse for this crap when it comes to Star Wars, Star Trek, what have you, insert it here. Because back in the day, you had a year like 84, where just in a matter of a few months, we got movies like Gremlins, Ghostbusters on the same day, mind you. Two weeks later, we got Karate Kid. Within that same year, by the year with year's end, we had shit like Footloose, Nightmare on Elm Street, Terminator... Uh, and then the year ended up with one of our favorite movies, Jeff, Beverly Hills Cop, which then went on to be the biggest movie of the year because oh, yeah. it played throughout 85 and just wouldn't stop. And, I mean, you had all these movies coming out at the same time, and that's where I just don't buy this bullshit excuse of, like, oh, there's oversaturation, there's this, that, and the other. It's like, no, 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 Because if that was the case, 1982, 1984, and 1989 would not exist. And I bring up those three years specifically because those are three of the biggest years for movies where like if you go and look at the year movies that came out that year you'll be like holy crap how did any of these movies manage to like live on because there was just so many it was just crazy i mean like 82 alone looked like et you had the, the thing you had you know poltergeist all this kind of stuff and and so on and then you know 89 of course had all the sequels to the movies from 84 and so it's like and batman on top of it so yeah i uh, Jesse and I talk all the time about film, and to me, I just the eighties is it. If if I had to watch one decade of movies, I could live with that forever and be happy. Yeah, Same well, with the, the the all the the only thing from the eighties I would get bored of would be the games after a while because I want you know <laughs> stuff I grew up with. But uh, music, movies, and TV shows, there's enough to keep me going for a long time. Well, yeah, I mean, to me, from like basically seventy to ninety five is like the golden era of the best Hollywood ever had to offer. Like, kind of kicking it off with The Godfather. Between, like, The Godfather and The Exorcist. Somewhere in there is where things like, okay, now we're something's different. We're going to give you something you've never seen before kind of thing. Like, and screw all this musical and talking rabbits. I, I mean, I even, you know what? Do you, I even love Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Great. Yeah. Movie. 85, I, yep. I think that movie's hilarious. <laughs> so. <laughs> you know, that was directed by Tim Burton, right? I had no idea. You didn't? Seriously? Oh, no, man. No. You didn't? I, didn't was, know was I believe that was Danny Elfman's first score, too. I think so. Good I think, stuff. Yeah. Uh, at least it's his first movie score, for sure, I think. Tim Burton was doing what? Uh, Frank and Weenie right before that? And that was yeah, his he was first... working for Disney and uh, Don Bluth. Yeah. He's a guy, while I would never call myself a Tim Burton fan and only like a handful of his shit, he's a guy I like as an artist, as a person. Kind of like Todd McFarlane, somebody that I love as a businessman, as all these other things. He may not be my favorite artist, but I find him compelling for so many reasons. And that's how I feel about Tim Burton. Just this guy that has this weird, otherworldly style that just appeals to so many people. Not to me, but I think it's cool that you know it works that way. And before anybody like yells at me, yes, there was some good movies in the latter half of the '90s, but they were just kind of more scattered to me. I mean, well, once once CGI kind of took over, it just kind of changed things. Well, Tom, you were on an interesting thread at the beginning of that because we talk a lot about you know the the big budget stuff, but the big budget fun stuff of the '80s does have to start really with that God like cinema changes. After that, at a certain point, and it just doesn't stop changing. It's like how we've had yeah. these so many the technological advances over the course of my life to the point where it's like nobody really has a f- cell phone, and now everybody has a phone, and now they're as thin as a piece of paper, and all this stuff. You had that with these films at that same speed almost, where in the 70s you had all these like really great, you know, Oscar worthy films, and then you built that, and then you went and it, you made it more fantastical. And without having that like realistic foundation at the beginning, you don't have anything at the end. So yeah. the sad part at the end of all I'm trying to get at is we don't have the foundation anymore. It's been broken no, away for no. so long, and nobody wants to take the time. Like, we look at the Wonder Woman numbers. They're not that hot. 
We look no. at bond might be pushed back another year and all these other things that we're looking at. And it's sad. I'm going to bring this up next week with Chris for sure. But that foundation just it, no one is going to take the time to clear a path and build fresh. We're always going to keep jumping off these other things and everything's just going to come off as a cheap derivative and no one's going to have a good time. Absolutely. And before people lynch me in the ding chat, because I can see a few people bitching already, not really bitching. I'm just kidding, but no, it, it started with easy rider. Really? The independent kind of flow into the seventies. And then yes, jaws was responsible for the blockbuster, but people forget that Godfather and exorcist made pretty close to jaws numbers before that too though so like yeah those those few movies are just kind of like the handful that kind of kicked it off psycho is another one that gets overlooked too because psycho was a real grindhouse kind of movie for hitchcock like they didn't want him to make that movie <laughs> like, hey tom yeah trivia question fandom menace trivia question who in the fandom menace's favorite movie is psycho oh, i should know this it's answer ethan it's Ethan. Ethan. Yeah, I, like I, Ethan. Say. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. Psycho. I've got an old Psycho poster from like 20 years ago that I just I still love, but it kind of has weird vibes on it, but I really love it still. No, you watch Psycho now, and I, I'm sure some people might disagree with me, but you can to me, you can watch that now and outside of the black and white, it feels like it was shot today. Like That's... Hitchcock was just so ahead of his time on that one. Yeah, dude. I I don't go into it because it would bore the audience, but I love Alfred Hitchcock movies. I could talk about them for hours. It's just I know why we're here. I know what people expect and want, but he is, I, in my eyes, he, I would say he's the best director ever. People go Stanley Kubrick. Some of his stuff just isn't for me, but Alfred Hitchcock, that's like that next level perfect director. For well, me. Hitchcock was kind of like Kubrick before Kubrick. You know, like if it wasn't for Hitchcock kind of paving the way for Kubrick, because if you jump from like no Hitchcock to Kubrick, you really are going to mess with your audience there. True. It's all, it, it, it's a sliding scale of getting people ready. I really, in the same way, that's exactly what I was getting at. Like you don't get to Star Wars unless you start building, you know, this new cinematic language exactly. of the Godfather. It might not exactly. be a one to one in terms of, you know, the Godfather helped Star Wars get made, but it's no, no, no. It's a direct cinema. line. You're right. It's like it goes from like Hitchcock to to uh, Kubrick to to today with Nolan. Like, I mean, again, I'm not exactly a fan of all his films, but he's the only person I could really sit there and compare to Kubrick in any way as far as how his movies really capture people and people debate over them. Like, we could sit here for an hour if you've seen, like, I couldn't, I, I understood Tenet, but I couldn't stand the movie. But, like, I'm sure I could have an interesting conversation with somebody who may not have understood it but loved the film. You know what I mean? That's what Kubrick and Hitchcock and those kind of directors did. And that's what Ryan Johnson was trying to say with that. I want half the audience to like my movie and <laughs> half the audience not to. But he's too fucking stupid to understand what he's trying to say even. It's like, no, you want the audience to debate what it is that you're putting in your movie. And that, in your eyes, will give it substance and will give it weight. When all you really did was just basically M. Night Shyamalan the entire Star Wars saga. Except M. Night Shyamalan actually did it with some class in the beginning. Yeah, and he, he wouldn't do that to Star Wars, off. I don't think. Sorry. Well, I was say, but I was going to no, no, no. I was saying, though, is like even that comparison, M. Night Shyamalan, you could you can use that as, oh, they got M. Night Shyamalan. But even if you want to be dig deeper, and, well, we'll look at M. Night Shyamalan now. He actually had a big career resurgence. So even then, like Ryan Johnson can't even rip off somebody who had a low point at their career. Like he is the wrong guy at the wrong time for that franchise. And you, the best part is it's all documented on the director of the Jedi. He's just as big of an idiot behind the scenes as he is, you know, for all the shit we see. And he is one of those guys where the media builds him up to be something great. And he's never been that. I liked Looper enough. And I thought uh, Knives Out was just fine, but he's not, I give Christopher Nolan credit. He is that next level in terms of, you know, who you go to. And maybe you'll, you can put him in the conversation of Kubrick and all that other stuff if you want to, but there aren't too many guys today working that you can still have that conversation about. And I think that goes directly when we talk about why don't they make good movies anymore or why don't they do this or do that? Because either those guys produce or they're dead or, you know, they do other things or they just retire. Look at George Lucas. He had nothing left to give and he, he's gone. So Right. Well, and a lot of things are too much by committee now, especially if it's a franchise. I mean, because well, they're so damn expensive. Yeah, unless you're somebody who's, uh, you know, lucky enough to get in and make a movie like, say, a John Wick or something like that that actually builds a franchise. Like, I mean, and it's not like the studios don't have any precedence for this. Look at, like, the Matrix series, what happened there. You know, I believe they gave the Wachowskis full autonomy on those sequels, and they were fucking utter garbage. 
You know, <laughs> so I mean, I, it's not like I can't say there isn't precedent for the studios to be like, no, 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 no. We got to be a bit more protective of these things. Yeah, it's great that you gave us and brought us this new original idea, but we can handle it from here. It's like I don't, I do understand that mentality. Do I believe it's the right way to go? No, um, but. Yeah, I mean, I do see that as a protective measure to be like, look, we got to make sure we don't get a Matrix out of this thing, because the Matrix could be a, a could have been a franchise that we bet we'd be up to like Matrix Eight by now. You know, it could have <laughs> yeah, lived way true. beyond Keanu. It could have, but they screwed it up. So anyway, I I think that's the mentality of just the industry in general. It's yo. We're going to treat it like a property that's a, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of it, it's a business commodity. You know, we're just going to treat it like this. It sounds artsy fartsy, but these things are, you know, art and they do require all that. You can have what stance you want to have, but we're all here for popular culture. And everybody that created is in some way an artist. If you want to just like, I don't know, George Lucas is an artist for being a writer, this or that, a creator. And when you lose that artistry, I know it sounds, you know, all hippy dippy and fun, but when you lose that magic, that's why the movies just don't touch us the same way. They reach us, you know, you hit your heart and go, oh, wow, that movie really spoke to me. You can use the Goonies that you brought up earlier. There's magic to the Goonies. That connection those, those what, six kids have on that adventure, you feel it come off the screen. You're involved. You're invested. Stuff today is so hollow. Even Stranger Things that wants to rip off the Goonies to a degree can capture a little bit of that magic, but they still don't get it. I think that well, you, just comes from the world we live in. You know what's weird? Like, when, when you're younger and you watch something like the Goonies, you, you saw like kids would go outside and want to be that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, treasure hunting and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's uh, to be, to be honest. And I, I don't know why I get a lot of uh, slack for this. But the, the last time I actually saw that was with black Panther. Um, I took a bunch of kids from the boys and girls club to see black Panther. And um, it just, for whatever whatever criticisms we can have about that movie, it, pretty much valid. But uh, I got to see young people uh, come back the next day and ex like relive Black Panther at school and things like that as a school teacher, and it, it, it was really a moment for me to see that. And it, it's movies just don't do that anymore. Like I haven't seen um, you know people just experience films and then get lost in it. Does that make sense? Oh, like, dude. Uh, get lost in the film and 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 it becomes like you want to go out and buy the t-shirt and the action figures and the posters and and just be surrounded by an experience that you had for an hour and a half um you know and and just be in that moment for you know, to be reminded of that moment in everything that you do from the clothes you wear to the posters to everything it's just it just seems like it's and, it's kind of lost and that's where disney lost star wars mm, exactly because yeah, they made their money at the box office. And I know they like to tell us, oh, The Phantom Menace, you can't argue a billion dollar movie is not a success. But it is. It's all about the imprint. You know, dude, the way you said it about you want to live with this stuff. You wear it on your chest. You take it everywhere with you. If you don't like it, you don't do that. That's, to me, the indicator of something you really care about. And they don't. And the reason people don't do it is because they don't make anything that's worthy of that. When I find something, you know, Black Panther means something to a lot of people. I'm not in that demographic, but Spider-Man, the first one, meant that to me. So I, I understand that those types of feelings are, you know, for different people. Uh, I would argue you could say, eh, you get older, you lose that magic, but you really don't. Dude, Tom, earlier last year, Bill and Ted was that same shit for us. Jesse and I, you were on the stream with us. It, right now with the woke entertainment with all this garbage that's out there my advice to the audience if anything if you follow or take away anything from the stream besides to you know support all the people in the stream tonight like you know find the good stuff that's why tom brings up 41 million people watched cobra kai we're not talking about you know bullshit numbers anymore we're talking about bigger than big bang theory numbers yeah i mean we're going by what netflix said but this is the thing we always say is like when these things are a hit they don't hide it they, they exactly. will yell it from the, the mountaintops mm -hmm. like we've got a hit here, folks. They have um, to they have to make yeah. up shit to complain about just to get any clicks on their articles. Because when you go in, like the one you sent you sent me from Inverse the other day, and there was another one oh, um, that I talked started about. on that one. Yeah, there's <laughs> another one that I, that I talked about um, where they're saying, "Oh, Cobra Kai needs to. It's time for Netflix to sweep the leg." It's like you guys are just, you're just finding shit to make up because you 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 think that hate clicks are going to get you the clicks. Well, I don't even think it's that so much as they're looking at it as oh this show has a bigger platform now, 
it's a good thing that you found something you like, but it's too it's too white. Mm-hmm. We we need to fix it for you. And these these critics or articles or whatever you want to call them pundits. What I'm getting from these articles, specifically the one you were brought up first, the inverse one, mm-hmm. is that they are basically making threats to the makers of Cobra Kai and Netflix saying, yeah, you got a good thing here. Just fix it so we don't go after it again. Like, it's almost like they know it's too good to go after directly because they know they're going to just get raked over the coals because it's very popular, obviously. But what they're trying to do is the same shit they've been doing to us for the last few years. Is they're trying to say, oh, wait, it's a good thing you like this, but guess what? It's problematic. And we need to fix it for you. And what fixing it for you means is coming in and just wrecking it, basically. (laughs) Because they don't like the idea of a show that has a white male lead. Uh, another technical white male lead, even though depending on who you ask, if it if it benefits their narrative, he's not white. But if it, if it does, then it is. And then the other stupid thing I keep hearing, and you called a lot of this bullshit out early too, Mecca, was when people are like, "Where's all the Asian representation on Cobra Kai?" And you're like, um, "Just because it's a show about karate, does that necessarily mean it has to have an Asian lead in it?" Right. You know, and not because to mention, that would then. Yeah. We- we, we 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 covered this like 30 years ago when when people would say oh it's racist to stereotype all all Asians as knowing karate or having gee another Asian knowing karate that's stereotype that's racist yeah because I think a lot of this started from a uh, a Marvel writer uh, I can't remember his name offhand but he is Asian I know that but he like brought this point up and he just got ratioed to hell on on twitter because everybody's like now just and i think you were one of the first persons to point that out was the same thing you just said basically is that's a little racist just to assume that just because the show's called you know about karate is it should have an asian lead in it and you know everybody else was pointing out the obvious without getting into spoilers is that like you know if you've even seen some of the episodes you know miyagi is a big part of this show even though he's not there his absence is not felt at all like he's a very very present Mm -hmm. character in the show despite not being on camera you know, and then, you know, just a lot of the stuff that happened in this last season just makes you scratch your head and go, is it, are these people insane? Because it, it really, that's what it boils down to is we're not allowed to like it because it's too white and it's not woke enough for them. That's the other thing that bothers them is that the show, show makes fun of woke culture. That's Because why. it's exactly what needs to happen right now because this woke culture stuff is garbage. Yeah, because yeah. they don't like Johnny because Johnny says and does a lot of the things we feel and believe, but at the same time, Johnny, they don't get it. Johnny is the Archie Bunker character. He's the lovable idiot. Mm-hmm. He has the heart of gold, but the mind of a moron. <laughs> like that's, you know, like when the kid says, like, I'm on the spectrum, he's like, I don't know what that is, but get off it. You know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Shit like that. I mean, that's what we say. Like he's, he's Archie Bunker. This is exactly what he is. And, and and if anybody who knows all in the family, it, that was the whole point of the show is that Archie was a bigot and a racist, but he only was a bigot and a racist because of the way he was raised in his heart of hearts. He really wasn't like that was the whole point of the show is every episode, you know, he would pretty much be shown up and would learn he was being a racist, bigoted idiot. <laughs> You know, like that's, that's where the whole George point Jefferson of the show. Came from. Exactly. Exactly the point. Yeah, because George Jefferson was his neighbor for years, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, yeah, that, that that to me was the main takeaway I got from all these articles that are attacking Cobra Kai is that we're not allowed to like it because it's too white and it's it's not woke enough for them. Which is I bullshit because argue... if you watch it, <clears throat> arguably what, outside of the main characters' families, there's not any other white characters? Sorry, Jeff, I'm done. Oh, no, I was the, I was just going to say, if the, the show takes, I've seen the show, it takes place out here. I just find it funny living out here knowing like exactly how many people you'd see this and that and the other that the show goes the other way to make sure you know i don't be stereotypical too blah blah blah. i really want cobra kai to last well as long put it this i want it to last as long as it deserves to that makes sense so many shows overstep their boundaries it's nice to say i want this show to last forever but look my favorite show it's always sunny in philadelphia they're just too old for the jokes to work anymore, and it's just not funny. Which is so, funny because yeah. they just got renewed for like what four more seasons or some shit. Which is, dude, it's so bizarre. I'm not one of these hipster people that goes just because something becomes popular, I dislike it. Contrary, if I like something, I stick through it. But if it turns sour midway, I'm not going to stick it through, and it sucks because that yeah. was I, Tom. I don't know about you, same mecca and um, drunk. Tell me, I, I'm going to ask you this question: What's a show that made you laugh till you had a headache? Because that show would make me laugh every week. 
so hard, tears running down my face, headache because it was such good comedy. And it's kind of like the Star Wars thing where you, you're angry, but you're really disappointed too. Now, it's not like Star Wars where you had people want to uh, do all sorts of stuff with um, investing or sorry, putting their politics into it. This is just a group of people who just, you know, lost the touch a little bit. Yeah, part of it. I think you're right. I mean, I can't argue with that anyway. I mean, but I do think like there's this, uh, I do feel like there's a little bit of uh, an agenda involved too. Uh, that's the other sad part of it. And, and and if it was coming from a more genuine place, I wouldn't have any issues. It'd be like, oh, you know, your opinion's your opinion. But when you see these articles and you see these reviews and they're clearly biased because whatever it is is not living up to their woke agenda, it just, it gets annoying. And it's like, obviously you're just doing this to create some kind of, you know, issue. And, and the one article, especially the inverse one, I got, I got the feeling like it was really just trying to tell you like, oh, you didn't like the last Jedi for these reasons. Cause that's what the stupid article was doing was comparing Cobra Kai to the last Jedi. And it was like, oh, so you don't like the last Jedi, but you like Cobra Kai. Well, you're wrong because Cobra Kai is just like the last Jedi. And she goes through this entire diatribe of trying to compare the two. And it's like, you are really stretching here, like super stretching because there are very, very, very only surface level similarities you can compare to Star Wars and Cobra Kai and Karate Kid, what have you. Other than that, there is no real comparison. You know well, what I Tom, mean? Like they're to two totally different animals. What it really boils down to is this moral authority trying to tell us, the audience, what right, right. you like and how to think. And that's the scariest part is this this what to think mentality because it's not enough to oh we want you to watch this show because it sells ads or we want you to wear our clothes because we make money now it's not enough to just control your finances they want to control your thought process and it's when you disagree and you should disagree with stuff because if you blindly buy into everything you probably won't live a very long life but now it's become the norm to get so vicious and to get so ugly and it's at the end of the day, dude, it all just boils down to being disappointing. I know we talk about this sort of stuff, and it's and it doesn't change. You know, they're always gonna come after you if you don't agree and like a certain thing. And you know what, folks, you're the audience. They don't exist without us. So right. watch what you like and do what you like. No one can ever make you feel guilty for liking something. This isn't That's one of those situations. Sure. Yeah, dude. I know we started with a big positive slant, but I'm gonna keep it going with this. If anyone says, oh, if you like this, you're this type of person, never read that person's work again. Because if they're willing to put you in a box that quick on something so small, if they ever try to write on something serious, how can I trust their take? Because if they're so dumb that they're going to lump you in with a, a, a terrible, bigoted person because you don't like Ray from Star Wars, then those people are stupid. And we should treat them as such and ignore them and get your pop cultures from elsewhere. Because that's not really doing anything good. That's trying to bring in this... I don't want to call it college mentality because academics are cool and fine if you're, you know, into it. But like it brings this level of crazy that never needed to be there. Doesn't. No, and you asked me what show I watched that made me laugh. Uh mm -hmm. Chappelle show made me yeah. laugh. Oh yeah, that was good. Every five I can't I still go back and watch that show. That I loved you know, in uh, when I was in school, I, I would, me and my brother would sneak uh, around to watch the show in Living Color with Jim Carrey. Yeah, and the yeah, great stuff, yeah. That show was hilarious, and I also yeah. I I like the Fresh Prince man. They yeah, laugh. Fresh Prince was good. So, South Park at it, at its best has always been something that's been able to make me just like roll like, like the movie. I swear, I fell out of my seat like twice. Oh, God, laughing yeah. so hard. Like especially I, when he slaps when Terrence slaps. <laughs> All that Winona Ryder? Uh, no, not Winona Ryder. Um, um, I was on the set of the Blue Lagoon. Or I oh, Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields. Shields yeah. yeah, just and the timing of it. It was just so damn. Per I lost it. It was like the first time I saw that. Like, yeah. But I am loving the jokes. Yeah. I'm sorry, Tom. I am loving the. Uh... The Dave Chappelle comments all in the chat right now. It is pretty funny. Charlie Murphy, Home, Home of the Clown was in Living Color. Yeah, I'm, I'm just seeing everyone in the chat like that. It's hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah, the Charlie Murphy stories were, oh, man. They're still, they still make me cry. Oh, dude. They still make me cry today. Rest cry peace, laughing. Charlie like, that's how, that's how funny they were. So, oh, look, the comedy community lost a big, big, big bunch of, uh, laughs when charlie died that was sad oh you gotta make us talk about the high republic i mean this is the high council so well let's be clear here this thing is 
Oh, I want to. I want to shout out the one I, I really love on um, the the show I, that makes me laugh all the time. It's Corner Gas. It's a Canadian show. They have an animated one that kind of continues. There's three seasons of that and six of the original. I laugh so hard every single time. That's probably my favorite funny show. That's more recent. That kind of makes oh, me I'm laugh so hard. I need to hit the bathroom. <laughs> uh, Mecca, I'm pulling that Wikipedia page right now because I've never heard of this show, but I'm definitely gonna check it out. It's it's um okay so it's a little small town in Canada somewhere up in Saskatchewan where they have a gas station attached to a diner and it's kind of like a Canadian Seinfeld only funny. Oh good because it needs to be funny for me to be for it to be like Seinfeld and like it. <laughs> it's got it's got a lot of cutaways like Scrubs um a lot of really great character sort of dialogue-y stuff so I, I like that type of humor it's very it's very fun. I like that the like excuse me the lead actor's name is Brent Butt. Oh, he's great. Too, he's, so. he's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> and he writes uh, the show too. Uh Tom, what was your answer? Probably South Park. Um Okay. Sorry. Uh, I forgot. I know he talked brought up the movie, but I uh No, no, yeah. Brain like Park. outside of that. Gosh. Like all the I stuff saw you guys... Wilderton in chat. We gotta spit now. What what? <laughs> I saw I'm seeing a lot of uh, wonderful corner gas love here. Oh gotcha. So gotcha. they said Wilderton in chat, so we have Isn't to that great? Um, gosh, I mean, there's you guys have mentioned so many great ones already that yeah, like oh yeah, Bob Gable. There you go, the Ricky Gervais cartoons with Carl. Those were hilarious. Um, oh yeah, yeah, Carl P Pilkington or however you say his last name. Carl Pil Carl Pilkington is funny anyway. Like he's, he's got yeah. a reality show where he travel. He's got a couple of them uh, where he just travels around and he's the same. I watched thing. a couple of those, but yeah, like yeah, that, that's definitely comedy gold. But anything, you know, I just I generally stick with, like, you know, I, the things you guys have mentioned are all the best. Beavis and Butthead, too, is a classic. Um, I don't remember that ever getting stale. So Yeah, they're that. still good. I can still watch them. Well, Mike Judge has the – he knows when to end his shows. All of them. He just he's, – he's a great guy. Or he's great – he's tapped into that because it leaves you wanting a little more. I mean – Beavis and Butthead was revived in 2011, and I thought it was good. Most people didn't know it was on. And then this new one means there's still demand for it. So Th those are characters I just don't think have a place anymore. Like, not like Bill and Ted who grow because they're real humans. Beavis and Butthead are just 90s teenagers in the new new millennium. And it doesn't, unless they're just going to lampoon it, it's not going to be funny if they try to make it. Well, did you, you know, see the revival from a few years ago? Yeah, I really liked it. Yeah, I, was like, I don't it. think, I'm not too worried about it. I think Mike knows how to. He's just gonna plop them in the now. Is all yeah, because they can now. just they can still make fun of woke culture, you know, even more than they did then. So, so our friend Scott Skio too says Boulder Boy calling anybody else names is peak keck. Well, <laughs> I will say the same statement I made about him when he appeared on the High Council. Uh, won't ever say anything bad about the guy. Just won't stream with him either. So, there we go. We've we've talked. We had our moment, and that's done. Uh, our friend for Sparta says, this drink's on me. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Drunk, you drinking anything tonight? Uh, uh water. Well, you're <laughs> so drunk yeah, that you're spilling your drink on you, then it's time. To I don't, I don't, I don't hit the alcohol till uh, Friday. And then, uh, and then I kind of sober up on Sunday. But uh, my drink of choice is Coors Light. <laughs> I like Coronas. And actually, my... My favorite drink is mojitos because Miami boy here. So like uh, anytime drink. I can get a mojito, man, I will drink mojitos till mojitos and a cigar, baby. I'm 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 set. I wish so. I wish I would have met you a couple years back because for years I've called Miami my favorite city, and every time I go, I just have an amazing time. But it's now up for debate whether New Orleans is my favorite city because I've had more good times there. So have you been to Orlando? Oh yeah, I've been to Disney Universal. No, all that no, 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 not that. That's theme park Orlando. Oh. Man. Next time you come, I'll take you to Orlando. So we, we, yeah, I hear, I hear you can drink a little bit, Jeff, just a little bit. Uh, you know, I heard a uh, few drinks and then I got to tap out because <laughs> I'm a lightweight. Apparently, <laughs> yeah, but people don't realize is that uh, I, I'm six, almost six four, about two sixty, so I can hang, man. I can hang, so maybe I can hang. So I, I'm gonna. I want to test the theory with Jeff. I want to test my. 
So I think it's confirmed you're the second tallest person in the fandom menace then. <laughs> Might be. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I've met most people, or I've met a good chunk of the people, and I'm taller than everyone. So if you're uh, you know, 6'4", then yeah, you get to take that. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. We we could drink, man. We could drink. We can ask. Oh yeah, uh, it's well, it's not funny, but uh, been taking better care of myself. So I'm a little slimmer, and I don't drink much. So I'm interested to see the effects of uh, one of my old parties on my body now. So <laughs> should be uh, fun. Oh, dude, bring it on. <laughs> oh, our, our friend Smatter effects says, "I'm glad to see that Drunk 3PO overcame his candy corn blunder. Is now on the straight and narrow." <laughs> That you know, uh, last year that almost split the Phantom Menace for good. Was the uh, I started the great me and Ryan Kennel started the great candy corn divide because I I tweeted I was like man I can't wait for Halloween because I get candy corn and Ryan was like anybody who eats that is uh you know is a soy boy I mean we went back and forth all last year and then all of a sudden we didn't realize there was a big divide between people that like candy corn and people that hate it so <laughs> you had to choose your side and. The big factor was, see, so we started, like, pulling teams. So I was, like, me. I had Anna. I had Mara Jade. You know, I had all these people. I had all these big, I you know, Gary. I remember I subbed for you because you didn't weren't going to make it to the debate, and then you back, you came back. Yeah. I, I, Gary from Nerd Rock. Tom, I had all these people that were pro candy corn going up against the anti, anti-candy corn night or whatever you want to call them. Um, and... And then Gina Carano shows up and says, yeah, I don't, I don't like candy corn either. So I, that just uh, screwed everything up for me. So. <laughs> Gina Carano knows what's yeah. up. The woman has good taste. Listen well, to well, her. To be fair, to I don't like candy corn, but I was willing to fight for it for drunk 3PO because I believe in him. <laughs> I like candy corn. I'm not there, afraid to admit it. There we go. Yes. See, the pumpkins well, are so much better. I like the th- little candy pumpkins. I, I like those just as much, Mecca. I think I made the best argument with, you know, even whether you eat them or not, it's to me, candy corn is kind of like, you know, having Christmas without candy canes, you know, at at Halloween. Like they're just there. Even if they're just sitting on somebody's table, they're just part of the decor for the, the, the Halloween slash Thanksgiving season. Look at the chat, man. The chat is so divided. Candy corn is good. Next comment. Candy corn is trash. Candy corn. Cancel him. Oh man. See, this is, I don't know why candy corn triggers people like this. You know this. what it's I think crazy. this is? You know what I think this is, Drunk? This is a lot of stuff that people used to do in offices, and it's just carried over to the internet. Like the debating about candy corn, the whole is Die Hard a Christmas movie. Like, I love just, it, man. Yeah, age-old debates that have gone from the I, the, the water cooler to, to, to YouTube and Twitter and stuff like that. Well, yeah. it was I, – I text Ryan, too, when all this was really happening because people were, like, getting – look at the chat. That's hilarious how fast it's going over candy corn. Um. I just said, hey man, there's so much toxic stuff on on uh on Twitter. Let's just let's just push this thing for a whole month. Let's just fight it, it out. Fun. And like, yeah, and make it fun. And uh it, it that that would be and it was great. It was great. I, I I don't mind, you know, falling on my sword, but I've got enough people there. Once Gary came around, now I have Jeff. It's 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 game over, guys. Sorry. You might as well just uh pack up and go. Drunk, you know what the argument I always use is? They make it every year, so it has to be decent. And then my favorite <laughs> argument is, no, Jeff, they don't make it every year. It's the same candy corn because sugar never rots. Last year, during this... Last year, during this candy corn debate, somebody sent me 50 pounds of candy corn. I don't know what it cost them. What a waste. Oh, the box oh, was huge. Uh, it was heavy. I had to, I literally, they got one of those little carts to wheel it out to my car. Oh, but inside was uh, just tons of bags with uh, like the, I don't know, a hundred different flavors. Like they make, um, yeah, they make cherry candy corn and blueberry candy corn and pumpkin pie tasting and, and, you know, all, like hot sauce candy. Corn. It, it was just like every crazy. season now too. Yeah. It like was they crazy. Have every holiday and stuff now. And did oh. I eat it all? I'll never tell. <laughs> oh, it's well, you'll never need to rush because it'll never go back. Let's just say there's a lot of kids that'll never run out of candy corn. <laughs> you know, if the government ever invents or we ever invent a car that runs on sugar, candy ca- excuse me, candy corn will be the new fuel of the future, and we'll be fighting over it like Mad Max. So 
you know, you joke now, but stock up, uh, drunk. You got the uh, the right idea. <laughs> exactly. I'm ready to go. Uh, also, Paul Pagoda in the chat. Shout out to you. That is the best Dell Preston reference I've seen in years. So the fact that you just threw that in when we talked about candy, I wanted to uh, applaud you and give you a <laughs> shout out on air, dude. <laughs> Fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, Tom, do you love Wayne's World 2 or is it just a shitty sequel? Oh, I love Wayne's World 2. Mecca, same question. I don't remember disliking it, but I haven't seen the second one in so long. Yeah, it's not as good as the first one, but no, but if there's it's not really, really you don't want to discredit movies. it though. I mean, you want the two pack. I'm glad it wasn't a retread of the first movie. I mean, that's one thing I think that never gets brought up is like it wasn't the same exact story, you know? Yeah. Uh, drunk, Green same question. Stock. <laughs> I have that T-shirt. Uh, I I actually lo- I actually loved Wayne World too. I love Cassandra. I love that girl, man. Oh Who man, doesn't. She was so hot in those uh, in those movies, dear God. She she was so cool. Like that was the first movie I remember watching where the guy had a cool girlfriend. Where I was like, man, Cassandra could kick ass, especially when he. Well, it's the first one where she uh, uh, yeah, fights yeah. in the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a night, huh? Everybody's yeah. kung fu fighting. <laughs> Dude, I love how he instantly knows he whiffed the joke. That's what yeah. makes it work. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> We've all been there trying to oh, you know, look cool. It's like the it's it's like going up to the um, the woman and saying, "Hey, so when are you due?" And they're like, "I'm not pregnant." Yeah, I really love the Sorry bits between uh, uh, um, Dana Carvey and Kim Basinger. Oh, like, those are the bats. <laughs> yeah, take he is me, a Garth. dead man. <laughs> yeah, take me, Garth. Where it's cold, <laughs> you don't have a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite line. Um, he she goes, "Take me, Garth. Where I'm low on gas, and you need a coat." Oh, that's low on gas. Yeah, I'm low on gas, and you need a coat. I like him tiny and it's toasty. toasty. <laughs> Even though we probably get like six views, I want us to do a commentary for Wayne's World too. Oh hell yeah, yeah, yeah! Don't you think it was a trite and necessary to see the Indians' bottom? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is a good movie. I didn't have naked an Indian, and <laughs> Jim Morrison. Morrison came to me in a dream and told me <laughs> I'm going to put on the world's greatest concert. Tom, you can laugh. I didn't know who Jim Morrison was until I saw Wayne's World. 2. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that, man. It's a good gateway, especially yeah. if you watch the Doors after that. It's a head trip, I imagine, because <laughs> you're just like, oh my god, dude. Fuck? Wayne's World. Uh, it's just, it's oh man, I love it. And the Doors were one of my favorite bands, so it all worked out. <laughs> So I'm assuming uh, you saw the movie after the fact, though the, the Oliver Stone movie, right? Yes, many years yeah, later. Yeah. So then you're like, you got all the jokes, yeah. <laughs> you know, the Lost Boys is my gateway to the Doors, and I'm hu- a huge Doors fan because of that. Even that though, was probably my gateway, yeah. Yeah, even even though it's the Echo and the Bunnyman version of People Are Strange, you only see Jim Morrison on a poster. But... Oh, and uh, the Lost Boys. Yeah. Yeah. God, what a great movie. Oh, uh, real quick, folks. We do have to make an announcement. Uh, the stuff with Chris Gore, we're going to have to push that back one extra week. So uh, just stay tuned for next week's show. We'll make that announcement. But, uh, yeah, we just wanted to give you guys plenty of heads up and know what's going to happen next week. Uh, also, folks, while you're in the chat, make sure you guys sign up for uh, the Phantom Menace edition of Stealing Solo. The link is in the description. It has been uh, painted by Anna, that Star Wars girl. It's an amazing cover. And uh, if you're a fan of Anna, this project helps her, too. The Phantom Menace is all about helping each other and doing you know big things. But uh, we don't do it alone. So Anna and I are working on this one together. So show it some love. Show her some love. And uh, when we reveal it, you're going to be blown away. And uh, thankfully... Uh, it's a big community thing, so I'm just excited. I can't wait to show it. So uh, let's see. We have a couple more Super Chats I'd like to read, and then I'd like to talk about the High Republic because, well, hey. Uh, first off, we have our friend uh, Aaron, or sorry, Aaron Sakharo says, Greetings from the People's Republic of America with a frowny face. <sighs> yeah. It's been a weird couple of weeks, man. It's uh, Twilight Zone level. <laughs> To say the least, yeah. I like I said, uh, everyone knows my stance. I don't go deep into the politics, but I can comment and say the world's a weird place right now, and it's weirder than it's ever been in my lifetime. So that's it. That's all I'll say. Either way, um, our friend Mexican Iron Man, we haven't heard from him in a minute. What's up, man? He says they call him Stalker slash call him Mister Carano slash mock him White Knight slash call Jay Sith Lord of Simp and sing me me me, wishing for three PO's demise. <laughs> to say this, all I could say is, "Hail Jay, my sour cream and guacamole launcher, stand by the ready, sir." <laughs> Thank you, brother. 
what a great support he's been to me over the years from like day one. So now what are the, uh, with, with a sour cream and guacamole launcher, uh, what can you do? Like, what kind of enemies can you take down? Because I've been playing a lot of Doom Eternal, so I've been playing with really vicious weapons. But sour cream and guacamole can and seem very quaint. Uh, who are you shooting with them? <laughs> uh, anybody with, um, I think anybody, a- anyone that has, like, blue hair. Oh. I like sour cream. I could ask... Um, I could ask SJW Jesse about that if uh, if she likes sour cream. But... Social justice Jesse, do you like sour cream? Uh, no, it obviously See? not. It is white, so it's See? the patriarchy. Uh, <laughs> anybody should know that. Uh, drunk as my biggest fan, I'm really kind of offended that you didn't realize that. What if you added some food coloring to it? <laughs> Oh my God, Tom! Don't you understand that dismantling the patriarchy is not as simple as simple as pretending it doesn't exist? Isn't that what you guys keep I, doing? Of course, you don't understand that you are a white man. Oh I my know God. this, but I mean, I love SJ Don't Tony normally Jeff. you just uh, like replace whatever listen, some white listen, man? Okay. Oh my God, Tom! I understand that you mean well, okay, but like I'm really triggered right now. So like I already took the time to make drunk an ally. So I'm going to need you to just talk to him because, like, white man's a white man because, like, it's really too traumatic for you to ask somebody, like, of color or a woman to do this. So I think you just need to find someone, like, drunk who really has to, like, pay for being a white man some more so he can really start. You can help. You'll actually be helping him. On his wait, 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 wait. Drunk pays like, for men? What? what did you say? You just, did you just say that drunk pays for men? What? He needs to pay for the fact that he is a man. Oh my god! And now you're disparaging sex work. Of course you are. No, no, no. I was just trying to be clear. Sex work is is bad. I didn't even know drunk was white. Oh my god! Is this like some kind of I don't see color joke? No, no. It was. It's a everybody thinks drunk is black joke. (laughs) I I hope you're. That's why I'm okay with him. Obviously, because like there you go. I love Jesse to death. People have no idea. <laughs> they have no idea. SJW um, Jesse is awesome. Though. I love, I might freaking miss it. I love her. Oh, she's live every Friday on Live It right now at uh, three o'clock during that segment. But then there'll be some, some, some stuff, some more stuff. But, Skotsky uh, says you get paid every time you say white. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We're about to get paid then because. Uh, Justina Ireland tells Star Wars fans not to purchase higher public. And now earlier she had made comments about bashing white men. Now I'm not white, but I'm not black, but I'm also bothered by these kind of comments because it's like, why do you pick on somebody because of their skin color? I thought 50 or 60 years ago we had worked through this shit and everyone was like, yeah, the path suck. Let's all be better about stuff. And then we were for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, people on the internet like to tear people apart because they don't like the pop culture they write. So we have insecure people pulling the anti-white male card. Can I can, yeah. can I say something real quick? Everyone oh, in the sure. chat, don't leave the stream. But see if you are blo- if you have a Twitter, see if you are blocked by Justina Ireland, who ran a mega blockchain about an hour ago and bragged about it on her Twitter for those that weren't blocked. So see if you're one of the lucky ones that got blocked oh, by boy. High Republic author Justina. Right? That's her to say your name. Right? I, wasn't, I wasn't the last time I looked. I was not. Or I currently Justina am not blocked by her. Ireland. Oh. Well, I now am. I am. Now I am. I no. wasn't earlier. I wasn't earlier either, but now I am too. Yeah, I'm well, blocked. <laughs> don't don't, don't Wait, worry. Uh, it looks like she's a Steelers fan, and Ohio beat the holy hell out of them. So there we go. <laughs> I don't even like sports. It's all up in game to see if you're in the in crowd. Jeff's not in the in crowd. He didn't yeah, get blocked. I am but... not blocked, which means I have to read her effing title on Twitter. <laughs> you need to try <laughs> harder, <laughs> Jesse. Incredible emptiness. Wow, we'll drown faster, bitch, so we can all be spared. <laughs> God damn! <laughs> Drowning in emptiness. What? What is she? Fifteen? Is she? Is she? Is she like in going through her emo phase? I mean, considering that she openly admits never reading past page fifty of a book, I'm sure she probably hasn't emotionally progressed past age fifteen. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Oh, and did you guys see her other big speech she did online? Did she really just say I'm drowning? Did she really say that's her Twitter handle? Her Twitter name is Justina drowning in the like the maternal emptiness or something. Oh yeah, drowning (laughs) in an indescribable (laughs) emptiness. Yes, I, if I were her and I lived the life that she did and I said the things that she did, I would probably also be drowning in indescribable emptiness. Oh my gosh, you can't make this stuff up. We <sighs> uh, should make a video called Life Past Page 50, the Justina Ireland story. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh my gosh, do you want to do like a VHF1 behind the music mockumentary? Yes. Oh my God. You want to make that for next week? Oh, about what happened to her mind when she read past page 50 and realized that she didn't need to go on a woke crusade her entire goddamn life because all the good minority characters started on page 51. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I am blocked on my actual account. So, you know, I opened up an incognito window and yes, she is drowning in an indescribable emptiness. <laughs> <laughs> it's Star Wars, everyone. Star yeah. Wars. You know what, though? For everyone that wants to say, Ooh, this is what the Phantom Menace brings to the table. No, this is what the Phantom Menace calls out because this is the yeah. type of bullshit that's been acceptable. People say, oh, this is acceptable. I don't recall Stan Lee back in the day saying, you didn't like my comic? Must mean you're stupid, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Stan Lee handled it with tact. And if you want to put messages in your books, which I'm not really about today because people just aren't smart enough for it. I don't want yeah. in politics infusing my entertainment. I'm looking for, right now, I'm looking for a 1980s palate cleanse, a fun, digestible pop culture until the world cools down. Look what happens in the real world. You have the Cold War for decades, the wall comes down, you know, the pressures are different, and then entertainment shifts. I want that pre, while, while everyone's, you know, nervous about what's going to happen, we just make entertainment that doesn't reflect the shit we live in because the shit we're living in isn't that good right now. But I'm, when I look at stuff like this, when I hear from Justina Ireland make her comments about stuff like that, I just go, why is this always in, with Star Wars? Because it wasn't about that. When you had George Lucas, for better or worse, There was a certain level of respect, a standard, a gold standard that came with that brand. And for every time someone wants to tell us that things have changed, this happens and proves the point that they don't respect us. The Luke Skywalker stuff was probably a forced hand. We don't know how, you know, this lady's experiences reflect whatever, but she is a person who represents a business. She represents Disney and Star Wars, and she should be held to the same standard as everyone that works on these projects. So I don't think calling out this kind of attitude is wrong because it's wrong to treat people different based on their skin color, but these people just can't get it through their head. So every (laughs) time they want to go and try to divide us, I want to say, yo, look at this. She's not mature enough to feel feelings. Things have been really bad for the past few years, but I'm really glad I live in a time where GIFs are a thing. And I say say GIF because I say giant and giraffe also and bite me. I've but, saved me so much time on feeling and processing terrible things. I can respond with a GIF and emojis. They're like an emotional avoidance jackpot. You know what's crazy is <sighs> this type of behavior and uh, Rick Sanchez said, drunk people have my baby. Okay. Um, send me a text. After me. The, uh, the, it's not, it happens all the time with many people. But the um, this type of behavior is acceptable on Twitter for a Lucasfilm employee. But when you have someone like a Gina Carano, who never has tweet, tweeted anything anti-trans or anything anti-mask, but has asked a couple questions about, you know, do mask work, mm-hmm. stuff like that. And, 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 uh, Immediately, people want hired, gone, things like that. But it's okay to say things like the things that she said and and it be acceptable. And we're the bad guys for calling it out. No, but that's it's because just... she thinks the wrong things, though. So don't you know, if you think the right things, you can do and say whatever you want and treat people however you like because you think the right things. But if you think but the what's wrong the right thing, thing, then you're not allowed to have questions or curiosity. Yeah. Like a person, you just have to shut up or die because you're terrible. It's and really it's scary. bizarre. It it's really reminds you of a lot of things in the world and nothing pleasant. No, it's really bizarre. Yeah. yeah. No. Like, well, and, that, and it's also a lot of conflating as well. A lot of what? A lot of conflating and putting together oh, conf- things that you don't used mean, a big word. And I was like, yeah, they don't mean uh, to go together just to try and make it sound like you are the bad guy. And it's like, no, wait a minute. You know, the whole, just like the whole, oh, you're, you don't like women just because you didn't like Ray. It's like, how do you get to that conclusion? 
You know, it's like, oh, so you're saying just because I didn't like Ray, I hate all women. Well, that's not how that works. You know, that, that is an example. But, yeah, Tom, I never spend time on Twitter because it's accessible. But let me tell you what just happened to me today. So I'm on Twitter getting ready to send, uh, make sure I got all the stuff to contact everybody. And I see that Grand Theft Auto 6 is trending and it, the CBR articles like and there might be a female protagonist. And then I just see people commenting and somebody goes, look at all this misogyny. And the next person comments. I see comments about misogyny, but I'm not seeing misogyny. And I started looking through this stuff, and that's what people are jumping to. Mm -hmm. They don't even read an article. They don't even go into this stuff. They jump in and they go, misogyny toward... It's like, what? No one's even saying this shit. Like, people are so pre-programmed in those responses. Like, I know every YouTube got all up in arms about the whole NPC phrase, but it really is what it is. It's perfect. They don't. They just have pre-programmed responses, and that's it. And then once you get the pre-programmed response, they shut up. No, they, did, they did the same thing with the Little Mermaid. They just decided everybody was making all these racist comments against having a, a black girl play Ariel. They did the same thing. And you just see, I, I did videos on this. And you're, they're like, well, I see a bunch of people saying that everybody's saying racist things or saying that they're against it. But I mean, to be perfectly honest, I didn't even see really any tweets with people saying they were against a race swap. I think well, they were saying, oh, how are they changing the story to accommodate? What are they doing? Yeah, it's well, going to be to the be Caribbean now. It was going to say, yeah, they were they were twisting, they were twisting people who were stating the 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 facts mm -hmm. that were that this story is Nordic based originally or whatever it was, and yeah, you know how are you going to do these things? And that's what I think that like it's it's like okay, fine, everybody doesn't have a problem with things like Hamilton, otherwise it wouldn't be a hit. Like nobody has any issues with that. Like you can take something and do a fantasyful version of some quote unquote historical event. But if you're going to sit there and try and say, well, we're doing this historical event or you're setting something in historical era and you want to be historically accurate, you cannot drape modern day mentalities on top of it. Yeah. It does not work that way. Well, like you with know, the Anne like Boleyn the, thing, too. Yeah, the Anne Boleyn thing. Uh, or another example I was just going to bring up was the Chernobyl thing where people are like, oh, where is, why is it so white? It's like, because it was. Because it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. How, <laughs> Sorry, these are the same sorry, people be like these are the same people who'd be out going out there like, well, we're making a bunch of movie we're making a movie about a bunch of Yahtzees, you know, in, in the actual time period, in this, that, and the other. And they would literally flip out about the fact that you don't have a diverse enough cast. Not the fact that you're making a movie about a bunch of Yahtzees. That's my point. Like, it's like, that's the mentality they have here. Well, now, now they're complaining on Doctor Who. I did a video on this that I haven't edited yet, but it'll be out in a, in a while. So they're, they're, um, they're complaining that they brought in more diverse cast just to, uh, just to basically have them be the victims of the Daleks. And, and I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. Well, where else would you put this character? You know, if you want all this representation and diversity, you have, so they have a black actor playing a scientist scientist that clones the Daleks to bring him back for the really crappy holiday special. And, and, you know, they, they give him the compassion and the humanity to, you know, be like, Oh yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to, you know, destroy this Dalek, you know, the little, you know, tentacle monster that's inside the thing that controls the brain. So, you know, for people who aren't familiar with Dr. Who, I know that there's probably, there's probably anyway, so they got mad that he got killed by the Dalek when he was going to try and protect the rest of the world, basically, from the thing. And I'm like, well, you couldn't have had him as the big bad guy because the big bad guy was supposed to be white man, bad, Trumpy, you know, allegory again, because that's all they can do anymore. So where else can you put these characters without completely changing your entire structure? You know, you're going to have to have it somewhere nobody gets killed because you have to have diversity cast talking about their diversities and you can't have anybody get killed or else that's racist. You can't have any or sexist depending. So how can you tell stories anymore? They don't, Mecca. You know, they don't. I mean, <laughs> they don't. We're, we're all watching or not watching the same stuff. And you can see the people that are out there that really know their shit. And you know, mm -hmm. the people that are playing with other people's toys and don't have the right to. And you know what? I'll say it. some people out there in the world making this shit don't have the rights to uh, use, have the keys to the castle. There's a lot of people that work on Star Trek right now. And there are a lot of those guys that have been involved with other pieces of popular culture. And uh, when I saw their names attached to shit pri prior, I would get nervous. And now I just, I hang my head in disappointment. I believe it's Alex Kurtzman is the man I'm thinking of. I've never heard that guy attached to something I liked. So it's like, oh, okay. Well, I knew not to watch that one. He's one of those Star Trek guys, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He's uh, the main one. 
Oh, but no, so, a lot of these people they don't have it. They don't have any talent, and they just infuse all this crap where, like, with this High Republic shit. Well, the High Republic is such an interesting uh, beast right now because they want it to be this fresh start for the new Star Wars. Yet it's still in canon. Everything's you know been officially confirmed in their comic book. Because I went and I read it just for the hell of it. I stopped on the first page because I know a lot of people are upset about oh the lightsaber should have cut through stuff. And I get it. I'm completely aware of how the lightsaber should have worked. And I also agree the writer should have been aware of how the lightsaber works. And I respect the guy, how he handled the criticism. I thought that was, you know, a really professional way. And I go, thumbs up to you, man. But I stopped because they refer to lightsabers as shiny sword things. And there's just that kind of a lack of gravity for Star Wars. And I went, they still don't get it. When they do, maybe I'll give it another shot. But until they actually get it, until they actually get that world that they bought, I just can't in good conscience go, oh, yeah, let me just blindly buy into this or accept it. It's, it's, a, it's a different... I don't know. There's a. It's not like I'm trying to move the goalpost and say, hey, Disney, I'm not going to give you a shot. The Phantom Menace just wanted to fix Star Wars and get shit and entertainment right. So it'd be stupid to go, oh, nothing's ever good enough. But I gave it my. I gave it a shot. I gave it the chance that everyone tells me I should. I didn't pay for it because fuck that. But I gave it that shot and it sucked. So try harder, Star Wars. Like, don't yeah. give up. Just keep trying. Yeah. <laughs> and keep this bullshit out, man. I mean, it's... I know it sounds nitpicky at times, but it means every piece of entertainment means something to somebody. If you're a Doctor Who guy, if you're a Star Trek guy or girl, whatever, my point is you care about the the minutia as much as we do just on a different topic. So that's why when people want to you know, complain about this or the color of a lightsaber, the wrong button or stuff like that, I always listen because each part of Star Wars means something to somebody. And Disney doesn't really have an excuse to fuck these things up. I don't know how... Like, is there somebody that just is that? Never mind. We know who's at the top. Answer, answer, answer. Fuck it. I'm done. Uh, drunk <laughs> High Republic stuff. Have you been paying attention to <laughs> the lack of respect the audience has been getting? Yeah. And, you know, um, it's not only that. Like, I can't, I guess I can't, I can't help but keep bringing her name up. But there's some of the authors that were even, they were part of the Fire Gina Carano. Uh, bull crap, throwing shade at her and stuff like a few months ago. Some of these High Republic authors were doing that. Um, I found it and, you know, of course, I call them out. I get blocked by all of them in one final swoop of glory. But <laughs> it, it's just it's just disgusting that if you're all working under the same umbrella and you've got, you know, these these authors that that act like they're holier and higher than thou. You know what I mean? And then they mm -hmm. expect you to buy their book. And then some of them maybe even come out and said, don't buy it. If you don't like my ideologies, then don't buy it. Like, what? Where have we what heard kind this of, before? <laughs> what kind share of that video I got down there? I'm just saying, like, what kind of company is, like, how do you run a company like that? Like, I don't get you it. Know? Like, if, if it's my job to sell cups, I'm not going to go on there and say, well, if you don't like the way I decorate my house, don't buy my cup. You know, it, it's like, it's like, I'm better than you, so don't buy my cup. And it, it's like, no, I, I would want to sell. And right now, after that, after those announcements from you know, Disney saying that they're not even going to turn over a profit till four years. Yeah. And now you've got people <laughs> keeping people from selling, a, you know, but it's just it's ridiculous. Well, Jay, we've heard this before, remember? And if you don't no, I know. I know we've heard it before. That's what I'm saying. It's like it, it's like we keep bringing it up like they solved. just keep doing it. Yeah, so, if you don't here, like my politics, don't buy my book. Problem solved. Well, Kelly, never had the problem. Never bought one of your books in the first yeah, place. Like, How did that work out for you? I, and then, did you, oh, ahead, sorry, one one. did you guys see this one too? Hmm. With the oh, Anna I'm poster? so angry. <laughs> um, this is a speed. We can get into this. We don't have to do it yet, but because you were going to finish the thought. Sorry. Yeah, well, I also don't want to go too long on like a minute and 40 because i don't know about the copyright stuff with youtube changing no, no i know no, it's I'll weird jump ahead. there's a specific point i want to get here too um but she's asked what her inspiration is and she just says she's angry and, and she feeds off of anger and then she goes into this whole spiel about how she doesn't read books like we've already pointed out but then it gets real interesting about midpoint here 
is what she some sh things she says are really kind of interesting. Of course, now it's being an ass on me. See, well, look at while it's loading. Yeah, look at I get it. The internet's uh, stupid. Yeah, my internet just conked out on me a second ago too. I don't know what was going on. Writing. Okay, here we go. Now it's playing. Um, I'm really angry. Um, so. Um, I was in college the first time I realized that like history wasn't all just like white dudes. I was like, oh crap, there are other people there too. Thanks, Howard Zinn. But she not like, history paying attention. All the time, man. Like your all your history books are like the story that some dude decided was the truth, right? So like, okay, so like, um, my my undergrad is in history, and like I almost finished a I almost finished a master's in history, and then I went and did an MFA instead because um, thank you um, because I that's what I do with my life. I never finish things, um, but. The thing about history is it's all about people and it's all about people reacting to the events of the time. And if you know people and the people mindset of that time, you can change history. Wow. She sounds like an idiot trying to sound the smart people mindset of that time. You can change history to say whatever you want it to be. Like I didn't know until this year that the civil war was not about slavery. Like, yeah, I, I backed that up twice so you can hear it. Like, this is the mentality they have. You can change history, folks. Not if it was right or wrong, accurate. Just we can change history to make it the way we want it to be. That's really Fucking weird. scary. <sighs> they do that in other countries. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. I, I look at that and I let – this is how I handle it. People want to live their life that way, fine. Sure. Don't 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 get invested in my shit. I don't go out of my way to seek you out. I do have a problem though when you come to Star Wars and you try to. It's not even about all that shit she says. It's just about this whole division thing. Like I can't stand when. I know it sounds crazy and repetitive, but like just because someone's a certain skin color, I don't care what you are. Like stop using that as an excuse. The world has fucked up to where we can like listen to that and go. Oh, I can understand. No, 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 no. It's not cool. No matter what color you are to do this shit. And it, it gets embroiled with Star Wars and it gets me upset. And that's why I get so mad about this stuff and talk about this, these kind of ones. Not because I'm looking for an easy topic. I'm like, lady, this doesn't work. Scott Mendelson tried to put this blame on people. And that's why this community grows because everyone feels like I am targeted because, just because I exist and don't share the right opinion on a piece of pop culture. And this is why that mentality exists because it gets fueled by this. It's 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 frustrating it's tiresome and it's scary and i again i'll say the same thing i say every time on this show don't bother this lady don't add her don't say no, no. her oh her yeah yeah, yeah. Own thing that's i mean I, when i say like when i made the grace randolph video don't say anything to her don't harass don't ever bother these people because that sends the wrong message if you go out and harass them it just proves them right everybody wants to be this professional victim so just you know Talk about it the way you believe in it the most. That's really the smart way to navigate this stuff. Just talk about what you believe in. And if that's truly what you believe in, well, don't have don't come to my dinner table. I'll put it like that. Just just keep that out of <laughs> keep that. That's that's a level of crazy I don't want in my front yard. And I'm uncomfortable entertaining it because I just find it morally wrong. And I no one here can justify me anyway, or no one could find a way to convince me otherwise that it's wrong to treat people differently because they just don't look the right way. <laughs> Well, and like I'm laughing because Lag Bates right. She confused history f for fiction. Um, I laugh because I, I've heard a few people now notice something I have too, and how is I don't even think kids understand the difference between fiction and nonfiction. Have you ever no. went and looked at the book section at Walmart? <laughs> like those? No. Is there I a book at Walmart? Yeah, there is, and I swear the kids that are stocking that have no clue what they mean. <laughs> like, they totally don't understand. The difference between fiction and nonfiction anymore. <laughs> no, I don't think they do. I think they, they think that everything that they see on TV or here on the internet is true. And I think a lot of the times they're not smart enough to understand the things that they're taught. Well, the as a school teacher, um, the biggest for some strange reason, I, fifth grade. All right, yeah, so this just is your the fault, age level. Drunk. What the hell? The <laughs> um, the. Uh, they can see a meme on Instagram and take it as truth. And I don't know why that is. it's just, I, I just don't get it. Like there'll be a meme about something going on in the government or whatever, you know, that someone makes it's real clever. You know, it's a, it's, it's a photo, it's a picture. And then they write words on it and it, and it, and it, and it you know, it paints a picture and 
they're just like, oh, I heard this is how did you hear that? Well, I saw this. I'm like, well, that's completely wrong. No, you're right. You know, man. it's like, do you not? I mean, but I, actually, to be honest, I see adults doing that on Twitter, too. They mm -hmm. retweet stuff yeah. like a meme and everyone's like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. And I was like, that's, that's not even close uh, to, to like do some research, a little bit of research no, um, to being correct. But I, I mean, I spent some time in China as well. And it, it is it. Jeff is right. Like, you don't understand. Do you remember that moment uh, in China that was all over the news here where that college student stood in front of tanks mm -hmm. um, in Tiananmen Square? Mm -hmm. When I when I go over to speak in China, like in their English department, because as a teacher, they would always invite me over. Uh, I went year after year. They, none of them have no idea what that is. None. That is erased from their history. Hmm. And it's when not I'm, until it's not until they come over to the states and they're like, "What did this happen in my country? When did this even happen in my country?" You know, and it's like uh, it, it, it's it's kind of crazy to see how they can people can be manipulated through uh, the education system. So it's it that that's how it is. Yeah, nineteen eighty eight. Yep. So no, and you bring up some very valid and great points there about this whole entire thing. And that's what I was getting is like this, the idea that, you know, and I, I always used to bitch at my kid about this is like, you know, you're so smart. You're supposed to be so smart. You've got the entire world in your hands. Mm -hmm. You have every answer you could ever think of in your hands. Yet sometimes you kids, I tell you, you have no common sense whatsoever. And I think it's right. You, it just goes into this idea that oh, it's on the end. It's like like when we were growing up. Remember the whole thing was you you know to quote Mr. Miyagi, you watch a too much of television. You know, like that was the thing is we watched too much TV if we you know thought something that crazy, and we were dismissed you know outright. But nowadays it's harder because this stuff is it's like a virus. Well, here's the thing: um, what people might not understand uh, in the education system, at least. They so so every year you get you get a thick folder. So I teach history and English. You get a thick folder of certain things that you have to teach, whether you agree with it or not. I mean, you have to teach this, and you then you have to turn into the system to the education. So I'm not trying to you know get myself fired or anything, but you turn into um, you turn it into the system, and you have to show that yeah I taught this, and every year it changes. And, and and some things are taken away and some things aren't. So it's up to the teacher in itself. If they're a good teacher like me, I consider myself to be the best to to go back and teach certain things about history that you don't have to. I don't know if that makes sense. So basically, they're saying, like, here's a checklist. These are the things in history that you need to teach your class. Now, if you find extra time to teach other stuff, then that's great. If not, or if you're just lazy and don't want to do it, then you just teach you know, A through A through D, if you want to do anything else. So there's a whole educational system that is giving young people what they can and what they can't like. Like right now, um, I mean, we people used to teach cursive writing. That's not required anymore. Really? Teach, yeah, yeah. It, everything's because everything is text and type. So well, there's no there's no need to learn cursive. So like we don't they, they school systems. I'm not saying every school system. So don't teachers be coming at me. But at least in the in where area that I'm at and everything else, cursive writing is not. Because we want our papers typed and turned in. So teaching basic computer skills and stuff, um, you know, is is where it's at, especially at a young age. So they don't they don't learn cursive. Oh yeah, it's, they don't anymore. So I'm. I always joke and say, oh, I feel so old, but, you know, I'm 32. I was like, we learned cursive in the early 2000s. I just didn't think it's been that long. I guess I don't realize how how life actually passes you by quicker than you think. It's like, well, shit, it's been 20 years since I was in grade school. So, yeah, cursive is one of those I have a hard time arguing with because I understand where Jay's talking or coming from. Like, it's like I used to think it was stupid, too, but then, you know, it, it, it makes sense. I just wish that they would teach a class. Um of co like a common sense class, like how to open a yes. bank account, well, they don't how to do change that a, anymore, how to change they a tire, to. what the fuck uh, happened? How to, Jay, how to like how to like file simple taxes? Jay, um, exactly. I had those classes in school. What the hell happened to them? We had a class where you learned how to write and balance it, or you know, work and balance a checkbook, um, and budget certain bills, and like you said, certain things about taxes, just little ancillary bullshit that in your daily life you do actually need. Listen, Whatever happened man. to those? Listen, it art programs and sports programs are becoming 
like choir and chorus and art, those are those are slowly becoming extracurricular activities. So anything like that is uh, it, it, you have to. For example, I'm not tooting my own horn, but I once a, you know once a week we'd stay after school with kids, teach them how to do a job interview, teach them how to yeah. like you know, and all that was all that was we weren't getting paid for it. It was just like we you wow. know you have to love what you do. Um, we ex- actually had classes where they taught us how to fill out not only fill out resumes but actually do or yeah yeah, you know, yeah write resumes and all that yeah. stuff yeah. So so we uh, so, several several of us teachers and we also um get, and you know this time we we did free music lessons for kids that couldn't afford it. So like twice a week we'd stay after school and um and do that. I mean COVID's kind of messed a lot of things up for now but hopefully right. get back to cuz right now I just teach online so I don't No, but that's I'm disturbing to hear that cuz those are things to me that I felt like were some of the things I actually did get out of school. Like the things that I would retain that to me, like, oh, now these are the things that I use in my daily life, you know, just the, the common things. You know, I, I don't use algebra, but I sure do use a lot of those classes where I learned, you know, just common basic things. And I feel like that's one thing that's lacking in the education system. <laughs> Everyone's saying I'm using my teacher voice now to teach. <laughs> I would love to see Jay in his teacher mode. That'd be awesome. Uh, I, I just think it's funny because I, I get criticized a lot because my grammar's terrible on Twitter and like mm-hmm. I have a hard time reading super chats because I don't wear my reading glasses when I stream. And so everyone's like, oh, he's a teacher. Like how and then and then when I like switch over to like teacher mode, everyone's kind of like, oh dang, it doesn't sound mm-hmm. so dumb. <laughs> well, your dress mark sees super chat here. He says, Tom, you don't get it. If the declaration of the de- declaration of independence and constitution are in cursive, if you can't read it, it's easy to manipulate people on what it says. That is true, but there's also how many transcribed versions of it out there. Like that's the thing that I think J- Jay was kind of getting to with the whole thing with China and the Tiananmen Square deal is, you know, over here, America is so big and broad and we have such a vast history that we've kept, you know, very well documented that it's very hard for somebody to pull the woolly over our eyes. And I think that's where you're getting so much resistance lately from these people like the high Republic uh, lady. uh, uh, What's her name? Uh, Oh, Justine Ireland, Justine Ireland, where, uh, uh, I couldn't remember her first name um, to where, uh, you know, we're getting this idea of like, you know, this just isn't right. It just isn't, you know, it, listen, it, listen, trying to I, change history. How are you going to do that? Listen, you can't listen, do that. There, like, yeah. This is the answer to it all. And we don't talk politics here and I, I will not uh, disrespect the right, hostess I'm not channel. To that point, yeah. I'm just saying that there's a book called rules for radicals that came out in the seventies and it's all in the rules for radicals handbook, take over the educational system, then go for the healthcare system. And that's that. I mean, I, and that's as far as I'm going to go with it, but no, it's, no, it's, no. it's all be on the handbook that I, you and know, what I was I just getting out. to is the ignorance of it all. Is this that? Yeah. That, yeah. You know, we're, we're in a, I can't believe that people think in, in this country that we could get to that point, not to get political, but like this high Republic business, back on it's this. all intertwined yeah man. why it, interject it's... your politics in it why even go out like you were saying before why even go out there and say something like that to where you know you're going to divide your fan base and the high republic let's be real i think andre got it right in his editorial when he had me throw in the the bit from sonic when jim carrey's like nobody cares nobody cares because like i think the numbers have truly showed that nobody does care about this high republic thing and what you're seeing is just like a lot of children who are acting out because they're upset that nobody liked their stories well maybe if you actually read a whole book lady your stories would be worth reading but you know what's funny is most of the reviews of the book that i've heard so far and i don't know if she even wrote any of those stuff that's come out so far because there's a few like one or two books that have already come out and i guess andre got one sent to him um, I don't know if that she's written that one or not, but from what I've heard from everybody who's read it, they haven't even read the whole thing. They, they read the first like 50 pages and they give up. That's what I hear. So I'm hearing a commonality here. Evidently these people can't write anything that's worth reading past 50 pages, which is how they read books. I think that speaks volumes to, to the type of authors we have working on this crap. Well, Where's the classic authors we used to have? I mean, come on. Well, Tom, remember Chuck Wendig from a couple of years back? I mean, Ethan and Jeremy used to slay that guy verbally every week on the high council of poop covered boot or a shit covered boot or whatever yeah. you need to tell people mm-hmm. to eat. It, it's the same shit, different day. And I really I don't think it's unreasonable to say that's the problem that comes from the top because if a president of a company is aware of this and allows it, they're just as culpable. I mean, you can 
you can pin a million different problems on Star Wars on Kathleen Kennedy, and this is another one of those. And I don't think it's unfair for anyone out there that says, oh, she gets treated unjustly because she's a woman. No, she's the president of a company. Uh, does anyone go, oh, poor Kevin Sujihara, whatever his name is over at Warner Brothers, or oh, poor, uh, you know, this person or that person? No, they're just treated as business people. But because she's associated with Star Wars and uh, there's certain people that like certain things, uh, she gets this weird pass in society right yeah. now. Well, the only exception I can think of is a lot of us have had to stick up for Joss Whedon, but not because of what he's made, but just because of the accusations that Ray Fisher has made. Oh, the cyborg uh, guy? A, yeah, Cryborg, which is a completely different, like, yeah, it's a completely different situation than what we're talking about, so. Well, no, but it's one of those, it's it's similar, but different, but it's also a good parallel, you know? It's one of those situations where I didn't even want to follow that one because I feel like that's one of those actors that people like Kelly Marie Tran didn't bitch about it, like, at an advantageous time. All that stuff came out months and years later so it's like oh you went through some shit you didn't try to monetize it so then i'm going to respect you i respect these people but like i'm going to listen to hers because it doesn't look advantageous his has always been like the snyder cuts a hot property i wonder if he's trying to use this for other ways if that makes sense because it, right. it just is i don't like joss whedon but a lot of that stuff just didn't seem to it didn't it didn't sound true or it didn't and, and a lot of the examples he was giving didn't sound anything like racism to me. And I, again, I can't really, I don't know why I shouldn't have a point of view on this because I'm white, but I guess that's mm. the way these people see this. But I reiterate, I saw the racist bullshit when it came to John Boyega. I did not see what Ray Fisher was talking about. So all I can saw I, the Ray Fisher. Can I, work. um, yeah, go ahead. I, this is kind of swinging back just a little bit. I, I just want to, make a point I, I i did see everyone in, in the chat and things like that i will say this even though i feel that the modern day author of today even though <clears throat> i have a book coming out pretty soon um mm -hmm. the modern day author of today seems to have lost their creativity and would rather push a narrative or their personal ideas through use of ips and things like that there is a younger generation that I do see, and I know people give uh, TikTok a lot of crap and different things like that, but I have literally seen young people sit, they don't watch TV. They just, they don't watch, like the television is different now. So if they want to watch something, it's all streamed. So they could just watch it whenever they feel like it. So there's no excitement to go and, you know, eight o'clock, I got to go watch a show. You know, I got to stop what I'm doing. And but there is a creative aspect that I've seen in young people that a lot of people don't understand as far as like ha them having access to YouTube, TikTok, things like that, where I've seen them sit around and literally write scripts, direct things and try to put it on their social media as far as being, you know, funny or whatever it is. And, and you have to look at that as a um, positive for upcoming creativity and things like that, hopefully in this next generation that will come up because some of the biggest th works that I've gotten where, where students have written things and stuff like that is all come out of creativity as far as writing new stories where they could be funny, writing new things. So they're, they're it's, it's so weird. They're at this place where they're learning how to use this technology in their hand. But on the other side, they're also checking out books on how to be a director, how to do film, how to do things like that. And re and this is at a young age. This is at a young age. And I, I get it. Some people just turn on the TikTok and just make stupid sounds. Right. But if you really look, there's also others that really spend a, a creative amount of time of writing and directing. And however it comes out is one thing. But to see 10, 11, 12 year old taking the time to to learn and write and understand and do this and try to make the <laughs> the best TikTok that they could make. It, it really does say something about creativity. So those are some of the things that you've always got to grab onto some of the positive and positive things that are happening, even though we can look at things and say, Oh, I wish that that wasn't invented. I wish that wasn't invented. Um, that, that could be so toxic. So it, I just, just know that, just know that um, well, we, we've had kids stay after school for hours using the equipment at the school, writing, directing, doing small film projects, doing small things. And, and it was, tr it was, it sucked. It was stupid. The lighting was bad. The mic was bad and everything. And we uploaded it to the school YouTube, but they thought it was amazing that they wrote, directed, 
uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, and they spent time and, oh. and, and it, it, the creativity of that is beautiful. Unlike what we're seeing here, where it seems like we're living in this moment where everyone now that has the power is just stealing stuff. And it's very boring and very plain because it's pushing narrative instead of pushing creativity. The, there's a new generation coming up. That's not reading these books. That's not watching these shows. That's not part of it because they're creating their own television show and their own creativity. Does that make sense? Oh, dude, I think that's a really optimistic, great outlook to have. I don't even want to fight you on it. I just have a question. Do you think that optimism gets lost? Put it like this. I think the creativity and the optimism and all those things are all in place. Do you think there's going to be a time? Do you think those kids are growing up in an era where we'll just use the identity politics cover all blanket phrase where the identity politics will be out of college where they can still maintain that like idealism and artistic creativity? Or do you think we have this system that everyone that goes in comes out a little different and might take that away from our next creative, you know, juice. Like it's the next generation could do it, but there's still stuff in place to kind of suck it out of them and make them feel, eh, I got to worry about these dumb things, you know? Um, I think that could happen. I, I think it all depends on the individual, but I have seen, last year uh, before all this stuff the the last graduating class that I was I was a part of um they all went into a specialized you know doing what they loved what I saw all through high school now if that gets lost in college it, it's possible but I do think if if they keep walking with it, it see here's the issue so let's say you're creative Jeff sees it and they're like hey I want to pay you a million dollars to write a book but I want you to do it this way. There's an aspect of I could use the money so I'll fall in line because before I didn't have any money, but now I have money. You get what I'm saying? So like when they hire stuff like that and then maybe that will prolong them to do something else. But I I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see this, this Generation Z, this Generation Z that's coming up now is is unlike the one that I saw before. The I think millennials, and now we have Generation Z. I I think there's something different about them, man. I, I can't put my they they don't like a lot of the stupidity that we talk about. And and at a young age, I've seen them point out like you know when we talk and we have these discussions, point out like like uh, the stupidity of like cancel culture and things like that. Um, so wh whether that, I whether those ideas get lost when they go to college or anything like that, but they're also learning that they don't need to go to college to make a lot of money. And like what I was saying, a lot of the graduating class of last year, a lot of them aren't going to college to go to college. They're going to trade school. They're going to, uh, art school. I had many of them go to like, uh, to become beauticians and things like, that. I mean, just to start their own business, such as like cutting people's hair. Uh, things like that, because they're like, I don't want to go, I don't want to go to college and be jumped in like student loan debt and oh, it's and the get work. a degree that doesn't that doesn't count for anything. Like, listen, man, I, I paid tons of money to go to college to be a school teacher that pays nothing. You know what I'm saying? And it's and it it doesn't make sense. But the, to see creativity and and the beautiful thing is that that they, they see that they could see um, like different trades and and you know, and not having to get these degrees. I'm just saying, um, I'm just saying Jay works in the ghetto. Yeah. My school is a second chance school. It's very poor. It's heavy poverty. Yeah. Area. It's a second chance school for kids that have either been arrested or kicked out of school and, and they go there. So I'm a big guy and it is what it is, but I don't know. It's just something we'll have to sit back and watch and see and see what it is. But we had many speakers come to our school and, and talk to our students that don't have a college degree that, that made money by understanding small businesses and creating your own business. And, and, and such as creating YouTube is basically creating your own business, creating your own brand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, listen, my listen, I, I didn't expect to be where I am today, but it's like I have a YouTube channel. I sell T-shirts. I'm about to sell a book. I'm about to. And it's all coming out of this. Uh, it's all coming out of this YouTube channel and this community. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, and and believe me, my students see this. Like they they see, like they they're not dumb. They think it's they the fact that I had Gina Carano, that I'm like the 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 hero, you know, I'm the freaking class hero. And so it's it's um it's just one of those things that they 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 see and they they realize that they can do um they can do what they could do things without having to go the traditional route that, that they've been taught.
And so maybe if they stay out of some of these ridiculous professors that try to change the thinking and go about it on their own way and stand on their own two feet and go out and make it their own way. And I'm sorry, I've been on a little rant, forgive me, but don't apologize. Maybe there, maybe there can be uh, something more optimistic. Listen, I saw fifth and sixth graders, 10 and 11 year old raise $5,000, right? For uh, a girl's home in Haiti, kids that they didn't know about, they spent uh, three months building wallets, pencil sets and stuff with duct tape, different colored duct tape. They put, they built these things together, right? And they went out and sold them and put the money back in, back into, um, into this thing. They could have, I didn't know, they could have kept the money. They, they did it on their own because they heard about a problem and I, and, and I saw them come together and solve it. And, and for me to see that is like, that's a beautiful thing. And it, and if, if, if I could be a small part or others can be a small part in, in changing, uh, this is how young people are going to, you know, react to the world and to the world's problems. It's a beautiful thing. Right near my school is a shelter. is a It's a homeless shelter, and there's kids there. And it's a, it's not your typical shelter. It's usually like if a parent lost their job, and they need to stay somewhere while they get back on their feet because they can't pay the rent or something like that. So it's not like uh, homeless people that have been homeless for years. They're usually in transition. So they they've gone. My students have gone there to volunteer to play again, not during this pandemic thing, but they've gone there in the past and have helped with homework and have helped, you know, playing sports and, and some other teachers of mine, we've gone there and taught, you know, I teach piano, free piano lessons, it's homeless kids to give them a, give the parents a break. So they have something to do. And listen, I'm not an isolated case. I, what, what I'm saying is, is that this stuff is happening all over. It's just never, ever, ever talked about it. It's never put on the news. It's never put in the spotlight. It's never shown. And so when I see that stuff and I see all the you know negative stuff that's happening you know, on social media and Twitter and in our government and all that stuff, I'm just sitting here like, I'm like, people don't see that there's, there's huge shining light on these young people that don't believe this bull crap that people like the high republic authors are speaking like they just don't believe it they don't understand it they don't see race they don't see they see a kid that was homeless black white spanish asian what it doesn't matter to them they were there they wanted to help and they wanted to do this it's it's uh it's absolutely incredible and that's why i was brought up black panther and i was just saying when i took all these kids from the, we went and saw black panther uh, it just changed. It had an. It had a positive effect on a lot of young people that I know. Uh, to me, it was just a regular Marvel film, but I didn't understand it what it meant to so many others. And I was just kind of like, okay, there's something special here that I didn't see, but they saw. And to me, that's a good thing. And no matter what we say or whatever, I mean, that's a good thing. And again, it's just like we had a Halloween party. We had white kids had black kids, had aging. We had them all dressed like Black Panther. And you want to know something? Not one person, not one teacher, not one adult went to them and said, you can't be Black Panther because you're white. Not one. They celebrated the fact that, dude, you came as Black Panther. That's awesome. It's just, and so when we see all this bull crap in our entertainment right now, it's like, um, I, it's like, I don't see that in the real world, at least where I'm yeah. living. And uh, and I always agree we should call it out as much as possible because there are people watching. And I'm sorry, I'm almost done. Forgive me. Don't apologize. You dude. I'm, never I'm know. Winning. Like, exactly. You never know who's the reason why Gina Carano talked to me is because she and many others in the industry watched my small YouTube channel. So if you have a channel, you have this, you have that, you have whatever. You never know who's watching. She was a fan of my channel. She's a, I know who, you know, she's a subscriber to the channel. She's got an alt name and everything, but I know um, she watched and she watched and she watched. She's like, okay, I, I get that. She's watched others and not only her, but there's others too. And it's like, you never know who's watching and you never know the impact you're making. You never know. And that's why I don't curse on my channel because I know there's young people watching and it's just like, you know, I'm just trying to do do my thing, but it's it's uh, um, it, you just never know, and the impact is being made, and so you just gotta like go out every day, no matter what you do, and realize that there are people watching you that you might not think, 
Um, you might, you're making an impact that you might not realize. And you're also teaching, um, you could be teaching someone to change the future. And that is a beautiful, beautiful thing for us, especially as, cre- I never looked at myself as a content creator, but I, I mean, it is what it is. And um, it, there, there is hope for the future, I'm telling you. I mean, I know sometimes it's always darkest before the dawn, like that whole thing, but it's just, I, I see it. I no. see it. I see it. Well, I see it. No, that's a great point. Yeah, yeah I'm going to agree with you on the TikTok stuff. There's a lot of creative stuff that I do see in some of the me- – like, I watch MXR plays, and they have some TikTok reactions, and some of them are just nightmarish kids just screaming, and then some things are really creative, surprisingly. And then you've got, like, amazing new comedians coming out, like Ryan Long, and you've got a lot of people who – are pushing the envelope and saying, you know what, screw this. We're going to laugh at this. And you don't get to intimidate us for laughing at what we're laughing at. We know what's in our heart. We know it's in our friend's heart. We can interpret things based on how it's directed and what's said. And life's too short to go around being offended by everything. I agree. And, you know, drunk, it's so... It's so nice to hear the, the way you're talking about it. And, you know, you try to say, oh, I don't want to, you know, ramble on and stuff. But that's really important to keep that optimism. And it's really important, too. You lead by example. You've done this by being yourself. This isn't a thing where you're putting on an act to be this nice guy on the Internet. And Tom doesn't say you're the best of us just to, you know, kiss your ass because <laughs> we agreed to be on the show. No. You are yourself on screen, off screen, folks, I've been interviewed by drunk before the camera turns on, after the camera turns off, he's the same cool, genuine dude. So I would just like to impart, add to his if message. If anything, he's more humble when the camera's off. That's true. Like, oh, you guys. <laughs> no, and I've known you since you were a little channel. So like I said, you know, when I say you're the best of us, I freaking mean it. I'm not kidding when I, I say appreciate that. that, man. No, and I mean, I think a lot of people... Were it's a lot of pressure because when they see me mess up, they'll be like, I thought he was the best of us. It's like, well, I'm no, only human at the end of the day. <laughs> the, the thing is, is we don't hold you to any higher standard than the rest of us. And and I, I see a lot of people saying what you said was inspiring, and it was. And I want, like Mecca was uh, pointing out something you said. One thing you said to me that really resonated was when you said all these kids were coming dressed up like Black Panther and it didn't seem to matter. Like, that's what I loved is like when we were in school, we used to play whatever was on the playground, like whatever movie of the week had come out. Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Ghostbusters, Wars. whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, exactly. And I don't remember anybody ever going, oh, you can't be Darth Vader because he's voiced by James Earl Jones and you're not black. Or, you know, telling somebody they couldn't be Winston because they're not black. That's that never. Ghostbuster. Huh? Kendall's favorite, Kendall's Ghostbuster. favorite Ghostbuster. There you go. Like, <laughs> see now, if Kendo and I were on the same playground as a kid, he would be the kid to go. I'm, a, I'm Winston, and we wouldn't blink an eye. Like that's what I don't understand. Same thing with Lando. Yeah, Lando is like, like wh- whoever wanted to be. No, normally it was two or three kids fighting over who got. To... <laughs> well, here's the that's thing. The so I, I, you're was. absolutely right. Is um, I Tuesdays I stream with five. Uh, <laughs> black guys uh over there called the dark council and we talked about most of them saying luke skywalker was the hero hey luke skywalker was played by a white guy these are black guys and they said listen i never see myself as the white man luke skywalker i see myself as the black man luke skywalker because that's how inspiring he is i want to be like that you know, and it's like it has nothing to do with a race thing. It has something to do with the character of the person, the hero's journey, the whole thing. And it's just like, I, yeah, I went as Luke Skywalker for Halloween. And I went as Luke Skywalker for this. And it's just, um, you know, and and nobody cared. You know what I'm saying? It's, and I'm like, I know it's it. Nobody cares. Well, Except for some of these idiots. That, yeah. And they're like, they're trying to for Listen, the past few Halloweens. Um, the past few Halloweens, it, it, you know, where we've had people come out on Twitter and say, please don't dress as this person because that's not right. Please don't dress like that. And then you have, you know, and then I, like, I'll go to my school and everyone's dressed like everybody that they said on Twitter, you shouldn't dress like because they don't care. You know what I mean? They're like, I, I, what do I care about? Someone on Twitter tells me what I can do. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, they, they don't care. They're like, I like this character. So I'm going to be that character, you know, yeah. and it's, it's more of a respect thing than it is making fun of a race. It, it, it's just, it's so ridiculous out there. Um, you know, so. I mean, drunk, I dressed up as Marty McFly. 
or you know Axel Foley, two characters I really like. I really don't match any of that skin color, and I and it's nice to know that those kids. Really, I know this sounds kind of harsh. It's nice to know that the kids have the optimism, and we know where this dumb shit stems from. Certain time in your life, social media, this, that, and the other. So people just know like how to avoid or where to go to get away from this type of shit. Well, I mean, it's like the age old thing that racism is taught. Well, this this stupidity mm-hmm. is taught as well. Yeah. It's absolutely. just basically it's like the alternate racism, basically. By action and inaction. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that people on the internet just allow to happen. And it's like, you know, 10 years ago, we didn't talk like this to each other. We didn't treat each other like this. You could punch in the face if you act like this. But all of a sudden, the internet is emboldened you to be a dick. And the world's a weirder place for it. Right. And then the other side of that is not everybody's as much of a victim as they want to believe, too. So, yep. Yeah. And not everybody's as big as an asshole. Of an asshole that they want you to believe, too. So, I mean... no. The internet does no. not with life and subtlety. That's why I love Cobra Kai is it shows you that there is a lot of gray. There is a lot of, you know, um, to quote somebody in this newest season without saying who, there's your side, there's his side, and there's the truth. And well, sometimes Tom, there's even more than that. We're going to start playing a game on the show. Every time you bring it back to Cobra Kai, I'm going to bring a button for next week's show. <laughs> Cobra Kai Every never time- dies. <laughs> Every time you have to, you can naturally go back to Cobra Kai like that. I'll press the button. I don't know what it's going to be yet. It's going to be cool though. I'll tell you what. There's enough characters that say Cobra Kai never dies between the series and the movies that you could probably get a nice selection. Ooh, <laughs> my, I will say this about Star Wars: the um, uh, the young people that I know, and I can't speak for everybody. Can't speak for everybody. The um, oh, thank you. Someone said I was a good guest. Oh, that's nice. Uh, the my the students that I know hated the sequel trilogy. They just thought it was boring and dumb and that <laughs> all races, all genders. <laughs> so they, they just didn't even care uh, to watch it. Now, a lot of them really liked the Mandalorian. Now these are normies. They're not into lore. They're not into anything like that. But a lot of them really, really, really liked the Mandalorian and, and the fact that they know like their teacher knows one of the stars, man, it was kind of probably was kind of cool. But <laughs> so they figured that it, all out. It right? was, it was, yeah. Oh man, they all watch their parent, parent, that single moms watch my YouTube channel. Ah, and so it's surprised. like it's, it's uh, yeah, it's one of those things. But um, it's so I again, that's why it's Star Wars saved. No, I wouldn't say that, but it, it's it's uh. I, I've yeah, seen why, it. Right? I just, I've just seen them enjoy it for what it is, and it, it, it opened up the. Um, it just opened up Star Wars for a generation, for whatever it's worth. Whether they they keep watching it or not, they. I know a lot of them really enjoyed it. So. You do realize you're like the rock star of the Phantom Menace, right? You get more poontang offers probably. Nah. Than anybody. <laughs> yeah, please don't send your nude pictures, Tom. I. I... <laughs> The first one you oh, sent was Lord, funny, but the second me. one, the second one was a little uh, greasy. That's all. <laughs> Tom, tasteful nudes, tasteful nudes. Is I need help that. taking them. I can't. Help it's hard to push the I button with butter all over your fingers. <laughs> can't you just say, "Okay, Google, take a picture," and it'll take a picture? Wait, shit! It's it's. Wait, never mind. <laughs> oh um, my god! I never <laughs> thought of that. Oh god! It's... I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> now, drunk. One thing I wanted to bring up too is with all eyes on you talk about you know who knows what we're doing and stuff and who sees what instead of using these channels as justification for bad decisions and taking a victory lap on every time you can dunk on a person in the phantom menace why don't you let why disney if you're listening now why don't you listen to a guy like drunk when he gives you these little pieces of anecdotal information about your demographics because you can't get this shit you can go to market research and you can ask people questions but drunk watches people in their everyday lives, just like me with the retail stuff. Why do I know that shit? Because I am that person. I know when the toys come out, I follow this shit. And that's why I was able to document the decline the way I am. So drunk, I wish people would listen to these stories because yeah, maybe this person doesn't like Black Panther. This person doesn't like that. But every story you tell is valuable information to these places. Instead of treating us like adversaries, go, huh, maybe I should just listen to them. And uh, I don't know, get advice on how, what the audience wants is that crazy well, to use it as it, free marketing <laughs> i mean yeah the, the thing is is the fandom menace is many things to different people 
And uh, for me, it's always just been respect. You know, like I know there's people that hate the man and I, Hey man, I got no problems. And, and even when people tweet out stuff and they're just like, I can't believe some people like it. It, it is what it is. You know, I, the thing is I could just keep scrolling. I don't have to engage. And I, I am who I am. I like what I like. And I don't want anyone to tell me different. Like, I like movies that people hate. Like, I'm a huge Avatar person, dude. I love Avatar. I read the books. I love the ride. And listen, the the thing that people miss is they, um, I'm Galaxy's Edge. As much crap as I talk about how bad that is, I'm at Galaxy's Edge at least once a week for the theme park channel. And I'm there with family. I'm there with friends. I'm there with people that come in with their families. And I kind of tour guide them through Disney and that because it, it, I mean, I could record while I'm there anyway, and I'm always welcome to come. But the, um, the crazy is people need to watch galaxy's edge, uh, as far as where star Wars is going, because this young generation is looking for Mandalorian and baby Yoda and Ahsoka. And they're looking for that when they go to star Wars land and they're not getting it. And so now it's like it, it 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 was it's funny to me that I'm seeing articles pop up now where they're saying Galaxy's Edge might change to the Mandalorian. When I've been screaming that that they've already told me that from inside the park for two months now that there's been, you know, the people that I know inside, they're saying, yeah, we might change. We might have to change it because no one's going there to to get a photo with Kylo Ren. No one's going there to see, you know, this. They. They want to, they want to, um, all right, Avatar, the blue people, the 3D movie. Everyone's like, which Avatar? Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's, um, yeah, you gotta be clear. They, yeah, it, it's the, the people that, that didn't really like that movie, but it, it's when I go there and I, people know me there in the parks because I'm all there and they, and, and just talking with them and stuff. And they're just like, uh, yeah, they, um, these people, are, um, looking for the Mandalorian stuff. They're not looking for the sequel right. stuff. And if you if you don't understand, uh, real quick, uh, Galaxy's Edge, they've made it into a timepiece, which takes place after The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. So when you walk through it, I want you to feel like you're in the Star Wars story from the la- in between The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, which is a terrible idea. Number one, there's no John Williams music being played. It's just, it's just bad all around. Um, but now it's like, hey, we got something popular here. They've already started adding Baby Yoda, which screws up their Galaxy's Edge timeline, <laughs> and and so yeah. because that's what's making them money, you know. Now, and it's and it's like go? money talks, man. And I'm telling you, if people are there, like, hey, where's Mando stuff? It's not here. All right, we're out. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, well, better get Mandalorian stuff in there right now. So, well, and not to get down one one particular road, but just to hit on two points that you and Jeff both brought up that I think are interesting is that like, you know, we have this situation where they are listening and we know that now. And that's the good thing is that it shows that outside of all these years where we've got nothing but, you know, called istophobes by everybody behind these franchises, we actually have finally gotten proof that not only are they listening like with Gina and and you drunk, but like with the situation with Star Wars theory where, you know, when Pablo did what he did, it was the first time we've ever seen anybody technically get a smackdown, at least proof of it, that they were told to apologize for doing such a thing. Because before this, they've always seemed to be more hands off on this kind of thing. And they wouldn't, you know, we've never heard of Ryan Johnson being forced to apologize. Um, we heard about the whole rumor and, and stuff about Gina being forced to apologize, which a lot of people pushed. But you, of course, you know, um, you talk to her about it. And as far as we know, it's a bunch of horse shit. And I don't believe it either because you have a situation here where finally, you know, all these years they've stumbled through this star Wars thing and they finally have something that's caught on with not just fans, but general audiences like you were saying, Jay. And I really don't think they want to fuck up that goodwill right now. I think that's the main thing is they're really, I think they're paying attention to it. And I mean, you know, a lot of us channels have known that they know they're aware of us. We know they watch us, but it usually was not for the reasons we'd want them to. Like, no. I, I, I'm glad to hear for once, because I mean, there's been interviews we've been denied because we were told that we were a misogynistic channel. It's like, what the fuck channel are you watching? You know, it's like, okay. And then, you know, we've even had people go over Disney's head for certain interviews um, just because they felt like, you know, they, they couldn't afford to wait. I'll just say it. Cause Andre said it, Jim Zub. Um, when we interviewed him for Conan, Marvel had to go through Disney and they said no. And they said no a couple times. And then they're finally like, you know what? Fuck them. We need this book to sell. 
go do the interview. And we're pretty sure it was either somebody at Marvel that was close to Jim that said that or Jim's manager or something to that effect that said, you know what, fuck it, just do it. Because the, he did not get permission to do that interview with us. It's Well, I, I told Gina, just, just to be clear, I said, listen, if anything, all she's got to do is text me. I will take them down. My Her... Being respectful to her is more important than views on my channel. I have a job. YouTube's not my full-time job. And for those that have made it full-time, I congratulate you. It is freaking hard. Uh, just so you know, you it's freaking sleep. hard to do YouTube full-time. <laughs> I, I barely can get, you know, it, it's freaking hard. And and the work that you guys do to do it full-time, I salute you. Again, I am no one special. For some reason, the universe just tipped their hat towards me. That's the <laughs> only reason I'm at 30K subscribers. Because doing it the normal way, you know, I was just gaining one or two a day. Not, you know, it is what it is. And it's, it's, uh, so don't ask me how to grow a channel because I, mine's just a very un unique story, but it is, it's hard. Uh, so yeah. So Gina, mm -hmm. at any time she could say, you know what, maybe it's a bad idea. Can you take it? I, I told her no hey, problem. Hey, don't sell yourself don't. short because the thing is, you're already an anomaly, right? Getting a couple of subs here and there every day is already an anomaly. The channel you built from nothing before Gina Carano started paying attention to you is already an anomaly. Not anyone can do that because like you said, it takes no. a lot of hard work to grow a channel, even to the size that yours was before all this takes an incredible amount of hard work and dedication and perseverance, especially while you're working a full-time job the entire time. So don't sell yourself short on any of this because most people would not have even gotten to where you are. You had to well, be hard to the, even get noticed. Jesse, the, the truth is, and I told you this before, I, I watch Mecca and Tom and J I watched you guys and I, I, I'm in awe of it. Like I'm in awe on how you guys create your SJW Wednesdays was my, was one of my favorite Wednesday show because <laughs> you were so good at it. You tricked your audience and the comment section where people, mm -hmm. uh, it was, it just made me laugh. All of it made me laugh. <laughs> watch Mecca put out videos, then go live and doing all that. It, it's like, I don't know how she does it. And I yeah, always told just... Tom, I always told Tom, I was like, you're the, one of the smartest people I know when it comes to entertaining. Have I not told you that, Tom? Like every time. And it, it's, it's sometimes I think you're making fun of me. No, I'm not making fun of you being honest. I'm being honest because but... I, I watch what Midnight's Edge and, I, and I've just been a uh, student of, listen, I get on there and I just I just laugh at people. You know, that's it, like you have, no, you have just as much to say. You were just you just hadn't said it yet. That's all. Mm -hmm. Don't sell yourself short. You well, really it's, it's, no, no Jesse's right. You have built a lot on your own, dude. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I wasn't. I, thank you. Thank you. I'll just leave it. Drunk. Hello, Cecil. Uh, I <laughs> do you have a direct line to Gina Carano. I want you to pitch this to her. If she didn't die in the first one, she should be in Deadpool three. <laughs> I know, right? really weird, and there should be a really weird meta Mandalorian joke in there. I, think I that didn't make miss her in the second one. <laughs> you never know; <laughs> no one's ever really gone. That's <laughs> true. That is very true. Well, I'm just looking. I'm throwing that out there because I know the news came out that it's coming out as part of the MCU. They're working on it. Ryan Reynolds and people call her Cara Dune from the Deadpool voice. That'd be fucking awesome. <laughs> That'd be a really great show. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, I, I was so excited to see that because I've been telling people, "Don't worry, don't worry." I mean, I've heard because I had talked to somebody early on about blade who was uh, somebody who was going to be working on it but then they didn't because the wesley camp went away but i knew enough to know that they were not going to be tame with blade like the whole mm. thing we kept hearing is yeah it's going to be pg-13 but it's going to be a hard pg-13 and that's why i kept reminding people is like pg-13 now is a different kind of pg-13 than when the original blade came out because if you take out the few f words that are in that movie and i think there might be a little nudity in it if you take that little bit out that you can still get as hardcore with the blood and all that kind of stuff, and it'd still be PG thirteen. You know? Doesn't that say something though about the world we inhabit? Right oh now? yes, it does. Well, the whole rating system is screwed, <laughs> and there's a great documentary that's already a, a, like a decade old that talks about how messed up the the rating system is. But no, uh -huh. I knew for a fact that there was no way they were going to mess with Deadpool. You don't mess with something that's that famous and that popular. And I knew they would give him at least one more R-rated Deadpool. But what's going to be funny is if they introduce a Deadpool into the MCU via the multiverse, like with Doctor Strange or some crap. That'd be weird. And like I said, there's one way you can make it PG-13 is Doctor Strange puts a spell on him so he can't swear. That would actually be a really good joke. <laughs> 
that, and he keeps saying stupid things instead. He's like, God, you know, whatever. Google bomb it. I can't say anything I want to say. You know, like every time I try to say flubu flabber, something else comes up. Like, you know, yeah, it'd be something you'd have and fun you could with. sell a whole movie like 10 years later, like Deadpool says the F word or something like that. Like that's the next that's Deadpool 6. And then finally, right at the end of the movie, he's like, oh, finally I can say, f-. and then just before he gets it out, then the credits start rolling or something. You know, like. So uh, I'm going to read the super chats in just a moment, folks. Uh, we do have a lot of those. Thank you for uh, supporting the channel. Make sure you guys hit that like button. We are only 71 likes away, and I'll give you another good morning pop culture. Remember, this Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, I'm going to go live for a little bit. We're going to sit down. We're going to have some fun. So good morning pop culture is coming on Friday. Uh, but before we get into that, I did want to ask you guys about something because this popped up in the news and this was kind of a big deal to me. Today they announced a new Indiana Jones game and we've heard that LucasArts is not really reforming it now. There's Lucasfilm games. So Star Wars, Lucasfilm, whatever, is trying to take another step into the digital world. And we, again, this is why the Disney infestation is such an anomaly because we're now when Star Wars Battlefront 2 came out four years ago, we were talking about uh, governments trying to see if the game was gambling and all this stuff. There had been a stink on Star Wars games, even now with Star Wars Squadrons, which I got to play for free and didn't even want to complete my 10 hour demo. Th this seems like them trying to like with the Mandalorian where it's, yeah, we went really ham with Ray, Finn and Kylo and it didn't work. So the Mandalorian seems natural. So they're slowly trying to, well, actually they're trying to quickly correct the course. Uh, that's what I think this game thing is, is they've gone, they got in bed with EA. This is how Disney really likes to treat Star Wars as a, as just any other property that you can throw money at and fix its problems. And it's not, it's not even Marvel. You can fix some of its problems like that, but you can't fix Star Wars because it's an old property in a different way. And so I think them moving forward with this initiative of Lucasfilm games and wanting to produce gaming content goes to show their hand with their future. And so this Indiana Jones game announcement was cool because full transparency, one of my favorite games and one of the reasons why I spent money on the new Xbox is because it plays the old Indiana Jones game. So they have a pretty good precedent in terms of uh, Indiana Jones games across the board. So what I want to ask you guys is, have you heard about this game? And if so, what do you think? Um... I'll go first since I have the least to say about it, probably, because Rob's been the one who's kind of covering this a little bit more than I have been paying attention to it. Uh, the only thing I kind of noticed is the timing of it. feels like it was probably originally timed to coincide with the movie we haven't got yet. Oh. Uh, outside of that, if they do a good job, Indiana Jones is a great property that works great in a, in a game. Like, you can do so many different great things, and as long as you have creative people behind it who take the time and you know, have a great story or uh, concept behind the idea of what they're doing. It, it can be amazing. I mean, uh, I've seen some really great games that were like that one. What's that one Indiana Jones one that everybody loves from back in the day? I keep forgetting the name of it. Oh, uh, the Emperor's Tomb. Yeah, the Emperor's Tomb. Like, there was that one. The yeah, and there was a couple other good ones. But then there was, of course, some that were just like, meh, whatever. You know, they're like Pitfall. So what the fuck's the difference? But like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, like I think it could be okay as long as it stays true to the character. I know Jay, you're a huge Indiana Jones fan. Indiana Jones was, I think that uh, shaped my life, man. A teacher that travels the world. I've been all over the world and back again. And um, if you see my other YouTube channel, you'll know that. Anyway, that was a shameless plug. But the um, uh, yeah, it's called Jay Walking the Planet, by the way. Anyway, but yeah, I, I'm beyond excited for this game I, I think we're i think we're due an indiana jones game if i hope they do it well man i hope they do it well i hope they they threw everything into it i do agree i think it was supposed to come out with the movie to keep the hype going um as far as that goes i do hear i did hear something from someone from somebody's cousin from someone's uncle from someone's roommate about mm. the movie Gina. And no, no, I, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, let me make this disclaimer. Gina Carano has told me absolutely nothing about anything, just so everyone knows. Absolutely mm -hmm. nothing. I can't get her in no, trouble. But I trust but some of your sources, like some um, of the stuff but, you've told me. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, she's told me absolute. No, it's not Jean. Everyone's saying Jean. Tom, you're gonna get her in trouble. Like they're gonna. I think was she's kidding. Let's team. be clear. When Holy I say crap. this Gina shit, I'm always kidding, right, guys? So just so everybody's All right. clear, everybody now, know. Yeah, we just had like, a good when I say the Miss Miss Mr. Gina Carana stuff or Miss Gina Carano, stuff, any of that stuff, I'm just I'm being facetious and goofy and picking on I, Jay. I okay, heard that so. the movie was Indiana Jones basically gets captured. And because he has all this knowledge that they have to get a crew to uh, rescue him. And that's kind of like the movie. Oh, I hope not. Yeah. I will put it like this. I don't mean to go and gush about Indiana Jones all night, but I'm very, very precious about the character because I am even super when, precious about him. Look, even when the Star Wars prequels came out, I was like, at least Indiana Jones is great. And I know the fourth one doesn't exist to me, believe me. Nobody's going to tell me that it's as bad as it, you know, any worse than it is. But Indiana Jones is like James Bond, where you can put the character in any situation in a different medium and it'll still be successful. I mean, a few years ago, you had a guy pick up the writing styles of Ian Fleming and give you the first Fleming style James Bond novel in 50 plus years so it's it's not uncommon to do these things where you keep specific versions of characters alive so what i'd argue is you never recast indiana jones you really don't do much with it because you just you keep harrison ford and you keep it alive in games books comics stuff like that it's one of those properties that doesn't need a movie every year to justify being at disney world it doesn't need because it's such it's part of society and part of popular culture i know drunk you brought up the cool teacher thing you can do you can talk about it on that level. You can talk about great action stars. I mean, Tom, we've had how many conversations about the greatest action stars of the 80s? I always think Harrison Ford should be thrown in because Indiana Jones is that big of a deal just for that one, you know, even though technically Han Solo, but Indiana Jones is a better action star, an action character. I so long in a museum. <laughs> he is like I got two. I have Indiana Jones and right under him is Luke Skywalker. I hold them. If they last Jedi, Indiana Jones, I, I think I will. Never mind. I'm not a violent. I'm not a violent person, but dear God, dude, I'm uh, really enough. So we'll have a support group there. Or dear God, that that would be that would. I know really some be things something. about. I know some things about Bond, but I don't know anything about Indy. Well, I dude, love. I have read all the books. I've got all the comics in my. I have got them all. I wish they were going to do Indiana Jones and the Spear of Destiny because Ooh, I love yeah. the Spear of Destiny. Uh, I'm surprised they haven't made movies of the Spear of Destiny. If you don't know what the Spear of Destiny is, it's, it's the spear that was stabbed Christ in the yeah. side, and it got superpowers and you know. Well, like from that. what I heard, so, isn't that the one Spielberg wanted to do, but George kept pushing the damn alien story? There, there was a lot of rumors like that floating around. Yeah, how do you was, feel about how the movie uh, Constantine handled the Spear of Destiny? That's a good question. I I didn't mind it. I like Constantine. It. it I, I didn't I mind it. it. I, I enjoyed I it actually. Like I will actually go to bat for that movie, surprisingly, because I think it does a lot of stuff right that people it doesn't get a lot of credit for. It's a solid Keanu Reeves weird. No, you I know, liked it. I, I didn't. There were some aspects that I didn't care for too much, as far as, but it had nothing to do with the spear of of destiny or long. Yeah, long giants. People are putting in the chat, but yeah, it's so. Uh, I just thought it was, another, it was an interesting because that's not a. Uh, uh, an aspect of uh, you know history, mythology, the Bible, whatever that gets adapted that often. So, well, the uh, thing is, it's not. It's it's really it's only mentioned in the Bible a little bit, and then uh, the you know what people don't realize is that oh my gosh, you guys got me on a tangent. It's I love this conversation. Trust me, I could do this all night. Oh, well, Constantine, it's been such a great conversation. The Constantine, man. you know, he actually uh, believed he found artifacts of Christ such as the nails, the spear, and everything, and he put it in his armor, the Constantine, which is the Roman you know, emperor at the time, mm -hmm. and he put it in his armor, in his chest plate, and the spear, and all that, and he believed that he also had a piece of the cross, what he thought was the piece of the cross, according to history, and he would lead that out into battle and win battles with it, thinking that, he, that God was with him. And so uh, the tr and it, it is it is extremely true that Hitler was uh, sorry I'm not supposed to say it on YouTube but he was searching for the um, for those artifacts not only him but other other people in history were searching for those artifacts that right. came out of that religious time period and they're still looking for the Ark of mm -hmm. the Covenant um, but yeah I mean there's so much you could dive into I think that's what I loved most about uh, I, I loved the uh, Indiana Jones even the Temple of Doom it's just like they go into these historical artifacts and put it in a creative story mm -hmm. 
um, that it's oh, sorry, I could just go on and no, on. No, it's but, great. Yeah, it's so cool. I love exactly. like. No, and I don't understand why the why that Spear of Destiny is not has not been used in other movies. I don't understand that. It's like such an incredible story. Right. And if you actually cool. research the history of it, how it was like stolen and hidden and kings fought for it and kings murdered yeah. like cities and uh, like real life history blew yeah. up towns and set them on fire for this spear that they thought had the blood of Christ on it because they thought if they controlled it, they would rule the world. I mean, it's just like it, it it's just so many cool ad adaptions to that story um that that's just out there i'm surprised people haven't used that for more stuff no anyway there you go no it's great because this conversation has been so good i just realized how late it was jeff and i'm sure no don't apologize at all like i seriously i just looked at the clock i'm like holy shit because normally we're finishing up right now and that's how um how engaged this gauging this conversation has been all night is that you know we just haven't been able to really well, just let up at well, all tom i I think it's a good sign, dude, because what do we always say off air about the show? We just want to have a good time and have fun with the audience. People are sticking around. People are coming out yeah. in droves to support everything, and we're all having a good time. So, yeah, that's, to me, it's the indicator of a good show. So let's uh, get caught up on our Super Chats, and then yes. the fun is going over to Milo's Entertainment, where we're on camera. What are we doing tonight, Jesse? We're going to have adventures. Adventures. We're also... Uh, taking the name of the high council literally and so hey, higher council? Yep, that's it's the higher that's council that's <laughs> you know gonna be mech and tom i've once thought of rebranding this show since our initials are literally thc so <laughs> <laughs> i mean we well, can no talk. sense to rebrand it but you can use that as a as a gimmick yeah. that's for sure i mean i'm in colorado so just just assume i'm always the last thing you want to do is rebrand the show because i let's be honest and clear the one thing we kind of skipped over but we've brought it up in the past i do believe this high republic was a clear <laughs> clearly a, 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 a dig jab at, at you and and uh ebs and 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 the guy and jeremy and the guys in the real original high republic uh cast well you uh, know what i do believe so if that's the case let's just i'll even humor it let's say it is i want to tell you disney thank again, you my opinion but obviously i have nothing to base it on oh of course look i'm not i never once thought that i'm not for all those out there that want to get to know me, I don't sit and think, oh, this stuff's based on me. Every That's not how I operate, you know. But if that's the case, cool. How am I going to get offended and bothered by that? I love Star Wars. What did I do? I got to talk about it, make all kinds of great friends, connections, and do cool stuff. And then I ended up in the fucking thing. If that's the case, how could I not be the happiest guy? I fucking win. I don't care if you base me, put me in some stupid character. doesn't matter because you hate me so much because of my opinions on shit. You'll put me in your entertainment awesome great i'm immortalized how could i ever be pissed i don't think that's the case but if it is that's my take on it it's awesome if they treat us like that oh absolutely if, anything... won, if that's what happened we fucking beat everybody right i was just gonna say in fact if they did that to more um, to us more often and it would just feel like if imagine if they did that to jeremy how much that would fuel his fire my God, he oh my he would God. bank on that you for. Don't three ever years. do it with Jeremy Disney. The rest of us will never hear the end. Never of it. hear the end of it. Never hear the end of it. Like that's my point. Is like if they ever did it to Cecil or Jeremy or EBS, that'd be the like like yeah Cecil. I simp for Cecil, by the way. But uh, <laughs> this is the last night of cash grab, isn't it, Cecil? Well, one thing about Cecil, and I've noticed this, isn't even trying to be nice. When Cecil is regularly on the show. Everyone just has a better life in general. Like everything across the board is better. Isn't that right, Jesse? More Cecil. I was about so, to ask you if you want me to send in the link, and then that's when I realized what time it was. Actually, yeah, that's, normally, yeah. I'm, normally the answer is of course Cecil's a part yeah, of the I show. I know, and that's what I was like, oh shit, it's already cover. eleven o'clock. Yeah. But I would uh, read the super chats and give everybody the respect they deserve, and then we're gonna jump over to mindless entertainment again, folks. We are only nine likes away from another good morning pop culture. Like I say, even if you don't want it, somebody else in the community does. So hit that thumbs up button, uh, help a friend out in the fandom menace, and that will be next Friday. This Friday, ten a.m. Pacific, you're gonna get last week's good morning. Uh, pop culture and the reason i do these this way unlike the old way is it was killing me to go to bed at <laughs> two in the morning get up at six and do the show it just Damn time it zone. It fun. so tom okay wow that's that that pitch worked we just jumped over it all right next the next two fridays good morning pop culture you guys want awesome. it awesome and yeah speaking uh, of if you didn't since we didn't get cecil tonight you will get him tomorrow morning we'll, we'll try and make it sure it's full frontal cecil on midnight's edge in the morning so it's so more like Tom. midnight edge in the afternoon, but yeah. <laughs> so from so from one morning show guy to another, 
we got a crossover. Yeah, I've been wanting to. I've been ta- trying to get a hold of you for that for a while. Like, put it like, well, you're dude, the, one of the only people that we haven't had on yet that we've really, 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 really been wanting to have. You yeah. pick a time, like pick a day, and I'll just get up for it. I don't care. I mean, we, you did stuff for the International High Council. It's not a problem. So pick what day you want, make it happen. Because you and I can go off on tangents for about five or six or seven hours. It doesn't matter. So a show that's basically that seems fun to me. Awesome. Yeah. Well, like I said, we've always wanted to have you. So we've already had Dre three, like what, two or three times now. So <laughs> I, I, I love it. It's fun. Well, I've never been enough. on. <laughs> Rob's my pro- close personal friend. Well, you've been on all the other roundtables and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um. So our friend Mark C says, Mecca. I remember the old days when you, Doomcock, and Nerdrotic streaming together. Mecca, you do a double duty as a wrench as well. Oh yeah, I think I was like the first woman on with Doomcock ever. You, you know, were, yeah, that's how you really, with him. Well, so. that's how we got to know you is between just you wrenching for us too. Yeah, yeah, I was just kind of well. That was a gaming channel back then. I had like five thousand subs from you know playing video games, and you know, like a thousand of them came from Friday the Thirteenth, the game because I was playing mm-hmm. that forever. And um, I yeah, say, I, you I, were like one of our first few wrenches, if not one of the originals. Well, I I was I was such a fan of like the Rob and Tom podcasts because let's face it, Rob's got a sexy voice, and you know he <laughs> complains that I don't compliment him. I, I don't see that. Yeah, so so yeah, I was like a <laughs> fan, and then Rob shouted out Doomcock, and then I started hanging around his channel because, and and then got in with his Patreon stuff, like when he had you know two hundred subscribers, and then he he and he and you guys both like started encouraging me to get on mic because you you knew that I did YouTube stuff anyway, but I was doing gaming, but it just Star Trek and Star Wars both hit like right at the same time. First it was Star Trek. And then it was Star Wars. And then it's like, oh, you know, so I just wanted to, like, vent and complain and, you know, express my frustration and rewrite the show for them because they and, and the movies because, like, they were just failing so much. But, but yeah, that's how that's how a lot of that came to be. So uh, and a quick shout out to everyone that really helped everyone find each other's channels. It's funny. Everyone's got a different way into the fandom menace and you always remember, but it's cool that through that person, you found this person and oh, this person became my favorite. And it, it just, that's, what's cool about it. It's just this never ending cycle. So keep that shit up folks. Uh, <laughs> our friend Racky's Masha says this orc be given us Umi some to cash. Wow. <laughs> So, Rakeem Spasha, thank you very much. Uh, the guys, uh, ask Dion about Warhammer stuff on Thursday because he has been playing through, well, the same game he announced at the end of last year, but he's further through it because we've been talking off air about gaming and stuff. And as I posted today in the chat on the WCBS group or the, the Facebook group, favorite uh, go to game right now? Mine's Doom Eternal. Let us know. We want to know. Uh, Bear Business One, thank you very much. He says, Tom, being on all different streams is like the Emmy ambassador across the fandom. Wow, I never, I, I, I don't think of it that way. I mean, but you're, okay. you're the liaison. You. The liaison. Uh, our friend Matt G, thank you very much. He says, in the end of the X Men 2000 2020 franchise is historic. X Men started the modern comic book film boom, then it got surpassed by the MCU and DCU is in, in attention and success and became like a third party. Now it's gone. Hey, Matt, if you're watching in the chat, uh, I'd like to talk more about this in a video, but of course, this is something you brought to my attention, so I don't want to take credit for it. But I took a screenshot. Uh, just contact me later. That's a cool, that's something I want to discuss a little more in depth. Because it's kind of sad when you think of it. It's I remember getting so excited for X Men. I rode my bike across town to get to the theater. I just was I couldn't wait. And now we got to Dark Phoenix, and I was like, "Oh come on, this is an embarrassment." So, yeah, I never thought of it like that. Uh, our friend Ord's board, thank you very much. He says Jay took a chance on me. He trusted me to do content on his channel. He brought me into this community, and with my life, I'll never be the same for what it is. Uh, that's what brought me to Tom. Hail, drunk, hail, world class. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I just real quick, I, I was supposed to, I was going to live in El Salvador for a few months, and I, and he was going to just take over the channel. So, but we had a pandemic, so it didn't happen. Who was supposed to take it over? Orbs. Oh, oh really? Yeah. 
Oh, Forbes wow. and uh, Steph from Minority Home. I was like, I, I don't know what to do with the channel. I'm probably going to be gone for a while. And um, you guys want to run it? And so they started putting content on the channel and I started promoting their channels, you know, through it. But then uh, we couldn't leave the country. So, so I stayed. But yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll hear more from Ord's board in a minute because I saw his name pop up a couple of times. But Ord's board, mm. thank you very much for your giant super Good. chat. I appreciate That's my that. Boy. Good dude. Um, Fat Steven Seagal beat up Ryan Johnson. Mm. Says, Jay, for God's sake, take a compliment. You are good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Orange yeah, is a good good guy, too. Like, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Tim Riggs, thank you very much for the super chat. He says, Jay, persevere. Ignore these rage addicts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank Who you. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do my best. Our friend yeah. Aaron Sackero again, thank you very much. He says, love y'all. Stay strong. You are a light in the darkness. Well, Aaron, we do it because mm. you guys enjoy it. We love doing it, so it goes both ways, man. I, can, I just want to say one thing about the the super chat just before that, though. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's one thing. Like, we get accused of a lot of things, and it's funny because Mecca knows this more than anything. We can sit there and do a million videos on something that we love and talk positive about stuff, and it don't get two clicks. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but the moment you got some hot take on something, oh yeah, and so it's it's very difficult. To, to try and not go that route but like my my efforts i generally put more of my effort into things like the the and here you go here's your button cobra kai karate kid video i did today <laughs> or actually that i've been working on all weekend that just put, came out today i put a lot more into that than i normally do like some of the ancillary stuff that just is you know rumors of this and that and the other going on and more bad news about some franchises and you know, it just it gets to a point where it's just like, you know, I'd love to be able to just do this all the time, but it's not the way it works, unfortunately. Uh, up next, our friend Tim Riggs, he says, I just want to say that, Jay, you got a new sub for me. I love how chill you are. And you're oh, good. Thank you. That's Tim, not the whiskey talking, my man. <laughs> thank, and you, thank you. I. And drunk, I can even vouch too, man. Uh, Tim is one of the guys that comes out to every convention, brings us bottles of tequila. Uh, now I think he's bringing us, uh, was it Lagavelin? So he's a cool dude. He's genuine. Oh, man, send me tequila. So he's the enabler, huh? <laughs> Ooh, <yeah. laughs> I love bourbon tequila. Send me some. Well, he sent in a super chat later. He, he's one of the only listeners to go out drinking with us. So, Oh, man, you know, I love that. Oh, man, I'm meeting so many people like because I live right next to Disney Springs, and we go to the Indiana Jones bar. There's an Indiana drink. Jones bar? Yeah, it's well, awesome. I know where we're going next time things yeah. open up. It's called Jacques Lindsay's Bar. It's named after the guy who had the plane in yeah. the... Uh, it's his bar, but it's all decked out in Indiana Jones stuff. And the snake Reggie escaped. Oh, shit, like, have you going. seen the snake? And oh, It's awesome, man. I'm not I, leaving. I'm yeah, not we stay, And all the drinks are themed after the movie. Yeah, even they have Steven's like, like uh, dude, what? <laughs> they have the uh, they have like the Scottish professor, the antidote from Temple of Doom. They have uh, Shanghai. Uh, well, that's got to be a Shanghai. drink. I got to imagine. Yeah, they're all drinks. Yeah. They're all alcoholic okay. drinks. Uh, yeah, awesome, man. Oh, I'm not even a drinker. I want to go. Like, I'm there. I'm there like every other day. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, it's our awesome. friend board, board again says, meh, Jay's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got to keep him humble. Got to keep that's him humble. Cool. That's true. I'll our take friend Roger. Day. Roger Haynes says, all the best, Jay. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank Nelson, you. Nelson the Gentleman says, daniel son, wax off, not off his hot wife. <laughs> wax wow. on, not off his hot wife. Um, I, Dude, I still haven't seen season two of Cobra Kai. So, folks, I will engage with any Karate Kid talk. But if it sounds like I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm <laughs> fine. And I don't <laughs> want to know. So, I'm in. My fault. It's it, it, Fair enough. It is your fault. I'll say it on air. Jesse, you should have watched the Karate Kids one through four, and you should have watched four just like me before you saw part one because no. it was the most popular film from Sony of 1994, and it sucked. And you should have suffered like I did. I, I, I want to hear. I want to hear her takes on it, though. I'm really interested on hearing. You know. Dude, I'm excited to watch it. I'm really looking forward to. It. Did you hear her take on the Karate Kid? Well, I got to talk to her a little bit about it, but I don't. Okay. Did she do a yeah. Did you do a video about it yet? Because I didn't see one pop up in my feed. 
No, I haven't done anything. Yet. Okay, I was gonna say, yeah, no, we just talked about that one time, and I know you enjoyed it, so yeah. I did a lot, yeah. Our friend Mike's Comics says, "What's wholesome? What a wholesome stream! Congratulations to Drunk Three PO for his success, and sorry to World Quest Bullshitters for the salty comment I left about Bill and Ted Three. <laughs> Thank you, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Mike, I'll say this: I don't even remember the comment, but uh, hey, I'm not asking for anyone to share the same opinions as me. Yeah. Just let's have a conversation. Well, no, and that goes back to the whole like you know." I got it. I understood, and it was tough not to, 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 just like look. I when somebody was like, "Oh, they did this and they did this," it's all wokeified. It's like you know, Jeff and the rest of us were all like, "Wait until you see the movie for a reason," and we understood where you guys were coming from, where the the reactions were coming from, and it's so easy to react like that in this society when we've been just, you know, had it shoved down our throats for literally for the last few years. Well, I shouldn't say literally, figuratively, but you know what mm. I mean. You know, it, it, it's very easy to jump to those conclusions. I totally understand that, and uh, it was tough. But no, I, I we don't know what you said, but it's probably something along those lines. I can imagine because <laughs> I got a lot of those same comments, and it was just you know, I did have a lot of people come back afterwards though, and, and it was one of the few times where they did say, "Yeah, you were right. It wasn't mostly woke." I didn't like it. They'd say or something like that, or they would say they loved it, but at least most people were. I want to, I don't want to say man enough, but man or woman enough to come forward and say, you know what? I was wrong about that. And, uh, yeah. So, so those who did, that's cool. There you go. Our friend Tim Riggs says the CW is, uh, represents to me almost everything that is wrong with TV. Just Mike, behind there the you go. He and... says he's, Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. He says he still hates it. I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> well, you're f- Dude, it's fine. Uh, it, Tim's cool about shit. He says the CW represents to me almost everything that is wrong with TV just behind the big bang theory responsible for all the weirdos thinking they understand geek culture. F that garbage. Uh, I agree. It, <laughs> It's not that I like want everyone to not be a part of it and stuff, but they kind of sent the wrong message of what it's really like. It's not about uh, keeping normies out. It's don't misrepresent it. That's my only complaint because they show this idyllic version of people that make so much money and live in San Francisco and have this life that is not really relatable. But because they like the stuff you like, people think that is relatable, but it's way more different than you realize. That's where my problem with Big Bang Theory comes from. Plus, it sucks. Uh, Uh... Mark T says, how can you not like the next Karate Kid? Two words: Sand Gardens. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's some of the better parts of the show. <laughs> I, I I will stick up for part four. I don't. I'm, I'm not going to sit there and go, "Oh, it's a great movie" or anything. But it has elements in it that we didn't get in the other three, and the ending sucks donkey balls. But and the acting is atrocious. Or should I say the writing? Because there's a lot of great actors in a bad movie. That's what you have, basically. <laughs> Uh, Tim Riggs says this just needs to be said the 80s was a golden era for movies probably won't see something like that again in my lifetime best soundtracks too oh yeah shit yeah mm. Beverly Hills Cop uh, so I, for as much as I love that movie I don't know if I would say it's the best soundtrack of the 80s I'm trying to give like to be fair oh the best the soundtrack of the 80s oh shit it's, look I'm gonna that's a think, tall think, order think about it for a minute I'm gonna read our super chats everyone in Dude, the chat I- I'm gonna think John about Williams, it. man. John Williams of the well, 80s. Well, yeah. Then are we going unstoppable? Score or are we going like pop soundtrack? I mean, Purple Rain counts. So oh, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, you have a lot of uh, like that's a tall order. I wouldn't say it's the best, but like, just you know, no, yeah. Oh. Now, uh, our friend Cesare Japan. Thank you very much, Cesare Japan. He says, uh, Tom, look into an MMA fighter called Zu Ziadong who goes around China exposing fake kung fu masters. Some of the masters oh, are left bad. Count Dankula made an absolute Mad Libs video out of him. Or a Mad Libs video. I have. And yeah, if you guys, and and really, that's what I love about it. Andre and I have talked a lot about this too, is I love how they break it down to where it's basically, and this is what Bruce Lee figured out actually uh, a long time ago, is that martial arts, they're beautiful and they're great, but they're kind of useless unless you're fighting somebody who either A, knows the same martial arts or is just that inept at fighting. Because if anybody who has knows a different kind of martial arts style or uh, has some kind of physical advantage on you, that's still not going to save your ass in every <laughs> every situation. So what Bruce Lee figured out is if you mix all these different martial arts, he basically invented like a lot of the uh, the stuff we have nowadays for self defense for women's classes and stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of that comes straight from Bruce Lee. 
Like that's what he did. He took all <laughs> these different things and brought them together and found the things that worked the best in, in every situation. Cause a lot of the problem with like karate and Kung Fu and the different Taekwondo and the different arts as they were practiced, you were generally fighting somebody who was practicing the exact same art with the exact same teacher as you. So of course it's going to work to a point and look awesome when you're doing it. Cause it's basically choreographed. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But if you're, if you're actually trying to fight somebody who knows a far superior style to yours, you're going to get your ass handed to you or something, you know, it just in, in a normal life and in the normal type of way that people attack you, a lot of those type of, uh, and, and I think Jesse knows some things about self-defense that she could probably uh, understands what I'm getting at too, but yeah. Oh yeah. She's Krav Maga. Yep. Uh, it's fun. She'll tell me stories about the stuff they talked to her in training. It's, it's pretty brutal. It's, it's, it's I'm, I'm like, this is real. Like yep. the shit, the way they describe it, cause Dion took it back in college and he would describe stuff. And I'm like, the martial arts that brutal and then jesse tells him like oh okay well yep this shit's i mean this shit was devised during world war one or world war two mm-hmm. on the streets so yeah and that's what it's happened is that is real as you can get so yep. our friend termis est says so you're in jesse's overall thoughts on mando season two uh there were moments of greatness that outweighed season one the stuff that i didn't like i was very vocal about i didn't think uh sasha banks and uh, what's her face? Uh, Katie. I didn't think they did a bad job as actresses. I just don't think those characters fit. It was like two different shows spliced together to be a backdoor pilot. So with that all being said, uh, I enjoyed it enough that if I can, if I have the ability to cut out certain parts, I love it. Over if I have to take it exactly as a whole, it's fine. I mean, I'm not as emotionally invested as I was the first time because of some of those moments. So mm-hmm. what do you th- say, Jesse? Uh, yeah, that's fair. High highs, low lows, but it balances out for me to be a little less impressive than the last season. And it's the kind of thing where, like, if the show continued on this trajectory, I would be out hard out. But I'm fairly confident in what in my assessment, which is, you know, it's the one Star Wars property that did well. So Kathleen Kennedy used it as a backdoor for a bunch of pilots to do other shit. She got lucky. And gave, uh, you know, gave Favreau and Filoni the uh, Book of Boba Fett as compensation. So if that's the case, and that is in fact true, I have high hopes for season three to get back on track. But if it continued in the same vein of season two, I don't think I'd stick with it. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, I felt kind of the same way. Season one was better consistently, Mm -hmm. but season two had higher highs. Like the Bill Burr episode, yeah. in season two, I think is my favorite all around episode. And that Carl Weathers show. directed one with and the, the, Carl with the bike was chase, my second favorite of the whole show. That's see, folks, that's what I'm talking about when I want what I want out of the Mandalorian. I I want that kind of action, and I like Cara Dune, Carl Weathers, and the Mandalorian. That trio. I don't really want other people because you're bringing in other parts of Star Wars lore and Star Wars for the first time in decades, actually since the original trilogy ended, you were able to create something where your three focal characters were all new, no real connections. Because if you want to make that about the prequels, if you want to make that comment, well, Obi-Wan Kenobi ties to the original. Oh, you want to make that about the sequels? Well, the whole movies are built on the backs of Han, Luke, and Leia. This was that one chance, and they did it right. You know, when they do bad shit, like parts of Rogue One or Solo existing in general, I'm going to be honest. Carl Weathers, her, and the Mando were cool. And it just, every time they take away from them, I don't care. Timothy Oliphant was a nice addition. Boba Fett was a nice addition. But Luke Skywalker, cool ending. Some of it, though, I feel like, like they haven't even given us enough time with the, you know, Carl yeah. Weathers, Caradoon, mm-hmm. Mando trio to let that sit. And they keep introducing all these other elements, other elements, other elements for their spinoffs. And it just, it's, you know, at the really at the expense of the show, and I think it really wasn't fair. To Speaking of show. Carl Weathers, when am I getting my autograph drunk, three PO? So, Jeff, thanks for having me. I really have to leave. <laughs> See, and, um... See? <laughs> little fucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew I didn't see uh, you said you had to go. Yeah, yes, yeah, but, yes, dude, yes. It, this show went super duper long, drunk. I want to thank you, man. I know. Look, we talked about what you're going through right now. I think this was a fun interview for people to know, like. Dude, I loved it, man. I loved it. It was, dude, before everything, it was always awesome to interact with you and stream during, after, whatever, forever. It's always going to be a pleasure, man. So thanks for taking the time and joining us tonight. It was a, I thought it was a great show. I I know a lot of people in the chat had a great time too. I I hope so. And I, you know, I, I love the high council. It's been, it's been a fixture 
uh, to to listen for the past two years, or maybe it's almost three now. It's uh, whenever you guys after the Last Jedi, that High Council was the show, and I I, I don't think I've ever missed one. Um, not seeing it, listening to it live, but at least like having it on. So it's it's been it's been awesome. Well, I remember so, how you acted the time we talked about crossing over the whole thing, and you're just like. Oh, I don't need to be on. You were just so humble about it. You were trying to push the other guys and everything, and it was just – it's typical Jay. Typical Jay. Well, yeah, because they, they're such good YouTubers, you know. So. No, but tell tell Gina uh, to tell Carl that I said Rocky right. should have threw in the towel. Um, All right. So there you go. And we and I hate to – like, I don't, I don't mean to, like, shill or anything, but in the private chat, Tom, if – if you guys could go over and subscribe to my second channel, I'm just trying to get the watch time up over there. It's it's basically like a travel channel, but it's like all the countries that I've gone to and some of the work that we've done. And I uh, I put in the private chat. That would be awesome. Sure. I'll so I, that I, right I now. And oh actually, appreciate. I was a, I was it unsubscribed me because I was subscribed to this. Oh, one. so I appreciate it, Jeff, Mecca, Tom, uh, heroes of the Phantom Menace. Thank you for having <laughs> me on. I appreciate well, it. Being the best of us, dude. Uh, I saw silly, silly man. You dressed in drag to help children. I would never do that. So I wouldn't do that for too many people. Trust me. <laughs> Only <laughs> Cecil and maybe Jeff. Besides you. <laughs> oh, I know what I'm getting for my birthday next year. Sweet. They... <laughs> Take care, everyone. Have a great, great night, Thank and you. I will. I'll talk See to you all man. next. Mm -hmm. All right, yes, we did go super duper long, so I'm going to finish the super chats, and then we're going to jump over to Milus Entertainment for the higher council. And it's and the answers to the soundtrack, I have to, I guess, say that pound for pound, the soundtrack that probably had the most influential hits on the 80s would have had to have been Footloose. And if we're talking about scores, then you'd have to throw it to, like, John Williams for Empire, probably, just out of default. But, yeah, that, I, I guess if I had to, if I had to answer that question. I thought about it long and hard, and and there was a lot of them where I'm like, ah, oh, but the one that has the most and probably has had the most influence on the decade was probably Footloose. It just has like, what, half a dozen or better t top ten hits on it? Like, even Mecca, you bring it up from time to time about, like, let's hear it from the boy and stuff like that as a song. Oh, yeah, I've heard, yeah, those are the ones you wouldn't and, be able to escape, yeah. And, I mean, generally, if Footloose comes on in those first few beats, everybody knows that song. You that's know, true and it has we need a hero which was a song that's been used a million times yeah. since then um they reissued the soundtrack with some of the other great songs that are in the film that weren't originally on there and that did well like the john mellencamp song and stuff so I, in the end i guess pound for pound i'd have to say that one it's not my personal favorite but just yeah uh, just to be um objective I about it you know what? I'll go back and look at one because I've only seen that movie once and I had no clue. The I know movie the song itself is, another... is kind of meh, but yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, our friend Stuart Shield says culture in general has gotten abysmal and lazy, particularly art. There are exceptions, but quality, unfortunately, is no longer the rule. Quantity is. Stuart, that's the downside of the digital world we live in where everyone wants it now or yesterday and everyone can find a way to produce it quicker and quicker and quicker. That's why certain properties like a Star Wars, why I treat them a certain way, because they weren't created in the era of the now more and more. They come from a simpler time, you know, before the Empire and all that shit. But what they do is they build quality first. And that's why I get upset when Star Wars uses the modern quantity mentality, because we will wait for the good shit. We're waiting happily. We want only good shit. That's why three years between movies didn't feel like a big deal. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm with you, uh, Stuart. I do think across the board, just society, we've we've lowered the standard for what's great. Yeah. Uh, Sydney Layfield, thank you very much, says, the volume they use in The Mandalorian is exciting. I'm curious how else they'll use it for other projects. What are your thoughts? Well, the volume, do you mean like the 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 like the like volume of stuff on screen? Because if that's I what you're asking, so. Sydney, uh, I think that's cool. It, it doesn't feel anemic and cheap when I see some of those action scenes. Only the Robert Rodriguez episode had a couple of moments where I'm just like, it looked like it was shot outdoors. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> our friend uh, SH Rebels 08, thank you very much. He sends in a flying pair super chat sticker. SH Rebels 08, thank you join for joining uh, me on every live stream. I see you all the time. So thank you. 
okay, if I'm not mistaken, I guess the volume is what they call the studio. Is that what it is? Sci-fi for me? The, the is that the uh, the rear project? Well, it's not rear projection, but basically, it's like what they used to do with rear projection, but with LCD screens. Maybe oh, that new technology about. to make it look f- to be rendered quick. I know what you're talking about. If that's the technology, that's cool. I'm on board with that. The show looks nice. Yeah, I like it a lot more than than de- recompositing it later, like over green screen, because they can never seem to get the lighting right when it comes to green screen or reflections quite right. And there's oh, like that was my problem with the prequels, is I felt like I was watching a video game. Because everything felt disconnected, like the characters weren't part of the background, which 90% of the time they weren't, especially in the last two films. But now a lot of the things I've seen in The Mandalorian, it feels like you're in that place, even though I know it's stuff that's on a screen. You know what I mean? It's just because it's reflective. It's it, the, the light is interacting with things around it. Um, it makes a big difference, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm hoping they use it a lot more going forward in, 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 in good ways, not bad. Like I mean, they can overuse it and misuse it, so... Just, that's that's uh, that's all you really want is for these things to make it more seamless to live in the world you're watching. Exactly, and that's why I'm a bigger fan of deep fake. And I figured that out with the whole um, final bit. With I'm not going to give away spoilers because I don't think we brought it up yet. The show, so just for those who haven't had it spoiled, but the final bit in the Mandalorian season two, um, somebody redid the one character with the the deep fake, and I figured out then th- then why it is I I like it better. It's because you're actually using a face mask from an actual person and not a digitized creation or animation. Hmm. Um, and that's the things I think that the, that the, a lot of the special effects uh, uh, artists need to really start to, to concentrate on is how do we bring the realism back into this? Because yeah, a lot of the problems I have with CGI, I don't care so much about how it's being used more so as, is it, it feels so soulless all the time, but anyway, we got a lot of super <laughs> chats to get through. Uh, Black Lotus 30 says, uh, thank you very much. He says, Clash of the Titans 81 is my all time favorite. I love stop motion. Movie. The 2010 version made me angry when they threw Bupo away. Yeah, I did not like that. Uh, I joke about my buddy Joel and say he owes me money for all the bad movies he made me see. Clash of the Titans was the very first one. Thanks, now, Joel. Have you I ever seen the point. original before you saw that, or you just see the remake? Yeah, I went in remake only. So thank you, Joel. <laughs> oh, the original so good, though. Yeah, it is. Uh, Tim Riggs says Roger Corman was more influential than Ryan Johnson will ever hope to be. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, our friend Riff Magos, uh, thank you very much. He says, Tom, you're a legend. I couldn't agree more. Hail Mecca and 3PO. I don't yeah. know what you're about, agreeing with, but thank you. It was about two hours ago, so if you can I'll remember what we were talking about two hours ago. That's we'll what just he say I was talking about how cocaine and hookers are amazing. Yes. Uh, they actually are. Uh, Tim Riggs, so thank you very much. Works. <laughs> Tim says, Tom, the weirdos talking recently about Cobra Kai are just flaming rage addictions or clickbait whores. I wish it was something as simple as clickbait, and that's what I was trying to say before. I do really feel like it's this, oh, no, no, uh, you you poor little thing. You, you're liking this show you shouldn't like because it's so misogynistic and non-woke. And then at the same time, they're I think they are trying to shame the show creators and showrunners into uh, uh, making it more woke. I really do. Because it was like, every, I remember everybody was getting, and this doesn't give away spoilers, so I remember everybody was getting really worried at, after season two that the third season was going to go way woke when it went the exact opposite, really. I mean, and not like completely to where it's like calling attention to it like the, in the other way, you know. But there's a couple bits and scenes where it stays true to the characters and they do have a little fun with it. So I feel like that's their main issue is that the show is good. People are paying attention now that it has a bigger platform. Well, God forbid, you know, people watch this show and not be, you know, taught the right way of the right thing. And you can't just be entertained. No way you can have that. So that's what I feel like it is. It is. It's just more of a, it's, it's a deep rooted, sad thing that I wish it was just clickbait. Cause then we could just ignore it. Uh, Tupac Shakur, welcome back. He says the league was hilarious, just a riot. Cheers, y'all. Well, Tupac, thank you very much for coming back from the grave to tell us about the league because I enjoy that show. Uh, Jesse, we should watch that show one day. Kendo 
when we get together, that's what Kendo puts on for the guys. <laughs> uh, Tim Riggs says, I am looking forward to this as much as, sorry, I am looking forward so much to the High Republic. The amount of fail it is absolutely guaranteed to be <laughs> my favorite channels for months. Uh. <laughs> well, uh, Tim, be prepared because High Count or yeah, High Republic stuff is fun to talk about. Um, yeah. Yeah. Be prepared. It's going to be uh, funner uh, to talk yeah. about than it is to be reading it. Agreed. Uh, I gladly can give reviews, though, if people want each week and how to read it for free. Uh, Christian Coralejo says, uh, what are your thoughts on the movie Airplane? Well, Christian, I have to say I am in the minority here. I don't like Airplane. I know people are going to go, how do you not like Airplane, Jeff? I watched it as a kid. I didn't like it. I watched it six months ago with Jesse. Didn't like it. So, Oh, is that one it's of Jesse's awesome. movies she picked for you to watch? No, she hadn't oh, seen it. Oh, you guys it. just watched it off the cuff? Fell she fell asleep yeah. in the beginning. Oh, Yeah, I mean, I can understand some people. Like, I'm not a big fan of satire slash parody movies like that. But there's the, the handful that are good. But to me, they all kind of ended between the time when Mel Brooks retired and uh, uh, Leslie Nielsen died. Like, yeah, that was kind of like it. Like, all the scary movies and the not another movies and all that crap, they can, I'll, I'll leave them. Um, but I, I do love the original Airplane, but I also understand those who are just not into that kind of humor. You know what I mean? Like, I, 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 mm -hmm. I can totally uh, see that point of view. Yakase, thank you very much. She says, Letter Kenny is the show that made me cry laughing. Yeah, I can say you must like Kendo then because Letter Kenny is one of the shows he swears by. And he and Nick, well, they'll download it and talk about it constantly. It's on Hulu. I need to just fucking watch Letter it. Letter Kenny? Yeah, it's all one word. It's, I think, Canadian too. I don't remember. I, Bill showed me one up at the, the beginning of the first episode and I was hooked, but I just never had the time to sit down and watch it. Ooh, somebody in the chat's talking about the Blues Brothers. Uh, Ooh. last year, that movie, I fell in love with that even more than I already was. Uh, Tim Riggs, thank you very much. She says, Pretty sure I can out drink Jeff, definitely out drink Dion. I'd be more than happy to pit my Irish American skills against drunk 3PO. Well, right. Tim, as you heard earlier before drunk left, he's down for the challenge, so. I won't speak for the man, but I will speak for myself and say, round two, bro, 2021, just bring it. <laughs> Forge Father says, whether you like or hate candy corn, let's all agree that people who like candy hearts at Valentine's Day are freaking weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was one of the arguments I think that I made that helped, too, was like I brought up, you know, candy corn is just like, you know, the candy hearts, candy canes, all that kind of business. But, yeah, those chalky little bastards, who actually eats those? I do. Uh, I <laughs> Depending on which ones. I like it when sweet tarts do theirs better. Those yeah. ones I like. See, I like the kind of softer ones. You'll get like the bigger, softer ones. Those are usually really good. I used to like them when I was a kid, but I guess my taste just changed. Because mm. I mean, I know they're the same shit that's in the candy cigarettes, which I used to love as a kid. It's basically the same. Uh, it's the just old talky, whatever. whatever. Yeah. Little flavors they try to add that make them weird, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, to me, candy hearts were fun because you only ate them on Valentine's Day. It's one of those candies where it's like nobody really likes it, but because you only eat it once a year, it's kind of like a big deal. It's like, oh, I wonder. I, feel about candy corn. I wonder what the hearts are going to say on it. Oh, be mine. Okay. Remember they would do like the brandy ones, you get, like Star Wars ones. They'd be like, you know, may the force be with you and one shit. One year I found some that were hilarious. I think it was at some adult shop, but like they were like, fuck off. <laughs> Get bent and... We need to get those and oh, <laughs> we the fandom minutes doesn't have like a central location where we can all hang out because we could do like secret Santas and fake Chris secret Valentines and all this other fun shit. That'd be, that'd be so dumb. We could do it on the internet. We should find a way. That'd be fun. Uh, our friend Ord's board says, Count me in on anything Wayne's World. Well, Ord's board, I knew I liked you for a reason. Wayne's World. Well, time. Time. Excellent. That's why I, uh, dress up as Wayne on wow, Halloween. Aerosmith's gonna be there. Wow, who else? Uh, old man fashioning a kayak out of wood. <laughs> Rip Taylor. Rip Taylor's gonna be there. Oh my God, Rip Taylor's a god in my country. <laughs> we... All right, Jesse, we're watching Wayne's World too soon. All right. Yeah, Weird well, right. Naked Indian is my favorite. <laughs> uh, Matt Steven Seagal beat up Ryan Johnson, has a message attractive, but no matter what it was, thank you very much. Runs with Phantoms, thank you very much. He says, the Republic sure is high, Jamaram. You know that's no lie, Jamaram. It's so rock steady, Jamaram. They're always ready, Jamaram. Jamaram. Oh, Black Widow. 
Great for music. When is somebody going to take and make that song? It won't take long with the internet. No. I'll do it. Jesse, you should. Jesse with the new... was like, I'll do it. It's nobody else's fucking Dude, brilliant. she can play, what, four instruments? Yeah, yeah. And then I got a keyboard for Christmas, so I can play keyboard a little bit. Plus, we got all the stuff to make the equip- the professional loops. We should do it for fun. We should. <laughs> uh, Wilson! The unauthorized biography of Tom Hanks says, I'm open to Justina Ireland's opinions as one Roman is to consent. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that one's comment of the night, hands down. If I said something before, and we I can't apologize. even, yeah, we can't beat that. Yep. Um, Noxu Cal says they were expecting us to buy their bullshit. Ha! Huh. I believe that's in regards to the High Republic. Yes, <laughs> but we didn't. I'm going to follow the Comic Con reports on that very closely, folks. Well, I just think it's funny because you know they've been talking about this High Republic thing now for what a, almost a year. Uh huh. And then they, you know, they obviously were waiting for the Mandalorian to die down to drop this trailer, right? And as soon as this trailer drops, what happens? The news leaks to the press about who's writing the the Kevin Feige Star Wars movie. It was like talk about taking the wind out of their sails. I mean, that's what happens. I know this sounds really like not conspiratorial, just kind of douchey, but like that's what happens when a big company owns so much because now they have to, you know, they like they have arms of the company that takes care of all these things it's you know bigger corporations yeah like but that's why this was not an official announcement like this was you know something that came in under they don't even say who their source is well tom what i'm saying though is like i these kind of things are too convenient and i don't think a smaller studio or a smaller company in general could provide that kind of distraction by just going oh boom oh boom oh boom like that so Good, good for them. It's a scary power to have. Well, I'm not going to get into it, but yeah, Andre did an interesting editorial that I agree with a lot of his takes on. That's all I'm going to say. Our friend Mike's Comics says, changing history and controlling the Force. Whatever happened to the Force being female? We want to control it now? LOL. <laughs> oh, but now the future is female, star, according to Star Trek. The fe- You know what, Bill, Tom? Again? Uh, no, that's I what like they little- tweeted out. Yeah, they've been. That's an old stupid thing that they had a few years back. That was stupid then too. <laughs> anyway, you're saying Jeff? Sorry. All I say is I like to live by the Doc Brown fu- uh, philosophy. The future is whatever you make of it. So all these people out there that want to put the label on the future, you're gonna die, clown. I'm I thought joking. you were talking about the Jawats. Like, how am I gonna <laughs> harness that kind of power, Tom? It can't be done, can it? <laughs> a wolf of lightning. Uh, Mark C says, Tom. Uh, we already read that one about the Declaration of Independence. Thank you very much, Mark C. Rob Alta says, the funny part is that the lady was standing in front of the Library of Congress's backdrop. <laughs> that is uh, the Justina Ireland footage from earlier. Uh, oh, yeah. We did show that about, what, hour hour in. Yeah. Uh, the good Tom King, thank you very much for your super chat. He says, congrats, Jay, Tom, and everyone else involved in raising nearly $40,000 for St. Jude. Yeah, I was yeah. trying to get a hold of you for that, man. Um because everybody you're, wanted to be, you, have you, guys you, have my, you have my phone number, phone number. I, need, I think I gave you mine, but I don't know if I ever got it. I, I think I do, but I have to double check because I've gotten like two new phones in the last year because I broke my other <laughs> Well, from now on, uh, I'll give you my number. Just call, call. That's the yeah, best. Because we, yeah, because we were trying though. to get a hold of you, and that was like some of the retracted messages I had was like, dude, get in here. Everybody's you know wondering where the fuck you're at. You know what I'm going <laughs> to pull, Tom? You'll get this 80s reference. I'm going to pull a Tears for Fears. They weren't available to be a part of Live Aid, but they ended up doing other shit. So we'll do something else to, you know, be a part of something well, like that. The best I believe- part is- oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I believe in all that stuff. So I'd love to be a part of something that cool. So Well, and YouTube finally did something right. God forbid. I don't stop the damn presses. Um, this is what he did. Uh, it's there, There's a way, I guess, you can go in. And if you're doing something for charity... It has a direct link to the charity. The charity gets 100% of the donations. Google and YouTube don't keep any of it. And that also saves us the trouble of having to go through all the bullshit. Um, You know, waiting for the money, sending it in, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's that's a fucking... That's actually really cool. Uh, I know. Yeah, that's what helped us the other night. Because think about that for a minute. If he would have had to figure out how to handle 40 grand, Mm -hmm. oh my God, that would have been a nightmare. Uh. Yeah, it, it, I like where some of this stuff is headed. I'll put it like that. So uh, if there's ever going to be another thing like that, I'd like to be a part of to help out. So, 
But yeah, we were more than, and, and I got to thank you guys listening because I'm sure a lot of you were there that helped that are listening right now. It's you guys that did this. You guys, I mean, we did that in under like three hours. It was fucking insane because he kept changing the goal. Uh, Star Wars Theory did because it kept. He's like, well, shit, we're gonna have to change the goal. We only been here fifteen minutes, and it's you guys that did that. It was amazing that you guys did that, and that shows how great this community is. And people like Jay are a prime example of that, and that's oh, yeah. why people go after him so so harshly, is because they do. They we we show that we're not the things they say we are, and and in fact, we probably do a lot more than a lot of these people coming after us do, which yeah. is what really bothers them. Our friend Stuart's back again. Thank you, Stuart Shields. He says, spot on cultural commentary, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Saul Alinsky style cultural Marxism. Degrade cultural quality for cultural quantity. That name is one I've been familiar with since college. We read about him, uh, not studying him. We read about him. I believe we read about him in, was it a cult class? All I remember is the writers, the, one of the writers of the book was Robert Cialdini or Cialdini or something. And the, the professor couldn't say the Italian name. And the guy next to me was like, can this guy not read? And so I'll never forget. Uh, <laughs> love Michigan State. Love it. I shouldn't uh, laugh because I mispronounce shit all the time. Oh, I know, but this guy looked like a caricature. He was the worst. He was a, he was a fine teacher, but he looked like Bob Backlund. Uh, Miguel Hernandez says, look at Ryan Long and Awaken with JP. They're doing what John Oliver and Stephen Colbert are doing, except they're actually funny. I have a friend who looks exactly like Awake uh, with JP. It's scary. I've like, never heard of him. He's hilarious. He's a, he, I, I think I should have showed you one of his videos. He's if, if like my favorite one that he does is if meat eaters acted like vegans. Oh, that, that guy. Or vegans. Yeah. I know that video. He turned in not yeah. too long ago. Okay. I love that guy. I had no he's hilarious. Question. He's he's he was part of the inspiration for Social Justice Jesse because he's that you know. <laughs> What's the walk? He's great. That's he's sad that it's made. based on a real person. <laughs> Dude, Wake with JP is 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 well, he's he's doing the same thing with his you know his gimmick is the same as my gimmick. Oh, okay, gotcha. I thought yeah. you were like a real real person, like no. Oh no no no, no. His, his his whole his whole gimmick is that he's just doing it slightly differently than how I do it. I love this. It, his is he's got a great channel. Gotcha. It's really good stuff. He's I see a few people. Yeah. Are talking about Star Trek. Um, if you guys want to have fun with that, I noticed one thing about that tweet. Yeah, it's in there blaring the whole future is a female thing in the beginning of the tweet. But notice they don't say season finale. They just say finale. Good. It should end forever. I don't know. I'm just. Yeah, well, Michelle Paradise says they're working saying. on season four. Yeah, though. they're working. They were supposed to start shooting like what, two months ago, three months um, ago? Well, here, here's the thing I know about Picard that got pushed back. To start filming, I think, in February or January. Yeah. So Picard got pushed back. I have no idea about Discovery, but Michelle Paradise is who you want to watch with that because she's actually in well, charge. Like, Kurtzman's fucked off over to Claire East. So. And I, I think the person has said it, but I'm not going to say their name. Somebody who's talked directly with this individual has flat out said that, the, that there's somebody else who's pretty much running the show right now. And that's all I'm going to say. If you guys want to get into Star Trek business, we'll get to, um, into that in a totally different podcast. So, yeah. Mm. So, uh, up next, we have our friend uh, Andy Lee. Thank you very much. He says, it's not, it's not common sense. It's uncommon sense in regards to some of the stuff we were talking about with drunk. Script Doctor it, calls it, it Super Sense. What, it, what do they teach you? Super Sense? He's like, Super Cops? Yeah, um, super Cops. Uh, but no, I... It's sad how things that were, you know, once normal are now the special exception. Our friend Stuart says, this is why things like new Star Wars and Star Trek Discovery get created to push politics, not make art. And Stuart, pop, or excuse me, science fiction fans are the smartest fan base on the planet. Everybody sees through this shit. You can't do it with sci-fi. It never works. It, because sci-fi is built on this shit when it's in its purest, most honest form. When you try to turn it into this evil corporate version, people see through the shit and it suffers. And we are not stupid. Um, now, yeah, uh, I do this super chat. I'm going to read. I'm not going to comment on because I do not want to cover politics, but people sent it in. And I do read it. So, you know what? I don't read about politics. Sorry, that performer 387. If you want to send in something else, awesome. I would love to read it, but we don't cover politics on the channel at all. Uh, you know what I'm going to say? It sounds kind of shitty, but we got recognized in the grocery store once and nobody wa and we don't want to hear actors talk about their politics. So nobody wants to hear a couple of YouTubers in California talk about our politics because it's, it's not going to be entertaining. Nobody found us to hear me talk about what's going on in the world right now. 
Damn straight. So why 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 muddy the brand up? So with all due respect, that performer three eighty seven, I'd love to read something uh, involved with the show, but I'm not going to cover politics. Sorry. Uh, Runs with Phantoms says in elementary school, I role played with friends during recess as Black Ranger, a black dude. I'm white. No one bats an eye. Well, because Runs with Phantoms, we got to grow up in that era where it was cool to be any Power Ranger. I mean, the only one you didn't want to be was the Pink Ranger because you were a guy, and that's a different topic to discuss. But yeah, all the Power Rangers were cool. All the turtles, well, they're just green. But you know what? We grew up in an era where people were more accepting about that fun shit. So it's sad. Now, our friend Forge Father, thank you very much. He says, our son dressed up as Godzilla this Halloween, and he's not Japanese or a lizard. <laughs> Father, that would say a lot if he was a lizard, because I would be curious to what kind of person would one father a lizard or adopt a lizard. But a Godzilla costume is pretty baller, and I respect that. That is awesome. Our friend Mr. Tickle Trunk sends in three super chats in a row. We're going to read these in a row. Thank you very much, sir. He says, let's just all go back to the early 90s. You could say almost anything. Subcultures were mixing. Cosby wasn't evil yet, and people were having fun. Also, Ninja Turtles. Uh, I'm going to go back and say Cosby probably was evil. <laughs> it's not a matter of do we know that he raped, but did he rape? Yeah. I, yeah. I can honestly say the Bill Cosby stuff is completely wrong, and I hated him in general, so it's easy for me to just never go, oh, yeah, it's like whatever. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Mr. Tickle Trunk also says, Jay, stop. Shout out to Drunk 3PO was a meme for a long time before Gina showed up for a reason. Yep. Yep. And, and uh, Tom, Mecca, I want to say to you guys, this show is a lot of fun. There's a couple more super chats, but you guys really relayed what I was trying to get to drunk is you really, there's a reason you're here. And he's so humble and it's so refreshing to hear that. But damn it, dude's got to take it. We all knew about Drunk 3PO for years yeah, sure. before he was having this moment right now i proper wore the shirt to celebration for mm -hmm. and you know what he had time for us no matter how many subs he had and we'll always and he'll always have time for us and vice versa and all that stuff so That's i got it. nothing but respect for that guy uh our friend diego flores says so does this mean that cecil will be drunk in meim uh, cecil will be drunk as soon as the month is over right it's only a month of sobriety so yeah, i believe so uh cecil drunk wherever you want him to be uh, Terminus EST says, "What do you call a stoner Jedi?" Obi Wan cannabis. <laughs> uh, our friend Barb Rogers, Little Miss Sunburn, sends in a five dollar punching Shiba Inu. Thank you very much for the uh, super chat sticker, Barb. Our friend Games Help Me Forget says, "Ted Danson for president." Uh, those are politics. I guess I could get behind because it is Ted Danson after all. Uh, <laughs> uh tim riggs thank you very much for everything he says i am royally effing jeff wasted uh, i just wanted to give you money and make you read this out loud well uh tim riggs thank you very much for everything and uh thanks for being fun i always love to hang out with a drunk uh somebody drunk when i'm not sober myself and then games for help or sorry games help me forget the reason why i backed ted danson for president is because when ted danson for emperor happens which is a super chat i want to be on the right side because you don't want to cross ted danson <laughs> <laughs> so folks we have finally reached the end of our show i'm gonna be jumping to jesse's stream immediately after this one but before we go mecca it was awesome to get to stream with you again uh i'm glad you're back where can everyone find you on the internet before we go well i have my main channel mecca random 42 i've got the live channel i've been backing up stuff too slowly that's where a lot of the cooking streams go when i do those i don't get a lot of time to do them anymore um the t twitch um is kind of my main backup if i get banned here i've got the bit shoot that i don't want to use please don't make me and patreon subscribe star I hang out on Minutes Edge after dark when they have when they let me and um we'll hear where else i don't remember over a creepy little book sometimes. Usually in the chat now, though, but, you know. I was going to say, is he Pete doing the streams again? Or? Not the pan not the panels, but, you know, we still hang out. So. See, I pop in when I listen to his own things, but, yeah, anyway. Tom, where can we find you, man, on the internet? Like, as... Where can you not find me? Mm. Fair enough. Uh, You're like um... the American, well, no, MasterCard. That's everywhere you want to be. Well, I don't want to steal Rob's saying, but, yeah, I'm everywhere. <laughs> I don't want, yeah, except for places you don't want me to be. Uh, but you got another super chat here first you probably want to get to. Oh, uh, Runs with Phantom says, I may have role-played as the Black Ranger, but my favorite color was actually pink. Why? Two words. Pink Ranger. <laughs> she, She's one of those, like, actresses that as a kid I had, she was just P Kimberly the Pink Ranger. Now I go back and watch the show, I'm like, maybe this is why I liked this show. She was good looking. <laughs> I just never picked up on that as a kid. It just, 
I'm watching it for the action and the stunts and stuff and the monsters and the zords that I'm like subconsciously I'm like in that too. So Power Rangers had it all. It was the best kid show of the nineties. Oh now, Tom. I, yes. Um yeah, Midnight's Edge, Midnight's Edge After Dark, uh here, there, everywhere. <laughs> Anything else? You're like Savoir Fair. You're everywhere. That's right. Uh Folks, you can find me here on the channel. You can find me over on Mindless Entertainment in a few moments for the live stream. You can find us on Twitch, WCBS Gaming, as well as uh, Mindless BS Gaming. On Mondays, you can watch me play Mario Kart before Jeremy goes live at what we go live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then at 9 p.m., we switch over to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This past week, we played with Mary Mayhem and Caffeinated Wolf. But due to some uh, issues with the technology, it wasn't the smoothest stream. But we are committed to getting that worked out so we can stream with more fandom menacers. So what I'm telling you this for is I want you to request who you want us to play. And I personally own most of the big consoles right now. So if they got a way to play a specific game, uh, so will I. But if you guys want that, all you got to do is follow us on all the platforms and say, hey, this is what I want to see you guys do. And we'll follow suit. But I will be uh, back on Thursday night with another live podcast at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll have a video on Thursday as well. And uh, this Friday, you guys are going to get Good Morning Pop Culture because we hit that 1,000 thumbs up button as well as uh, next week as well. So, uh, you got folks, another I, super chat. Well, we have another super chat. So uh, I was wanted. Yeah, I forget again, you were on the other screen, so I thought I'd catch it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, P- Runs with Phantom says Pink Ranger introduced me to puberty. <laughs> <laughs> I was way too young for dude. I was four years old. When me that finding a buttload of Playboys in my dad's drawer introduced me to puberty. But that's Tom, all I'm gonna say. Yeah, Tom, I will tell you this story publicly because it's funny. I was walking home from high school once in the snow through this park, and there was a. Uh, adult content on the ground and me and my friend don't <laughs> click on it just curious to what it was so it's just something that gets you from any age it was I'm the first just, time you've seen anything like that huh no but in a park yes so <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not old enough to buy this fair enough, on the ground. Of fair enough. Uh, like i mean of course i had seen boobs and other things in movies prior to that because like in the 80s we weren't so tight about that kind of shit i guess but like yeah when i stumbled mm-hmm. upon those books and the, it was like whoa that's a different kind of thing but yeah <laughs> totally understand what you're saying there runs with phantoms um so yes we are about to jump over to mindless entertainment uh is there anything we have we've covered everything so yes folks i'd like to again tell you that the fandom menace is awesome it's strong we had two amazing high councils and everyone else is seeing huge growth anna everybody across the board drunk obviously and i couldn't be happier uh, this is a really cool community that we've all spent so much time building, and it's we building, and it's working again. 2020 was a garbage year that really ruined a lot of stuff, but it ended with a really nice tinge of optimism, and that really has carried over across the board through all the content that everyone in the Fandom Menace is producing. So here's the chance. Let's all have fun. It's like a fresh restart for everybody. So go refine your favorite creators, get reacquainted, and uh, let's have some epic crossovers in the future. So from all of us here on the High Council, thank you for watching. Again, thank you, Drunk 3 here for joining us. And folks, we'll be back next time with more. So no matter what you do, no matter where you go, always be excellent to each other. <laughs>